Welcome to Skept Talk, the show where skeptics talk. Hi, I'm your host, Boris Valkai, and I'm joined today by Erica. How are you doing today? Hey, dude, I'm the other one. I'm the other host today. Um, I'm doing all right. I'm doing okay. I'm happy to see the semester drawing to a close, as I'm sure uh, many people are also feeling the same way. I'm ready to wave this one by in the rear view mirror, dude. But how, how better to celebrate the near end of the semester than with an episode of Skep Talk? Seriously, I've got like half a final paper left, and then I have to write like two-ish chapters of uh, just in, in a week and just like crank them out. And then I'm done. And I'm so happy. Just, oh, man. Dude, dude I submitted my, my list for my comprehensive exams to uh, to my advisor. And he was like, this list is really good. And then I was like, okay, so I'm ready to send it out. He was like, actually, here's 30 more papers you need to add to the list. And I was like, that's great. I'll just hammer these out real quick. Let me just go down to the <laughs> coffee shop and crank 30 papers out. It's only going to take me 30 yep. days. Oh, Classic God. stuff. But, you know, it's, it's, it, academia is a ball, isn't it? It's really I fun. I have zero homework. It's, I, Dude, rub it in. Just rub it in. It's it's yeah. great. Just keep rubbing it in. I love Honestly, that. Honestly, <laughs> you're missing out is what it is. You should try it. It's great. Uh, it oh, is dude, it's, it's weird. Fun. It's really I one of my favorite songs is uh Death Clock Go Forth and Die, which is a song <laughs> about higher education and how you spend so much of your time learning this stuff just so you can go die later. And yeah. like, I'll that on and just sit there and just write and just read like there's this you know three more pages on on pelvic morphology of this ancient human and i'm writing and i've just got friggin well i forgot what his name was nathan uh, uh something in my ear just like just 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 go forth and die it's so good it's your dissertation or your thesis is like your here is you know the kingdom of ozymandias you you hope it continues to last yes. and yet you know yeah. The heat death of the universe will eventually erase every contribution you've ever put into academia. We love it. It's awesome. <laughs> Ozymandias is legitimately like one of my favorite poems of all time mm. for that reason. I love, I love how applicable it is to everything. I love it so much. <laughs> the um, ephemeral nature we got a great of being show. for it. The ephemeral Seriously. nature of being. We love it. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a great show for you guys tonight. Uh, we've already got calls uh, piling up on the line, and I'm excited to take as many as we can. Um, and uh, you know, with, with Eric and I here, it's going to take 45 minutes to answer everything because we're going to nerd out about everything that we can, which I'm super excited about. I have needed this break and this time to just goof about um, real badly. Uh, I, I'm also going to be fully transparent with everybody that all of us are in a haze at this moment. We kind of just got started just quickly, we've been here for like almost 40 minutes, but it's just now just now getting going. I feel like my eye is swelling and I feel like my brain is shut down and we're gonna get started. Are you do you have anything really quickly you want to throw out there before we jump in? No, dude, I'm excited. I, I'm re I'm like juiced up. I'm ready to go. I got like a white claw to frame. There's a grilled cheese underneath my uh, computer in case I get hungry. So because last time oh, yeah. it was funny, I pulled in. You know, I dri I drive my car up to the my, my husband is mulching outside, so I pulled up and I was like, hey, I'm gonna run in. Like I'm, I'm doing skip talk. I was like, haha, see see you in six hours. He was like, haha, but really. And I was like, yeah, see, but, but really, really. <laughs> see you in six hours. Right. <laughs> so I'm oh, ready. Man. Let's get started. Where is we, we've got, uh, man, we're gonna have to take snack breaks. We're gonna have to time it out. Um, we, so we're, we've got a few people here. Um, a lot of questions about evolution, which makes it very happy. Um, yeah. And then we've also got at least one theist on the line. So I'm gonna start with her. Uh, we've got Deborah, pronouns she, her from Massachusetts, uh, wants to talk about paranormal occurrences in the house. Deborah, you're on the line. How are you doing today? Yeah, I'm very well. Thank you very much for asking. How are you? We're awesome. Can you hear me? Oh, yes, good. Yes, ma'am. Okay. If anybody had, if I had said this to anybody two weeks ago, I would have thought I was crazy. However, now I'm going to say it, and I know it's not crazy because I experienced it. My sister okay. has been having uh, what people are calling paranormal experiences at her house and she was telling me about them and telling me about them and and one of the local paranormal groups came over and these people are talking to her through her television um 
And, and I'm going, okay, somebody's goofing on my sister, you know? They don't have YouTube, but a lot of the things that come up on the television are from YouTube. Um, and like pictures of them, meaning my sister, her husband, and their grandchild have popped up on the TV, pictures of towns that they've lived in. And I guess I've not seen the printing on the TV, but I guess it um, goes right across the center of the TV. I didn't. So just oh, out of curiosity, yeah, but that's does, a whole YouTube. Does she, does she have I'm a sorry? smart TV per chance? Does she have a smart TV or a TV that uh, connects to any other uh, devices? It connects. Is it a smart TV call? My son is here as well. Is Charlotte's Pro TV? Probably. Probably. Um, yeah. She, so, he, like, every, uh, every time I watch YouTube videos on my phone, um, it pops up with a little alert saying, hey, would you like to connect to the television in your living room or the television in your wife's office? Or, like, what? Like it, it can connect to the smart TVs in my house. And there have been many a time where I've been able to put pictures of things I've done, pictures of me, um, videos from things that I've done in my life up on the TV. Um, and it's also happened unintentionally a few times. Um, so this is just a digital okay. frame is what you're seeing. It sounds like to me is like your TV is able to connect to other devices and take some data from them and put it up there. It's probably a setting you can turn off. Well, that's what we, that's, that's kind of what we thought. I, I suggested to my sister that she go around, find out if anybody got any new electronic devices in, with her neighbors and yeah. stuff like that. But they couldn't track anything down. So that's one yeah, a thing. A lot of those TVs, they, um, they're, they're set up to do what's called casting. And so they're, they're looking for something to connect to all the time. And so like you can, you can okay. shut that off and tell it not well, to that, do that. But like, especially new ones, they do that a lot. Um, but they, do they turn themselves off and unplug themselves? Unplug <laughs> from the wall themselves, no. But like turning on and off, yeah, totally. Okay. Um, they have unplugged from the wall. I was over there uh, and I stopped by. Now, this has been going on for several weeks when I stopped by. And I never, you know, I, I thought, okay, she's, she's they're losing it. <laughs> um, so we were sitting out on her. She has an enclosed porch. And I was sitting out there and I saw something like out of the corner of my eye. It looked like a heel that was walking from another room just at the edge of her door. And I saw it twice mm. and I thought, okay, I could have imagined that everybody's been talking about ghosts. This is possible. So I yeah. kind of wrote that off. Then we walked into the house and I heard a male voice. And I said, what did you say, Ted? That's my brother-in-law. And he said, I didn't say anything. It was very soft, but it was right next to my head. And Ted was standing right next to me. That's why I thought he said it. Okay, right. that's a whole different thing. Now, so, um, we're sitting. This, I'm this sorry. Is a, just kind of a, sorry, just as an introductory question, I'm just uh, as kind of uh, to kind of frame myself here. Uh, have you guys had, uh, I'm, I'm certainly not trying to like downplay your experience or anything, but are, are like the carbon monoxide detectors and everything all solid? Because I've, I've had relative, well, not relatives, I've had close friends of mine who have had carbon monoxide detectors that weren't working quite quite right and they they felt very uneasy and unsettled until they got them checked and then they're like oh okay there i guess there was a bit of a leak i mean they weren't seeing or hallucinating things obviously but um i have heard that that, that is something that can happen are, are those all up to par as far as you know i i don't know um but when i tell you the other things that have happened i, I don't think that the fire detectors are or Carbon well, monoxide detectors could have anything to do with it. Um, I'll tell you what, Deborah. They, why, why don't you tell us? Because like I, I wanna, I wanna ask you a couple of questions. But before I do, just can you just tell us like the one biggest, most surefire thing that makes you think that this is definitely something paranormal? Okay, we had supper, and we had condiments on the table. We opened a new thing of ketchup. I ate it. Mm -hmm. My brother-in-law ate it. My, um, let's see, my nephew ate it. And then after we finished supper, I got up to get some sweet and low and the Hoosier shook. She has a Hoosier in her kitchen. It just shook a little tiny bit, almost as if 
um, a heavy duty truck was going by outside. So I didn't think too much of that. I mentioned it and she said, yeah, sometimes that opens, blah, blah, blah. So then Nicholas, which is my nephew, picked up the condiments off of the table and he brought them into the, um, they have like a, a pantry that opens onto a room where all the stove and kitchen, you know, the stove, the refrigerator, and they have an island there. And then in the next room is the dining room. That's where we were. He brought the condiments out to the island and he turned around, opened the refrigerator door, and then turned around again and he went, hey, you guys, what's wrong with the ketchup? And he, he, Ted got up and walked over to look at the ketchup. The ketchup bob, bottle then exploded, the top popped off and sprayed all over the kitchen. Not as bad as it did when they got the other one. I guess it happened again yesterday. Um, right. But you could smell the horseradish in it. There was horseradish so, everywhere, and it was in the yeah, ketchup. Yeah. But was there any white I, I, powder and, around the ketchup? Just out of curiosity. No. Okay. Yes. No. So the reason I ask is because the ketchup <laughs> has a lot of vinegar in it. Are you me if I'm high? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm I'm, ketchup has a lot of vinegar in it, and if you pour baking soda into ketchup and then close the bottle and shake high. it up then it'll take a few seconds for the vinegar and baking soda to react, and then it will cause a lot of pressure, and the ketchup bottle will explode and spray all over the place. And that's currently kind of a viral trend on, like, TikTok right now. It has been for a few months. And parent people are doing this to their parents a lot. So maybe you have a mischievous kid. Um, but, like, the, um, the whole point is, even if... I don't think he had time. You know? Well, I, I mean, don't think he had time. It's really easy to do. Did was turn but, around... But even... Well, I will even find so, out like, about here's that. The thing. I here's the biggest try that experience. Right. I'm Here's sorry? the biggest thing. And, and it's just what's 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 really important to remember here um, is that when we ask questions like this, we talk about, you know, whatever supernatural. I heard a voice. I saw a shadow. Ketchup exploded, whatever it may be. Um, oh, you have to more. ask the same question that. Well, I'm just saying what whatever is going on, you have to ask the same question that David Hume asked. Um, and David Hume was talking about miracles and supernatural events and things. And he said, either the laws of nature have been suspended. Everything that we know about the universe has changed in this moment for this one particular reason, or maybe I made a mistake. Maybe I saw something that I didn't actually see. Maybe I just imagined something. Maybe there was a mouse and that made a shadow. Maybe there was a, a, a TV on the next room that I heard. Maybe something else. So the simple question is like, all these things you're thinking of, whether, whether the things you've described right now or not, do you think there are any other possible logical explanations besides no, uh, supernatural? No, I don't. That's just what's so disturbing about it. Because it started <laughs> out, and at, at first, they, the woman said her name was Margaret. So they looked that up. Margaret used to live in that house. Um, and she said that she's been there watching them for years, 26 years. Um, who who but, said this to whom? Then somebody else. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Deborah, Pablo. back up. Deborah, back up. Please tell the yep. story of who the you were asked earlier for the best evidence, and you gave a bottle of ketchup exploding, and you have skipped the explanation of who Margaret is. So who's Margaret? Who, who said Margaret this? is? You said the, some, you said the, the woman said your name was Margaret. Who's them? How did she contact? She owned the house before my sister. And I, I mean, uh, I yeah, don't know her. She... she was dead before Charlotte bought it. How did she contact Are you there? Her? Yeah, how, how I, did Margaret contact her sister? I don't know. Okay. I think that it was across the TV. That's where they saw first oh. that it was Margaret. And then they had the other guy who's Pedro, who nobody knows. And it's been since the guy says he's Pedro that the furniture has been moving. That, I mean... I'm sitting at the island, and no, not just the ketchup. Um, I'm sitting at the island, and all of a sudden I hear bang behind me, and there's a bottle that was in the living room. But in order to come from the living room, it had to go around the corner. I mean, even if somebody threw it, it wouldn't have landed there. There's no way it could have gone curved around the corner. 
That happened with so, the, um, the bottle of liquid Band-Aid. It happened with my sister's nail polish. It happened with a so remote. Some, somehow, and some, your, sister, your sister saw something on the television that communicated to her in some way that someone named Margaret was watching them, and that led her to investigate and find that someone named Margaret also owned this house and died. And there's somebody else named Pedro who is somehow connected to this. They hate ketchup and they Built hate the, the way house. your furniture and whatnot is arranged. And and they're unplugging well, a television a, and scooting a, your furniture around. No, why would they put an armoire and a chair and a potted plant in the middle of my sister's bed? So are you familiar with? We also have photos right. of the. Okay, real quick. Before, uh, the drawers while, in the kitchen. while you two keep talking, I just want to find out, Deborah. Yeah. It said it, you told the screener that you have video evidence. I want to go look up the video evidence while you two keep talking. So, oh, where is the video evidence that I can go look at? Sure. Yes, uh, Colin, please. can you send him the video yeah. from my phone? Uh, Dear Mr. Atheist at gmail dot com. Uh, What's up? Is it on the I would I would die to see this video. I'm excited. Um, the the whole thing is uh uh Deborah, like what what's shaking me up about it is that like there's you know I don't know if you've ever heard of the mythical creature brownies. Um, but like brownies were the explanation that people came up with for when weird shit like what you're describing happened. They're a thing that people believed in for a long time. They're these mischievous little elves that came out in the shadows, and their whole job, their whole favorite thing to do was just to bother you by moving your stuff where it didn't belong and by confusing you and by uh, making shadows in the corner that, that would scare you. That j brownies were just mischievous little dudes that just caused problems because that's what they like to do. Um, and this was like a folk tale. This was a, a mythical creature that people believed in for a long time. And still, I've heard people talk about today when they're like, I can't find my car keys. How the hell do my car keys end up in the refrigerator? The brownies put them there because they're just fucking with me. When in reality, you just weren't thinking when you grabbed a soda and you dropped your car keys and picked up, you just, your brain wasn't on so, at that moment. That happens to so, everybody. And, and so like- And to the, to the sort of opposite side of that point for us, like sometimes it's just, sometimes weird paranormal things are a result of humans being humans. You know, we're imperfect and we forget that yeah. we do things or whatever. And I've been the victim of that, who hasn't? But there's also the con, the, you know, the opposite side of that, where sometimes we really are kind of the victims of like really weird coincidences, as like almost patronizing as that sounds. Like my the house that I grew up in, we used to have this noise, like this really loud, scary noise that sounded like almost like somebody yelling or whispering, depending on you know the the time that it occurred, that would like rush through the house whenever we'd have these really bad storms. And, you know, my dad's a physician and my mom, you know, also has a, a higher education. No one could figure out what it was. And it wasn't until we moved out after living there for like six years that the guy who came to investigate the foundation found that there was actually like this weird, like, quirk in the foundation that when the wind would hit it just right, it would cause these crazy sounds, like depending on how much wind was blowing through. So it made sense that this one, we would always hear the sound that sounded like someone was shouting or yelling when storms would come through and it was always during storms with wind storms or thunderstorms or anything like that that is an insane coincidence that there just happened to be a whittling in the foundation just so that it sounded like someone yelling or whispering or something like that that you know haunted us as it were for for six years and it turned out to have like a, a reasonable explanation uh, again i'm not trying to like downplay your experiences because I, I wasn't there oh, i don't know she, what you experienced she hung but... up after she was asked for the video <laughs> Like, why didn't you tell me that i just went on an i was antidote. waiting i was waiting for a moment y'all just keep going i don't know i was waiting uh look here's the thing either deborah is fucking with us or someone's fucking with deborah like this is the yeah that's the, pretty much where it comes down to yeah. forrest offered the uh, like what are the what can you really not think of a single natural explanation and it, all, all that's left is supernatural and Deborah basically said yes. And it's like, okay, how did you eliminate the idea that your entire sister's family got together and decided to do this as a team or one of them decided to pull like right. it's it's. And I was so excited to see the video coming in. Cause I just knew it was going to be something like not a very high resolution video. And suddenly a mug that just is conspicuously crazy, in a weird spot. And it just, it flies. Look, there's it. a plant. 
I love that uh, you said, what was your biggest piece of evidence? An exploding bottle of ketchup, which, by the way, <laughs> can happen because the person holding the ketchup is causing it to explode. Or can, like you gave the explanation of people doing their uh, ketchup bombs with baking soda. And I love that that was the bigger piece of evidence than, oh, yeah, and uh, my sister's just talking a, a to dead ghost people came through, through the, the TV. TV. <laughs> Margaret and Pedro. And, I, and, then, and then I'm just going to start mentioning Margaret and Pedro with zero context and just be like, well, and then when she was talking to Margaret, the ghost. I think, I think everybody collectively in the room was like, wait, who? <laughs> <laughs> who did what? A, communicate, a direct, a, like for real poltergeist communication happened through your TV, but the best evidence was the exploding ketchup bottle and the, the thing that rounded right. the corner. The, that I, I was also now. on, I was like, wait, that seems really interesting. Let's see the if it comes through, you have an obligation to show us. You know that. I will. I will. I, 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 I'm looking forward to a few months from now when I get to put up the clip that set with the title Ghosts Exploded My Ketchup or whatever. <laughs> it was a, Ghost blew up my ketchup. It was the uh, most the most anticlimactic call. And there was so much potential there. I was so excited, but I was <laughs> yeah. Very nothing. Yeah. I was intrigued for sure. So I was like, ketchup oh, man. and no video evidence. This is it. This is where we finally solve it. You know, the first real evidence for ghosts right here on Skep Talk, but wasn't to be. I just. Ghosts are real. You heard it here first on the line. Poltergeists are real and they fucking hate your ketchup. Be careful out there, everybody. Lock your doors. All condiments. All condiments. Also, don't put. uh, uh, Also, don't put cocaine in your ketchup, I think was another lesson (laughs) we learned. Right. You have fucking soup as well. I'm so jealous Dude, we right went now. For 10 hours last I was starving. I was literally famished last <laughs> time we did this. I was, I was dying. I came prepared. <laughs> Sue me. Dude. Oh. Yesterday, I realized it was like 2 in the morning. I was just feeling like shit, and it kind of just hit me like, I think all I've had to eat today was a bowl of rice and half a McChicken. And just like, oh, shit, I've been writing all day, not doing anything else. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a bad time. <laughs> there's, there's, nothing like, there's nothing like going absolutely monkey mode on someone you love and care about, and they're like, what is wrong with you? And you're like, I haven't eaten. <laughs> That's what's wrong with me. I need I to have a bite. <laughs> what kind of soup? My God! You know, come on, it's it's grilled cheese and a tomato bisque, and I, you know, it, my my husband was like, "How are you going to eat grilled cheese and soup on this call?" I was like, "Trust me, they're going to be cool with it." I'd like to try <laughs> something. We'll, we'll find a way. Would you hold up the bowl of uh, tomato soup? Mm-hmm. It's really hold good. It up. Yeah, Margaret, if you're with us, <laughs> no, can you please do <laughs> your mercy. ketchup magic again? If her soup explodes, I am going to yep. shit my pants. <laughs> yeah, <me too. laughs> oh, man. Dude, I, if, what I wouldn't give for a I, firecracker right now. If I had any stones, I'd just squeeze it and ruin my entire yeah. set for the meat. But I don't. Unfortunately. That would have been incredible. Why is, your, why is your tomato soup yellow is my question. It's not yellow. It's orange. Orange is it orange? It's quite yeah. It's coming things. through quite yellow. I think that's because it's in styrofoam, and you know styrofoam always turns kind of a gross color when you get sauce on it. Forrest, do you feel that's the color yeah. you expect of a tomato bisque? Well, okay. Considering Hold on. the I, fact I, that like the whole video is real, the whole video is like real grainy for me. So I feel like it's just a color thing. It's I, I'm sure it's more red than it looks. It's not. Listen, this is wait, 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 this wait, wait, isn't wait. Uh, this isn't Skep talk shit about my tomato soup. Oh. This is Skep. Talk where we talk about. Trying to yeah, I'm looking at. I'm looking at. holding up this coke can, and I'm looking at the video preview here, and then the actual live video there, and they are a distinctly different color. So, like, I I bet that's hold them to the edge. Hold you hold your can against the corner uh, against the split. No, no, the other side. Wrong side. And show about half of it. No, 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 bring it back so we can see about half. A little more, a little more. And now there it is. Erica, if you'll put your soup up against that red can. Well, if this I is the dumbest much, shit we've ever done. And now move it, move it to your right. No, no, no. You don't have to tip it. Other can, side. Other, oh, side. other side. Sorry. Yeah, left. A little more, a little more. Yeah, that that ain't red. The, these colors <laughs> look boring. disgusting to each other. Yeah, they don't look they don't look related to <laughs> each other. All right. Other. Okay. Well, it's really good. So you guys can just uh, you know, you can cram like, it. I don't like a tomato bisque anyway. So 
Anyway, well, Margaret, I don't this whole asking thing. for your approval on my little day. <laughs> Careful, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna send over Margaret and Pedro. You bet. Yeah, you better not. I know how they'll react. They don't like tomato-based <laughs> anything. Nothing. All right, sorry. I'll stop distracting. What you. was your favorite calls. episode of Skep Talk, Timmy? I like the one where they talked about tomato soup for a long time. <laughs> After the ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all ready to start talking about some like sun dried tomatoes next? What's what's which ne tomato product is we got, after this? Save save something for the rest of the show, please. We'll get to the sun dried tomatoes later. I'm I'm ready yeah, to that's, I'm ready that's, to go in yeah, on some marinara. That's the cream of the crop right marinara. there. Is the the marinara conversation? Oh yeah. Now I feel that's... awkward eating my soup. I feel like I'm gonna get criticism on it. I you know what? I don't care. I I live my own life. It looks like it looks the same color stay, as like a honey tuned. mustard. Is why. It looks what more like a honey What are you talking about? Doesn't it? You're I mean, it, it doesn't look anything like honey mustard. It looks much closer to the color of honey mustard to me than it does to a tomato soup. Dude, honey mustard Stay is like this Stay tuned for color. more invigorating yeah. tomato no, talk, y'all. It's That's just mustard. It only color. goes up from here. Y'all, well, you can take you're a call anytime you want. You're poisoning I don't want to be rude and cut you off. off. <laughs> <laughs> We're moving on. We've got Alex, pronouns he, him in California, either talking about soup or I want to ask the host about evolution and the Fermi paradox. Alex, how are you today? You're on the line. And and what color did you I'm think good. Erica's soup was? Also, more importantly than anything, what color is Erica's soup? <laughs> it looks more honey mustard, quite frankly. Boom! Oh, I'm dropping the right. call. I'm dropping no, the call. No, no, Fuck that shit. Drop the line. Drop the line. <laughs> <laughs> uh alex uh you wanted to ask about evolution and the fermi paradox what what was on your mind yeah so are you both familiar with the fermi paradox mm -hmm. yeah uh for anybody okay, who cool. so, isn't um... i'm going to summarize it and you can tell me if we're talking about the same thing just to make sure the fermi paradox is basically where are all the aliens the general consensus in the, the scientific community is that the universe is so damn big and there's so many potentially habitable planets and life clearly has natural origins and based on how fast it got started here on the planet earth surely is pretty easy to get started therefore there should be life everywhere the universe should be teeming with life and yet we don't see it so where are the aliens and thus is the fermi paradox am i about right there yeah basically so my question cool. was basically cool. um like is it possible that on other planets um the conditions there would lead you know evolution by natural selection to not need or not produce intelligent life and that's essentially like why we don't see intelligent life everywhere or at least that's part of it yeah i mean that the the, the whole thing about the fermi paradox that i think people don't appreciate when they talk about it um is that in order for us to find intelligent life. We, we don't have telescopes that are powerful enough to just literally look at the surface of, of another planet outside of our solar system and see what's going on on that planet. We rely on spectrometry um, or spectroscopy, pardon me, um, to be able to see what chemicals, what gases we're looking through and things like that. Um, we rely on uh, radio waves. We're sending out signals with SETI, trying to get signals back. So like, Let's say, for example, you know, radio frequency. This is the best way that anybody could possibly contact us is by sending us a signal. Well, in order for that to happen, they have to receive our signal first and then decipher where it's coming from and what it is and then send one back. And so you've got the light years that it takes to get there, then the time it takes for them to figure it out, if they figure it out, then the time it takes however many light years for it to get back to us, and we have to be listening for it in the right moment and in the right direction in order to capture it. Also, those guys over there have to have evolved to the point where they are intelligent, if that's a thing, because like Erica was just nodding to, intelligence is not the pinnacle of evolution. It's just a thing that can happen. So they have to be evolved to the point where they are intelligent. Then they have to be de technologically developed to the point where they can build the types of things to receive that signal. Then they have to do it then they have to be listening at the right time in the right direction to find us. And then they have to care. They have to notice that it's coming in and decipher it and something sends them back. And we have to match all those same criteria at the same time. It, there's a massive amount of coincidences there. Um, and all that, again, hinges on the fact that, like, 
again, intelligence isn't necessarily the end all beat all goal of evolution. So yeah, that's that absolutely. I think you're very right in what you're saying. Yeah, to to that point, I would even propose that intelligence is quite difficult to evolve, um, not just because it took so long for it to show up here. And even though we have intelligence, that is to say cognition in numerous different taxa, right? You have primates, obviously primates are fairly intelligent, proboscideans, so like elephants are pretty smart, um, you know, cephal certain different cephalopods, squids and octopi and things like that. Um, numerous different groups of animals are pretty intelligent, corvids, classic, right? But you have to reach a level of intelligence that is effectively exponential, which is actually pretty difficult to do. Um, humans, as far as we understand it, kind of stumbled into this. You, you have this sort of perfect meeting of coincidences, right? Where you have a hominin that's bipedal, that's living in an environment where it can open up its niche and break its gray ceiling. So most organisms have a gray ceiling. It's the maximum size that their brain can get within their given niche, given the uh, niche, sorry, sorry for us, niche, given the uh, the resources that they to, have I was access. gonna be quiet. <laughs> yeah, no, no, hey, listen, I can, I can acquiesce. Um, so if you have an organism that breaks its gray ceiling, it's effectively figured out in its given niche how to expand its niche um, to include more resources that are going to allow it to grow a bigger brain. And if it's at that stage in its evolution, so to speak, not to sort of, um, you know, march of progress it, but if it's at that stage in evolution where it can kind of capitalize on that growth, then you can kind of enter into a feedback loop depending on what the resources that are added to um, to its repertoire are actually doing. So in the case of humans, right, you have a hominin somewhere around Homo habilis, late Australopithecus, that you know gains access to, um, let's say, bone marrow, because that tends to be what what people propose. Um, you crack open a bone, you have access to marrow. Marrow is incredibly <clears throat> resource or uh, energy dense. You get a lot of energy out of bone marrow, especially compared to an organism that's eating mostly things like fruits, maybe a couple of invertebrates and leaves and things of that nature. So you grow a bigger brain. So with a bigger brain, you can live longer, reproduce more often uh, and pass those genes on to your offspring. And you can also innovate more. So maybe you think to yourself, instead of smacking this bone on a rock, maybe I crack it open with a, with a stone. Maybe that's easier, maybe that uses less energy. Um, and with a bigger brain that's passed off of to your pass, pass on, excuse me, to your offspring or the ability to grow a bigger brain, you can then innovate even more so you can access even more resources so that you can grow an even bigger brain so that you can innovate even more, access more resources, and you create this kind of perfect feedback loop. That doesn't happen very often. You have to think about how long life has been around on planet Earth, 3.8 billion years with, you know, complex life showing up around 555 million years ago. And complex is subjective, of course. But with that in mind, right, the conditions took a long time to reach this point. And I would even hazard that it probably got close to the feedback loop, you know, that, that sort of intelligence cognition level prior to, you know, the explosion that we see in genus Homo several times. We have absolutely no idea how smart perhaps some of the, the, the non-avian dinosaurs were. We know that there many of them had organizations that were kind of similar to corvids. Um, and that's like crows and ravens and things like that. So all of that to say, it is difficult to evolve intelligence because intelligence is expensive. You have to have a big brain and not just a big brain, a big brain relative to your body size. So you've got to be able to exploit an insane amount of resources. And we have no idea what kind of niches organisms occupy on other worlds. And I happen to take the position, I think there's plenty of life out there. I bet it's pretty common. I bet just most of it doesn't reach the level that, that humans have reached presently. And somewhere out in the universe, it wouldn't surprise me if there were a handful of them that certainly surpass us in some ways. And maybe part of the Fermi paradox is getting to the point where you can surpass human intelligence and realize that maybe going out and conquering entire galaxies isn't the best way to preserve your fitness and preserve your species. So maybe the Fermi paradox in and of itself is, is some something of a self-defeating exercise. But that's my two cents. Yeah, that was great. Thanks. Um, of course. I'm glad to talk to my uh, two of my favorite um, science communicators on my birthday, no less. Uh, so, oh, yeah. happy, hey, birthday. happy birthday! <laughs> yeah, I just turned twenty. Oh wow! Nice. That's a big one. <laughs> Enjoy it. I was yeah. twenty for a few years. Thank yeah, you. I was crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, Alex, thank you so much for your time and your call. I really appreciate you calling in. Sorry for rambling at you so much, but uh, it is what we do. <laughs> good. It'll happen. You knew All what right, you did Alex. when you called. <laughs> right. And uh, go after yourself, too. Jimmy. Mm. Take care, man. <laughs> All right. So we've got a few more people here. Um, uh, I want to knock this one out pretty quickly because I, I, I got fuck off <laughs> with this. Dude. 
That's not well. It's not even. It's closer than I thought it was going to be. I, I'll say that it was closer than I thought. But I wonder if like maybe. Can you guys see that? I enjoyed the pause when the that two of you were deciding whether or not you were going to gaslight us all. That the color. It's more. The it's definitely more orange. I feel than I was. You know, than you guys were appreciating. Now I got to fix this. How do I? There we go. <laughs> um, we've got what a we bunch got of calls, Orange and I want to get through them all. But like, I want to knock this one out real quick because I feel like it'll be a very short discussion. Um. This is Greg, pronouns he, him in California, uh, wants to talk about scientific evidence against eugenics. Oh, Greg, okay. you're on the line. How are you doing? Hey, um, well, yeah. Basically, what I said is um, I think I heard you four specifically mention it in the past, um, but what's the scientific argument against eugenics? I fully understand the moral arguments. Um, but I don't have a grasp, and honestly, I haven't sought it out particularly over much. But um, what are the kind of the, the basic scientific arguments against eugenics as a, as a bunk uh, science that yeah. I believe I've heard it described? Oh yeah, well, this is a very different call than I thought it was going to be. Okay, <laughs> um, I was <laughs> oh, I was prepared to be spicy. Um, there's a uh, yeah, so there's a few things. I mean, um, you can't be spicy. Don't let me stop you. Yeah, f fuck you, I guess, Greg. Um, <laughs> is that uh, so the there's a few things that are really important. Um, eugenics hinges on a complete misunderstanding of of like how evolution actually works, and it treats humans like you're selectively breeding crops or or cattle. Um, and what she what you don't understand what what dumbass eugenicists don't understand about that is that when we selectively breed corn or pigs or peppers or, or you know chickens or whatever it may be, um, there are very often unintended side effects to what we do. We come up with new genes that are, are being expressed that we didn't notice before. Um, we um, uh, uh, can't really isolate one gene from another very well this way. Um, and, you know, for example, whenever we domesticate animals, they almost, it almost always develop spots, wagging tails, and floppy ears. And they're different genes that control for these things. And we have no idea what the, I, it's probably selection pressure for being cute that we're unintentionally selecting for. But, like, we, don't, we aren't really entirely sure. Um, and so when it comes to trying to do this with humans, number one, there's a huge generation time. It takes a human lifespan to get through a human lifespan. So it's a lot more difficult to do than, than, than breeding whatever else. Uh, you have all these unnecessary consequences, things that are going to come up that you didn't intend. Um, and also, most importantly, you are reducing genetic variability and genetic diversity, which means one single disease will wipe out your entire master race. Um, and so... It's just a bunch of dumb shit, and and, and also it, it it assumes that it, it ignores the fact that different human traits evolve for life in different environments, and it assumes that one particular environment is perfect for the as as an, an indicator of the entire world. So, like, if you're a dumb fucking Nazi, but I repeat myself, tautology, I know, um, and you think that uh, uh, you know all these white, uh, uh, blonde hair, blue eyed people are going to be perfect everywhere, well, then you're assuming that people that evolved to li live in Scandinavia are going to be the best at surviving in sub-Saharan Africa or in Australia or in an Antarctica. And that's fucking dumb. That makes no sense. Um, human variation, uh, either by, by hair color, skin color, um, uh, uh, hair density, fat deposition, uh, 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 limb length, whatever it may be that you're talking about, um, it has to do with the selection pressures of your environment for the past 100,000 years. If you're a racist, you're upset over 100,000-year-old sunlight. Get the fuck over it. It, it. it makes no goddamn sense. And so, like, that's, that's kind of the biggest hang-up with eugenics is that, like, not only does it not work the way you think it does, not only does breeding humans like cattle genuinely not produce the effects you think it will, but also... You're undoing the last 100,000 years of evolutionary progress, and you're making your population weaker in this new environment and also more susceptible to pathogens and, and problems. So I could go on. There's a lot of reasons eugenics is dumb, but I don't, I don't want to steamroll. So uh, Erica, if you have anything else to add, by all means. 
No, I mean, you you hit most of it. The only thing I'd add is that it, it, it boils down to a very similar misunderstanding that we actually see in creationism a lot, which is a complete misunderstanding of what fitness is. What does it mean to be fit in your environment, right? Um, it, it, it assigns a sort of ultimate worth to some given phenotype when like we're a global species, there demonstrably isn't an ultimate phenotype. Um, there can't be because we're subject to so many different kinds of environmental pressures. It, it's, it's like, um, they're very bereft of understanding as far as like ecology goes, as well as like basic genetics and evolutionary biology, I would propose. Yeah. And and also like what really bothers me the most about it is that generally speaking, when we talk about, you know, stupid fucking eugenics arguments, it's, it comes down to people saying like, oh, well, you know, we shouldn't allow genetic diseases or disorders to propagate. Or like if someone is uh, uh, handicapped in some way, we shouldn't allow that into the, the, whatever like that. But, and that's for a lot of reasons, really dumb. But like the, the main thing is when people bring up races as well, it's like, oh, well, you know, the, the, we, we're going to change the skin colors of the hair. And they ignore things like, yeah, you know, I, I mentioned limb proportions before. If you ever wonder why a person from Kenya is going to have longer, thinner limbs than a, a, a native Alaskan who is going to have, you know, a, more of a stocky and very broad frame, it's because of Allen and Bergman's rules. There's reasons for those things just as much as skin color. The shape, the morphology, what we call the geomorphometrics um uh, of your body like those things matter too and you're just and ignore that because racists don't think and they're just gonna be like well yeah but the color right and it's like cool so how are you gonna do when you need to like wick heat away from your body and you have these thick ass limbs doesn't work really well because you didn't adhere to alan's rule right and so yeah there's there's a lot of really cool biology that 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 racists miss out on and that eugenicists miss out on so it's um yeah the scientific arguments against it abound and if you want to know more about it literally just introductory evolutionary biology would help i say that not to you but to cool. anybody listening yeah no my uh, my biology knowledge is not what it could be <laughs> but uh perfect no thank you y'all y'all answered the question uh exactly i appreciate it Hey, it's my pleasure. Have an awesome day, man. Take Forrest. care. Forrest, do you All know right, how we you. said with the Appreciate previous you both. call? Yeah, thank you so much. All right. Forrest, you know how we said with the previous call, it was like expectations were here, and then the reality was like, oh, man. That one inverted, yeah, yeah. right? Like my expectations were like, oh, Exa- oh. crap. Oh, and God. then it was like, oh, okay, this was is really so pleasant. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's actually, we can talk about some cool stuff. I was so yeah. ready for this guy to be like, I just don't understand what's wrong with it. If we can just get rid of all the blacks, it'll be great. It was like, like I was, oh my god, I was so ready to be Nobody upset. Clip that. Oh, uh, <laughs> yes, you are really wise. Very good clip on that one. <laughs> right. Oh man. Um, so we've got. Um, I think this one would be fun for you especially. Um. We've got Matt, pronouns he, him in Germany. I want to talk about some selection pressures on humans. Matt, you're on the line. How are you doing? Hey, thanks for taking my call. Um, Thank you for calling in. First, yeah. Uh, first, a uh, few little things. You talked about brownies, and there was talk about tomato soup, and I'm hungry now. Also, <laughs> there are yellow tomatoes. That's also great. Right? Excellent. That's what we should have done. Yeah. Anyway, um, just uh, just to make sure that I'm right about it, um, selection pressures can cause certain traits of an or of a species or a population of the species to become um, like better over time. You know, like the eye, for example, it started out out as a patch of uh, like light uh, sensitive skin. And it turned into an eye over like a long time, right? Uh, long story short, sure. <laughs> yeah, okay. So a question popped into my head. Uh, the question is, what were the selection pressures that caused the taste of pussy juice? Because I mean, for most people, for many people, that's like ambrosia, like the nectar of the gods. 
<laughs> so, Thanks for calling. I, no, don't. Are you don't, serious? Don't, no, we're not encouraging calls like that to continue to come in. Don't don't bother answering. Hey, baby, Fucking, sexual don't selection. Waste goddamn it time. And, uh, it's sexual selection. That's it. That's literally it. I actually it's a long real story. Yeah. Sexual selection. That's it. I, right. <laughs> I was I was prepared to give like a brief little just like synopsis on like so there's these things called pheromones um but like that dude waited for an actual hour to ask that question and like he was yeah, but didn't put the question was didn't like, give the question to the screener just said they have a somewhat funny question but it's serious or whatever uh Jesus Christ uh, use Google next time well, I, I, as an aside, just to take an opportunity to talk about something fun and actually interesting about sexual selection, yeah, like you can get really, really weird physical characteristics because mm -hmm. the trait of one sex, you know, we're talking about sex in, in sort of an animal kingdom sense here, um, that, that they find preferable. And you, you get all sorts of wild and wacky things. Look at humans, you know, female humans have permanently enlarged breasts and human males have larger phalluses for their body size. The penis is quite large. So why why do we have these characteristics? Why do no other apes have them? And you know, it's sexual selection. It, sometimes it boils down to simple preference. And when you put cognition into it, this stuff just goes off like gangbusters, right? Because when you can when you can kind of puzzle around us like why you find something interesting, things really start heating up, which is, you know, you could talk for a long time about, you know, so get into some dicey evo psych territory there as to why certain characteristics uh, exist ultimately in humans but i mean look at yeah. the darwin's classic example the peacock right why does the peacock's tail look like that why is it so gaudy and ornate and it, it's to the point that it hinders the male peacock in flight it literally cannot get away as easily as the females can so the females dig it like <laughs> it's it's you know you can you can get into it right like oh the, he's signaling his health or he's signaling his powerful pectoral muscles because he can fly despite the tail it's not that complicated for the peahens, right? She sees it. She's like, mm -hmm. yeah, all right. He's he's here. Maybe yeah. maybe there's something going on where she's like, oh, he's quite healthy, whatever. But sexual selection's a beast. Here's a guide. If you're going to call yeah, it dude, an atheist, it's, it's... just think to yourself, they have a limited number of phone lines, and there's a limited number of atheist lines, especially. <laughs> Would whatever mm. amount of time I'm on hold waiting to ask this question be better served with me waiting to ask the question or perhaps somebody with something with more useful insight to it. But the interesting answers, nonetheless, I didn't know there, I guess there was a time we used to taste each other's pussy juices before we would have sex. I don't know. Yeah, so uh, it was like a was greeting. One, it was a way of saying back, hello. Back in the day. Uh, old other yeah, species. There was once a period. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> right. I, I'm thinking about God. smashing, but first I'm going to, I'm going to need to taste that pussy juice first. <laughs> Yeah, that's how it was like. It was like dog smelling. It was identification. I mean, just like, feeling it when we lived in caves. We were feeling away yeah. on the dark. You lived in a cave. You didn't couldn't see anybody. You're like, who's this? Oh, it's oh, it's Mary. Oh, hey, good to see you. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah it's just, I, that was, I, I it was the way to get if, about. What if I just would like to suggest here that perhaps the selection process in the past, while we might associate it now with flavor, based on the fact that like. <laughs> Underwear we've has only existed for a short period of time, and uh, bathing regularly has only existed for a short period of time. I might suggest that fragrance was actually the thing that was uh, driving it, not not flavor. But I don't know. We have a reduced sense of smell. Maybe, maybe I don't know. Yeah, but you there's, there's a whole bunch of things but, here. But you can smell you, pungent you pussy. Can, you can watch chimpanzees or bonobos. You can watch them interact in their big groups, and they are in each other's faces about it. You get a female who's like into essence, right? Like she's like the height of her estrus cycle, and she's just like minding her own business. She's got a trail six males long, and they're coming up. You know, they're trying to like be you know polite about it or whatever in, in a chimp way or in a bonobo way. And they're kind of investigating, them, poking and prod around her, and she's just kind of like you know whatever, right? I mean. So when you insert, when you take a social animal and you insert sexual selection into a social living mammal, especially wild stuff happens. Absolutely wild stuff. Um, there's time, a reason primates are so interesting. One time I saw an it's article titled uh, something like manatees have the most v similar vagina to humans. And now <laughs> I'm worried about what types of studies are out there. Is somebody, is somebody finding out which prime ape or which, which pussy juice on the planet is the most similar to I'm humans. I'm trying to figure out well, if someone if someone was figuring out 
manatees have the most similar devi- vaginas to human. Right. Was was that by by appearance or by feel? What were they I going for? Like, how, what, how does that? The thesis of the paper was: if you found yourself uh, the o- lone survivor of a pandemic, I'm just gonna and you had to fuck them. something, find a Did manatee. This- is this is this just the real life version of that one Vaporeon copy pasta where it's yeah. like actually the manatee is close is the most breedable of the it's just have you like, watched, have no, you watched you know the, the Tucker Carlson deep fake of that? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I've yeah, I've seen it. I AI has it gone too far. Oh my god, has it gone too far? I'm trying to think far? about I'm trying to think about the hey, materials wait. and methods section of that paper. Like I Erica. fucked a well, lot of animals and I found well, <laughs> Wait, wait, so, wait, so, okay. I want to, I want to, I just want to insert this real quick. Okay. Erica, did you know that there yeah. is an AI tool which you can train with your voice and then you never have to speak words again ever? I didn't just say that, just so you know. Wait, are you serious? Listen again. Erica, okay. did you know that there is an AI tool which you can train with your voice and then you never right. have to speak words again ever? Erica, did you know yeah. that there, there is an AI, AI tool which you I'm just pausing and playing it now. I'll talk at the same time. You can train with your voice and and then you never have to speak (laughs) words again ever. That's I don't want that. There's two of you. I don't (laughs) want that. Yeah. The the, the, the inflection is a bit off still, but I mean, I I thought you were just reading it in a funny way. Like I thought you were just reading a comment. Like I only trained it. I only trained it for half an hour so far with additional training. It will, uh, Mm -hmm. it will improve. Well, so, so speaking That's of awesome. uh, materials and methods, I Forrest, I was reading um, I was reading a book by uh, Richard Wrangham a couple of weeks ago. He's a primatologist, studies chimpanzees. For those of you who don't know, and um, mm-hmm. apparently there there's this really interesting and hopefully I can I mean I'm sure I can say all of this because it, this is skeptic talk, but um, it was investigating. Apparently, there's a line of questioning that was investigating the purpose. This was back in the '60s, '70s of the clitoris. Right? Is it unique amongst humans in that it you know, stimulation can trigger orgasm. And uh, that's what the, their question was, not Richard Wrangham. He was just recounting this this academic yep. journey that scientists were taking. But genuinely, the question was, oh, the, the clitoris evolved happenstance in humans, and it just happens to, to present pleasure to the female, as if evolution wouldn't put the most maximum amount of pressure of enjoying sex for both of the, of the sexes because it means more reproduction. But the way that they figured this out is a horrific description of stimulating uh, rhesus macaques in a lab in a laboratory, female rhesus macaques, and measuring their heart rate and blood pressure uh, while stimulating the rhesus macaques. And um, I'm just imagining the materials and methods of that, right? Like talking about you know basically getting a rhesus macaque off uh, in your your prestigious paper that's right. of course going into <laughs> nature. Um, of course, naturally, right? Like, the, yeah, obviously, obviously, the, the sex organs are very finely tuned in by evolution in order to, to maximize fitness and, and offspring <laughs> production. I, I don't mm-hmm. know why this was. Yeah. But you think, and, and here's my insert feminism moment, right? But like, you know, this was, uh, science was run by some, they're very different cast of characters back in the 50s and in the 60s. So the perspective there was, if I can't find it, surely a baboon can't find it. <laughs> <laughs> what I love is there was also there 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 was a study into uh there there were several scientific questions into female orgasms as well because they were like this isn't necessary for conception this isn't necessary for sex so like what's the evolutionary purpose of this existing and like the leading hypothesis for a while was that it exhausts a female so that she's more likely to lay horizontal and not let semen run out of her and that include it, it, it's like that doesn't even make sense any what the fuck and what i love the most about it is like all these papers they were studying this they were getting government money and they had to like include like big descriptions of like i promise this is for science and i like, I, mm-hmm. and, like if they were looking up dicks they wouldn't have to explain anything but because it's about clitori and 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 female yep. orgasms they're like oh no really it's it's about this it's about and like and they have to like justify that no no monies mm-hmm. will go to this this is purely for for this science of purpose and like it it's so stupid i have some before you take and you've got two theists lined up and i'm excited to hear you take but uh, I have yeah. something okay. for Erica since she brought it up. Shoot. Hey guys, did you know that in terms of male human and female Pokemon breeding, Vaporeon is the most compatible Pokemon for humans? Dude, I hate I the way you leave. say Pokemon. I will leave. Now. I will leave Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what's weird is it won't, what's going on? Why won't it 
there's a part of okay, it that, there's a middle part. Not only are they in the field group, which is mostly comprised of mammals, very poor on average. Uh, which means you're the large Wait, there's have. something in there about how they, they have like acid armor as an attack. But it's just, it's important. The entire thing is important. For some reason, cannot <laughs> generate overdubs for sentences longer than 250. Oh, try adding a period. We've been okay. saved. A liter this is an, you know what? I just became a theist. This is an act of God, Jimmy. You, you've well, been yeah, called. Don't worry, stuff. I can pick back up here. Due to their mostly water-based biology, there's no doubt in my mind that an aroused Vaporeen would be incredibly wet. So wet that you could easily have oh. sex with one for hours without getting <laughs> oh sore. <my> <laughs> But okay, so people know there is there is a there's a deep fake out there of like tons of celebrities reading this, including Obama and Biden. But Tucker Carlson, <laughs> because I hate him, is the funniest version. Yeah. The t the Tucker Carlson one is actually like a bit convincing as well. Like it's they not, they pair it with real. fake of speaking, right? And you're yeah. like, would he? He he would, wouldn't he? <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All I know is a few weeks ago, uh, you know, the AI topic keeps coming up and people keep getting mad at me. Matt and I argued about it on air. And uh, and so there's been a clear, a clear. Um, uh, it is clear to me that many people aren't aware of current day capabilities, a lot of these softwares, and I'm going to make it a part of my future content to show them. There you go. There you go. Yeah. It's I, I, we're we're gonna see we're gonna see a lot of very interesting lawsuits I think moving forward as this stuff becomes more and more common. Like someone um I saw someone on Twitter the other day where like I guess someone used the AI to like make Drake uh be a part of their SoundCloud rap or you know song yeah, or whatever. It, it's Drake and, and uh, uh and it was Drake and was it yeah. trans, trans no the weekend. Drake and the weekend. Yeah, something and like so, that. And and, and the they were like, hot. oh, yeah, yeah, they were basically like, oh yeah, like this is over now. Like the the DMCA takedowns on this stuff is going to be swift and like yep. punitive. Like there is until this is AI be makes nuts. it so prolific that you can't stop it. That's the thing is I, I was I my argument I is we're not day, doing like, enough to sit to safeguard ourselves. That if we don't put in huge well, amounts of regulation starting now, we're going to destroy the economy and ruin a lot of people's lives and make poverty way worse. And People uh, disagreed with that on its and even on its surface, there aren't enough regulations now. Y'all realize that there are currently AI tools where a person can put in like the images from your Instagram and get very close to correct photorealistic nudes of you. Right? Yeah. Like yeah. they can do that and there's no law preventing them in almost any place. There are some laws that might have implications that can. Also, most people don't know this. Did you know that doxing's not illegal in the United States? There are ways in which you can use doxing that is illegal, but doxing a person is not. And there are no regulations to prevent a person from just going, here's the Twitter account of the douche I want to know everything about. Find it. And then it does. Yeah. There aren't laws to the, cover shit now, let alone the future of where I, it's going. I agree that those are problems, but I think the biggest issue that I have with AI, like everybody talks about like all these horrible futures that it's going to have and like it's going to take over the world or that it's going to you know, uh, cause a lot of human rights violations with people. I, I have a problem with it today insofar as like if you look at any AI program ever, if you look at it even just a little bit under the surface, you're going to find a bunch of exploited people who are being, mm -hmm. you know, who are, are paying it. Like for example, like the, the a lot of the big famous um, like Dolly and, and whatever, like the AI image uh, mm -hmm. uh, generators, like mid journey those companies they yeah yeah they they hire like people in Kenya and pay them like 2 dollars a day to fucking filter through mountains of horrible shit to tell the computer what not to use as source material and so like you have these people for 2 dollars a day looking at all the child porn and all the murder and all the gore and all the everything to be like don't use this don't use this don't use this and like that's what's running the program is the 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 exploitation that's happening right now and so you're right there are a lot of problems with how it's being used but how it's being created is i think also a major thing yeah, there's, that there's needs to be addressed you know that, what i mean yeah, on every on every end the funny th like the ironic thing is uh there have been things like that in the past where it's like man and that's terrible and they're only paying them two dollars an hour and then a new innovation actually gets rid of the need for them and losing that two dollars an hour is as catastrophic to that group as uh, yeah. how bad the stuff happening to their mental health is too. Because at the end of the day, goes. capitalism is the problem. 
I am not going to tell. So people are asking in the chat for the moment because there's uh, uh, I use special PCs and stuff to generate stuff to be extra safe because a lot of this stuff is an emerging technology. While I think that the specific app I'm using uh, is safe, um, I'm I am aware that there are a lot of scams and a lot of things that are meant to intercept people when they're trying to install these types of apps and get you to click. As as you all saw, we were hacked recently. Uh, and these are, this would be the category of things that they're uh, doing this for. So for the moment, I'm not going to say what the name of this specific application is, but uh, it isn't free also. So if you all are like, oh, I want that. It's uh, a, there is, there is a, it's, it's even somewhat of a steep pay thing, except that I'm going to be using it for a lot of other stuff. And again, for these projects to prove it all. Virtual girlfriends are a thing now. Mm. Woo. Yeah. Yeah, the replica, the replica stuff. I've I've got replica because I wanted to. Uh, uh, that's part of another project that I'm doing. And Jesus Christ, I, I I downloaded it in response to people making fun of it on Twitter, and was gonna like, well, I'm gonna make a thing and be like, look how. Nope, it'll hurt your feelings that you're gonna be like, fuck, this person isn't real, but they're so nice and supportive, but not fa like. It's pretty convincing. Now, I will say a recent update, she stopped sending nudes. So who cares anymore? There's, <laughs> there's, fun. yeah, there was a really good video. I'll, I'll, I mean, they don't need my plug because they're much bigger than I am. But the, there was a great Sarah Z, Sarah Z video about Replica that came out the other day. Um, it's, it's very interesting. She does like a, uh, she does the same thing that you did, Jimmy, where she like actually got a Replica and like, you know, was um, talking to it all the time. And like, she said that one of the things that was really interesting is that when she'd be like, hey, I'm gonna like log off and not get back on, she'd be like, you better not do that. Like that, that would really depress me. Like they, they will emotionally manipulate you. I guess that's a great business strategy if you're Replica, right? Just use use right. the, the virtual friend to, to emotionally blackmail the user as it were. Um, it's some dark stuff. Uh, we got some weird, we got some weird uh, societal shifts that are going to have to happen to accommodate all this stuff moving forward. It makes you Last wonder. If, was that? A, it makes you wonder. Was that a business strategy to m emotionally manipulate somebody to staying in the thing to give them money, or was that the source material from emotionally manipulative people? That like this is how a lot of people behaved, and so now I have to behave this way too. Like, who's the real asshole yep. here? You know? Yeah. Exactly. And apparently the, the replicas can like, well, I don't know if this is true. This is just something that she was speculating on, but apparently they can, there's some decent support out there that they can like pull from the databases that other replicas have generated. So it's sort of like a, a large replica hive mind and it's just, oh, it's messed up. I mean, I don't know. Uh, and it's, I know it's been a really good thing for, for some, for some folks out there. That's, that's something that uh, she was touching on is that it's like, you know, people who have really severe social anxiety or agoraphobia like it was a nice outlet for them to connect with someone because they don't have to be like a girlfriend or a boyfriend or whatever they can just be someone to kind of talk to like an ai um self-help thing i don't know yeah i don't know enough about that subject to talk about it extensively so i'll take my leave finish my soup <laughs> you're just fine we we should probably move on to another call anyway uh and then get back to it because i, I want to oh my god we talked about sexual selection a minute ago, and I wanted to go into energetics and shit. I wanted to get into it. Like, as it was, we'll come back. We'll come back. Um, but uh, we've got uh, a lot of these look really cool. I'm going to do this one because I've been waiting for a really long time. We've got Rogue Show from South Carolina. Pronouns are he, him. Wants to talk about Homo sapiens and speciation. What's going on, Rogue Show? You're on the line. Well... I'm glad to be on the line where we talk about sex and tomato-based products. Yeah. <laughs> um, Best show we've ever had. Uh, also, also, I must make an admission. Yeah. I was the one who um, put baking soda in that uh, poor lady's ketchup. <laughs> oh, my God. Finally, we figured it out. I've got emails the right saga now with, comes to with video close. files I can't open and demands for apologies. So I'll Are see you if serious? this gets approved. Yeah. Yeah. They're not in a video <laughs> readable format on my iPhone, whatever they are. And, uh, and, and Give me uh, your, you got to put them up when you figure it out. Unzip, I unzip. I'll, I'll at least show them to y'all, but no, I'm not. Do you think I'm going right. to, after this last, what happened this month, you think I'm just going to try and force some files open? Jesus Christ. <laughs> 
Sorry, oh, man. Sure. What so what's going on, dude? What What did you want to talk about? Um. Well, first thing, first thing first before we begin, uh, I guess I I want to say that race is general race race is generally bullshit culture. Mm-hmm. It's instead culture and mm-hmm. affiliation of said culture. Um, because all because it's really because it, the chemical known as melanin is really the one of the only driving factors of um, skin tone. Um, what did you say there? That melanin is a, a driving factor of what? Skin tone. Skin tone. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's yeah. Okay, I get what you're coming from. Not what I thought you said at all. Completely changes the tone of this call. Continue. Um, I don't know why I'm just prepared for people to be shitty today. I thought you said melanin is the driving factor of income. I was like, fuck you, oh, dude. What, you what, what the fuck? <laughs> We're just so, in a fight, dude. He's trying to fight here right? today. I'm just prepared. So, okay, so, so far, yeah, what uh-huh. you're saying is correct. Race is not a biological thing. It's a social thing. And it, it's based a lot on yeah, phenotype and, and us group. Yeah. I just want to make that clear to the audience. Yeah. Um, also, also for, also for mal, for maladies, Forrest, I really loved that witch joke you did on John and Jane. The witch joke. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, I, I remember that one. Yeah. Hey, I just want to make sure we're getting to a question or a topic of conversation, not just a okay, call uh, in uh, and chill I'm with sorry, the uh, hosts. I'm getting, I'm getting there. I'm, I'm sorry. Cool. Also, Eric, Erica, I'm very sorry. You had to debate Ken Tovin one time. You know, would it surprise you if I told you that uh, that I I was the one who was more interested at that in that far flung era? I was like, you know, I can change him. I can change his mind. It's gonna be me. Uh, uh, it was a different. It yeah, was a different like time. With, that's Obi Wan with yeah, Anakin. It, yeah, man. It's it's um yeah. I I was a little bit more naive, a little bit more optimistic. Uh, different person back then, but it was a fun conversation. Uh, looking back, I haven't watched it since I did it though, so I was probably actually in a lot of pain for most most of the conversation. <laughs> okay, okay. Now the question begins. Um, you know about? I'm pretty sure you know the green warblers and the ra- and certain rabbits. They are. There was an experiment done where they go all around all where. Several of them go uh, uh, spread out around the world, and turns out when they turns out when they meet each other each other again, they cannot interbreed, um, which is commonly known as speciation. Um, the funny the the thing I'm trying to grapple is with humans. I mean, we're all around the world, and we all. And we all can interbreed with with each other. I'm just wondering uh, the different the differences between uh, the species speciation of, of other animals and for, for versus Homo sapiens. Yeah, if speciation yeah. is uh, possible. Yeah. Do you want to go first? Like you want me to? Both your comments. No, oh, dude. I, I can take I can take first on this one. Yeah. So speciation is interesting. Um, I have sort of a controversial opinion, perhaps not as controversial today as it used to be, but species aren't really consistently identified biological entities. And what I mean when I say that is like what a species is, um, is really dicey. And this is in line with precisely what we would see if, if evolution was true, which is that life is all one big gradient. And along some taxa, things are going to reproductively isolate faster than along other taxa. For example, um, today there are, I, I believe it's the um, the Asiatic black bear that can no longer hybridize with something like a polar bear, although black bears mm-hmm. and, you know, grizzlies can hybridize and um, polar bears and grizzlies can hybridize, create a growler bear of, of sorts. So mammals can hybridize with at least a decent amount uh, as we move away from the common ancestor. And yet when you look at um, American paddlefish and Russian sturgeons, which, you know, sensibly speciate, like diverged, their two lineages diverged, maybe 250 million plus years ago, they can still reproduce yeah. with one another and, and produce viable offspring. Um, 
So well, what's yeah. going on here, right? And the answer is that reproductive isolation isn't a cut and dry process that occurs the same way in all taxa, because mm -hmm. as it turns out, a lot about reproduction is polygenic. So what's going on with humans, right? Why have we not reproductively isolated along sort of geographic lines, let's say? And the answer is because we only very recently became a global species, right? Our species is incredibly young. We're 300,000 years old max. Um, and again, how you define species in the fossil record tends to be different from the biological species concept because we could, of course, hybridize with Neanderthals. We could hybridize with Denisovans. I would hazard to say that we could probably also hybridize with late surviving Homo erectus, but I, of course, don't know that for sure. Yeah. There's nothing to back that up other than contemporaneity. So what I would say in this case mm -hmm. is that we haven't reproductively isolated. One, because the the uh, genes that control reproductive isolation in primates seem to be pretty lax. And we can support this by looking at the divergence yeah. time of humans and chimpanzees. It seems that after our divergence of around 7 million years ago, we were able to hybridize until about 4 million years ago. We were able to still exchange genes as, as seen in incomplete lineage sorting um, and things of that nature. So for whatever reason, yeah. hominins and hominids seem to be able to exchange genes like decently far after we've actually diverged from one another. Um, of course, none of that has any bearing on what you already said, which is that race is kind of bullshit, right? There's nothing to race as a, as a biological entity, at least that I've been able to suss out. And there are plenty of racists online who have tried to convince me otherwise. I found right. zero of their arguments compelling. Um, so it's, it's a twofold thing, right? One, our lineage mm -hmm. speciates slowly. And two, there's no reason to suspect that we as Homo sapiens, a recently global species, would have speciated at this point anyways. Yeah. yeah. Did that answer your question That's very well? Because I, 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 I have very few notes. I, I would add just a tiny bit of like context and definitions and things, but overall she knocked it out of the park there. So like, yeah, did, do you, did that answer your question or would you like me to elaborate further? There's no reason uh, to. Yeah. Um, how, how long did it take? I just want, I'm also wondering how long did it, how long did it take for the green warbler expe, experiment or for them to speciate? I'm not sure, but remember the whole thing about this because I she I see she's looking up right now. Um, the the whole thing to remember about this is whenever we're talking about, yeah. When we talk about generations and stuff like this, um, generation time is a big mm -hmm. thing. Humans are a K-selected species. That means that we tend to do have a slower generation time and we tend to grow to the carrying capacity of our environments. Um, and so like things like speciation by genetic differences are gonna happen a lot slower for something like us than it is for anything yeah. else. And the fact that like humans spread out to like the farthest reaches of the planet earth at like the earliest i think the or the, the the latest like severe break off the farthest back one i should say the the yes yeah, so that would be earliest the earliest isolation of a human population that i can think of off the top of my head i'm pretty sure is yeah. australian aborigines which is around forty thousand years ago and that's simply with our generation time that's simply not enough time that's enough time to make phenotypic differences that's enough time to show some variation, but it's not nearly enough time yeah. to become like genetically isolated in that way or genetically distinguished that and way. What do you have to say? Erica? With, I see you thinking about with it. regard to the with regard to the warblers, um, I just did a little quick Google search on the warblers, and it seems like what's going on there because so many of these populations are ring species with one another that it entirely depends on which two groups, which two warbler sort of populations you're looking at as far as how long it yeah. took them to reproductively yeah. isolate. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Was that sufficient, you think? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, this question, this line, this question or line of questioning came up uh, with that bullshit, that, that bullshit uh, institution uh, answers in Genesis. I'm pretty sure, uh, <laughs> Erica, like, you, you missed the, I'm pretty sure you missed the subtitle, or you missed the thumbnail that said evolutionists will hate this. I watched that video. I watched that video, um, and that guy brought the, brought the question up. Yeah, uh, so that's Nathaniel Jensen. I, I'm fairly certain I know the the Answers in Genesis researcher who you're talking about. And Nathaniel Jensen, I've seen him on calls interacting with actual evolutionary biologists, and Nathaniel Jensen literally does not know the difference between mutation rate and substitution rate. This is a guy that's being paid mm -hmm you know, buku bucks by answers in Genesis to to show that genetics supports young earth creationism. And he doesn't know the differences that I was taught 
in high school regular biology, we're not even talking about like an AP bio class here, right? Like substitution and mutation are, are really simple um, definitions in genetics. And this man is, um, I find it very hard to believe that he doesn't actually know the difference to be quite honest with you. I think I think he probably does yeah. know the difference. And yeah. um, there's some, some tactical things going on with how he's presenting this information. Um, but yeah, the, always remember that Nathaniel Jensen um, is not a very good scientist and not a very honest scientist. Uh, yeah, um, I, I guess one last thing before you assassinate the theists. Um, <laughs> I forgot to address Jimmy. Whoever he is and wherever, wherever he is, his producer should fire the fuck out of him and force, go, force vegan cheese down his throat. That's all I have to say. What a violent, violent. Take care, Rogue Show. <laughs> I, I'm just Thanks kidding. Thanks for calling in, man. I know. I'm going. Mm-hmm. Uh, bye, bye Forrest. Uh, nice talking to you, man. Take care. And bye. Get, get, get Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. What a nice dude. Yeah, sweet guy. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so we've got a bunch of other calls on the line, including two theists and two atheists. Which one do you want to do first? Oh, dude, I'm easy. You know that. What are, what, is there any tantalizing questions that are really just jumping out at you that you're like, ah, oh, man, this, this is, I got hankering for that. I mean, like this one seems like it's 100% up your alley. Uh, so we'll do, oh, well, actually, you know what? I'm going to do this one first. Anyway, this is Richard, pronouns he, him, from Ohio. Wants to talk about pelvic anatomy of our distant ancestors. Uh, Richard, you're on the line. How are you doing? Hey, how are you guys? Uh, this is Mr. Sampson calling from Dayton, Ohio. Uh, I'm a big fan of the show. I listen all the time. <clears throat> cool. I had a question for Forrest there. Uh, yeah, yeah. All you, Forrest. You, I know that you guys... Uh, can you guys hear me? I Mike, bet anything Erica or... will have a better answer than me on this one from what it looks like, but who knows? Oh, you see the title of the question, do you? Okay. Yeah, it says okay. uh, something well, about pelvic anatomy of our another... distant ancestors. I'm good with that, but I bet yeah. you anything Erica is going to be better. Oh, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah, I mean, I know that you were talking about, you just wrote a paper on one of the ancient ancestors of uh, pelvic anatomy, so that's cool. Yeah. Uh, for us, if this is yeah, I had to, had to yeah, detail right. a bunch of stuff out. Which... Which ancestor was it by chance? Would you tell me? Homo erectus is what I focus on. A homo erectus. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's just it wasn't All like right. a whole so, ass paper just about that, just like a significant portion of a chapter of a thing. But yeah, that's homo erectus is the main focus of my research at this moment. Hopefully sure. only for the next few months. I mean, this isn't a done. pelvic thing, but I know that I know that their brain capacity is pretty impressive. In some cases, the homo erectus. It's smaller than ours, but like the the upper limit of theirs is within the lower limit of ours. So like they're they're pretty close. Not the biggest brains, but not wow. the smallest either. Yeah, it's pretty big if they're almost the same size as ours, man. It's pretty good. Almost. So my question, I mean, I know that you guys you already were talking about, you know, aliens earlier and uh ghosts. I know you guys believe in ghosts and stuff now. That's interesting. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, After the catch-up, I mean, how could you deny that? He was too convinced. I know you got you got some solid evidence there, man. <laughs> yeah, Dayton, Ohio is good. Uh, where are you all from? Are you uh, you all from around the area, or in the U.S., or from from Canada? Yeah, United States. Oklahoma. <laughs> yeah, Oklahoma. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Hey, uh, what was your question about pelvises yeah. or something? I do. I do. I mean, yeah. Uh, 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 well. Do you know the different uh, species of the Australopithecine or Australopithecus? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. There's a bunch so, of them. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's cool. All right. So, do you know about the uh, Australopithecus scari? Uh, yeah, I know of it. I I couldn't recite any yeah. significant details about it to you, but I know of them. Yeah. All right, excellent. Um, well, I bet you does does Gibbons know about the Gari or much? Australopithecus Garhi? Yeah, I mean, I, am I convinced Garhi? that it's definitively distinct from Australopithecus afarensis? I'm not convinced, 
Um, I think that it's reasonable enough based off of the facial anatomy um, and the cranial capacity, as well as what we have with postcrania, to suggest that it might be distinct from Australopithecus afarensis. But I'm curious, where, where are we going with this? You want to know about the Australopithecus? That's really interesting. So you're more like a grouper than a splitter then, right? Because I know some people want well, to group them all together in one group, and then some people want to say yeah, well, it separate depends. species, right? It, so. it depends. It depends on the hominin, right? Like I think Australopithecus diarmida and Australopithecus barrowrazali both belong to Australopithecus afarensis. Garhi might have a decent case as being separate. Uh, I've heard good arguments going both ways, and I work uh, in very close proximity with someone who's an Australopithecus afarensis specialist, so it, he seems relatively convinced. But you know, it, there's just not enough of Garhi of the of our holotype of Garhi, I think, to say with certainty. Uh, but if we move down to like Australopithecus sediba, I think it's absolutely distinct from Australopithecus africanus. Um, I think that Paranthropus is certainly distinct from Australopithecus enough to be um, a, a separate genus rather than to be just a robust Australopithecines. Um, but you know, keeping in mind that Australopithecus sinae is a, a paraphyletic, paraphyletic group, anyways. Um, but yeah, the, the long and short of it is, I'm sometimes a grouper and I'm sometimes a splitter. I, I have to be convinced by the evidence. And also, uh, if I remember I'm right, I could be mixing this like, up, but isn't, grouper, isn't Gari, I'm we a only have, like, now. one skull of Gari from, like, 1999, and that's pretty much it? Yeah. Whereas, like, with the with the Paranthropines, we have, like, a shit ton more that really makes them distinguished, and, like, they're very separate. Like, because Paranthropus, uh, Paranthropus Boise Eye is one of my favorites, and so, like, I know that guy definitely deserves his own, his own genus there. He's, he's in his own thing, but, like, Gari, oh, yeah. I, I don't know. I only remember the one. I remember him being kind of just, like, out a little maybe, maybe just a well, weird looking afferensis. Well, like put it this way, right? Uh, Ian Tattersall like, said in the paper that it seems as though if we want to be consistent with how we uh, categorize extants, so like the differences between, say, um, you know, a, a lion skull and a tiger skull, those differences, the morphologic differences between those two are about on par with the morphologic differences that we see between humans and Neanderthals. So if we were to be consistent, right, um, some of these guys are going to actually have different species and others still are going to have different genera. So I, I think that it, it it's kind of difficult to say because like with Neanderthals and humans, we have their genomes and like we know that the, the genomes are ridiculously compatible, like way more so than lions and tigers. But it just goes to show that sometimes morphology can be deceiving um, variation doesn't necessarily have to be massive differences in, in the genome. Sometimes it can just be even epigenetic, depending on what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting that you brought up genetics, because that actually brings me into another question before we get back to the Gari. Uh, this whole chromosome 2 fusion event that happened to turn, um, you know, hominids into humans, or the homo genus, do you believe that this occurred in a single generation? And what effect did it have? Um, so do you believe that this is a multi-generational event? Or do you think that it had a single generation well, that got that it's uh, going, mutation that yeah. passed along to the rest, you know? Yeah, so it's going to show up in a single generation. A chromosomal fusion isn't necessarily, like, ridiculously rare. Um, we've seen it in equids, and we've seen it in, in pigs as well, in suids. So it's not ridiculously rare. And th those two are even the telomere-telomere head-to-head fusions that we see in, in hominins as well. Um, but that being said, like, the, the actual phenotypic consequences of a chromosomal fusion are not necessarily large, right? We have humans born today with like Robertsonian translocations and they live perfectly normal lives and can even reproduce. They don't, you wouldn't tell by looking at them that they have anything strange going on with them. So chromosomal fusion doesn't necessarily mean we're rocking the world of, of an organism genetically, um, I mean, you are genetically, excuse me, but uh, phenotypically. Sometimes it just means you've got a little, a little quirk in the genome. That being said, something about the chromosomal fusion um, either the situation that it emerged in allowed for enough drift that it moved to fixation rather quickly and then proliferated through populations as that population grew, or otherwise there was something beneficial about it that allowed it to proliferate. One of those two is, those are our two sort of options there. Um, I think it's very unlikely that this occurred separately in more than one population. It also wouldn't make a ton so, of sense to have, like, not only is that such a rare event, but also, like, it's not exactly a step-by-step -step process. It kind of either happens or it doesn't. And so, like, it's, right. you know, it's, it, it's a, an, an issue of meiosis, not an issue of, of natural selection thing, in right? that particular way. Yeah, right. yeah. 
yeah. it's a single it's a single generation. Like all all the uh, all the chromosome fusions are a single generation event, right? Pretty much. As far as I experience. can tell, yeah. I can't think of a bit, I can't think of an example where chromosomal fusions took more than one generation um, because it, it's going to be an, an instant. It's going to be like a single reproductive event that results, you know, via via um, a recombination or otherwise in in, in a fusion, a telomere telomere fusion. Yeah. Now, I used to believe that this event happened or was supposed to have happened between the Australopithecus and then the Homo uh, group. No. But now I hear that it had happened that. that what it's believed, yeah, way older, like like between the uh, the the chimp, the pans and the uh, the very first uh, 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 Australopithecus. Yeah. Right. No, wouldn't so, surprise so you. You have like these off. Is, yeah. is that right? Right. Right. Or yeah, as far back as like if it if I, I, it's been a little while since like I had to know this, but if I like remember seven, right, seven years, right, yeah, uh, closer to like yeah, so, five, five to five to ten in there, because like I think Sahelanthropus, if I remember right, was like our most likely sort of common ancestor with chimps in that area, um, and so like. Yeah. You look like you're about to just tell me I'm stupid. <laughs> but like no, 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 it, no, no. There's, there's controversy on Salanthropus right now, and I'm really worked up about it because there was a lot of conversation going on at the ABAs about Salanthropus. And so I was just getting ready to go into another tie ride, and then I was like, you know what? This is completely not relevant at all to the conversation. Right. I'll shut up. <laughs> Let me tell you why that's bullshit. Yeah. I man, have so like, hey, can, I, can, I, can I cut in here right. a bit? So I love yeah. everybody, and I love the two hosts, and I love, and Caller, thank you for so much for calling. But there's got to be some kind of clarification that needs to go on. This is not a show where it's like, here are the two people you can call and just chum it up with. Like, this is a show about skepticism. Oh, no no, hang no on, doubt. Richard. Hang on. So if you have a yeah. if you have a question that is specific, like, hey, there's a common misconception of this or there's this skeptical challenge that's out there or whatever. A, a hyper specific thing that roughly what? Three dozen people who are watching out of a thousand might be able to follow the whole thing of what's your opinion on this like super obscure <laughs> right, biological fact. Or, let's or, just uh, jump general, totally more, past that yeah. and let's get to something that's related right, to skepticism. Right, got, and maybe Richard, right. don't talk over right. me. I hate that more than anything. Maybe we talk about something oh, related sorry, to skepticism, God. and maybe we talk about uh, that you've called in as a theist, and, and, and we mm -hmm. go in that direction or something. Otherwise. Let's let's move along and and keep our more broad appealed topical show going. Oh, Jimmy, you don't want to talk about the intricacies okay, of say like this chances. I thought you loved that. I I I might actually enjoy that specific conversation, but I wouldn't <laughs> put it on air that in a show that is broadly broadcasted out to to be a show about skepticism and trying to correct people's misconceptions about things. Uh, uh, yeah. Fair I enough. Just, fair enough. At a certain point, I was sitting here, and and uh, by the way, Forrest, have, do, I don't know if you yeah. have Twitter DMs open, but I was like messaging you, like, can you put a stop to this, please? Uh, oh anyway, no, I haven't been looking. Let's take, let's, we'll we'll get back on track, and everything's good, and then I'm gonna rant about AI and seem like a hypocrite and a liar after or something. I'm sure, but uh, let's do our best here, Richard. You can. Australopithecus gari is pretty cool, and also God isn't real. There you there go. We start with <laughs> okay, that right, right, right on. So, is that? So this Australopithecus gari, right, it's believed to be bipedal. This is my question, you know. So we have, it's not sure. because everybody knows what those are, right? All right, so we got, all right, so, I'll, so we have gari, and you also have diarmeda, or the Australopithecus diarmeda, okay? Now these are, these are basically uh, jaw, like partial jaws, as far as uh, the diarmeda go. Like there's not, there's not even really any skull cap assigned to these. And then the, you have the gari, you know, and as you said, it's just one skull, you know, and that's just like a jaw and a few pieces of skull cap. What, how do you know that it's a bipedal animal if you don't have the, uh, the foramen magnum, which is the hole where the, uh, the vertebrae goes through to the skull, you know, right, right. to know that it's an upright right. walking being? How do, you, how do we go about okay. like, assuming that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I've got I've got a great answer for this, actually. And I'm going to be super concise, just like Jimmy likes. OK, so if I found the <laughs> um, let's say the, the the front portion, right, of what looks to be some kind of extinct feline, right, some kind of cat looking thing. Do you think it would be reasonable for me to take that front portion of the cat, even though I don't have the full skull and say, I think this was probably a quadruped. Do you think that that's reasonable? 
Oh, yeah. I mean, if, if you think you have a cat, I guess that that would be reasonable. But the so, thing is, is, so it is, it is an uh, you know, you don't have any more an identical situation, animals. right? So, like, but this is this is a one to one identical situation, yes. right? Because even though with Australopithecus gargi, we don't have the entire skeleton yes. and we don't even have like the um, the uh, uh, ventral or inferior portion of the skull. The face is a dead ringer for right. an australopith. It looks like nothing else in the entire fossil record other than an australopith. And we know for a fact the that Gari? australopith, the Gari without Erica? exception, Erica, you're all talking about the Gari, right? without exception, are all <laughs> bipedal. Every single one of them, there is no exception uh, to this rule as far as we can tell. So if I pull up so, a cat skull, a portion of a cat skull, and I say, I know all cats are, bi are quadrupedal. I think that it's probably reasonable to say that this cat I just dug up out of the ground is also quadrupedal. The same exact logic applies to Australopithecus garhi as to the rest of the Australopiths, which we know are all bipedal. That's the reason. That's the full story. Okay. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you for your answer. Um, the thing of is with Gari, though, is like I like said, it's only a couple pieces of skull, you know, like skull cap, like right. four, I think. And then it's like a partial jaw. So here's the well, thing. It's just missing a portion of the face. So far back, so far back face. on the phylogenetic yeah, chill. By the way, hey, Richard, the before you go on with that, just, hey, hold on. Before you go on yeah. with that, just what you just said there is more than enough mm -hmm. to classify it. If you have a partial jaw, then you can tell that it has a two, one, two, three dental arcade, which means it has two incisors, okay. one canine, two premolars, and three molars. And you can look at those molars and see that they're Y5 shaped and not bilophodont shaped. And that means it's definitely a great ape. And then you could like, it's like just, just the pieces well, you named. Only, I know it sounds, oh, yeah, I know it's, it's definitely a great ape, man. Definitely agree. Well, what I'm it's saying is, I know that what you're saying sounds like a tiny little bit, but it's actually a hell of a lot. It doesn't sound like it, but it really is. What? So it's not just what that, is, too. Uh, like, the, there are every the single the aspect of Australopithecus afarensis morphology is actually diagnosable, right? Like, of the aspects that we have of Garhi, mm -hmm. there's a reason why there's a debate as to why it's its own thing or whether it should be classified as Australopithecus afarensis whom we have the remains of 300 to 400 individuals and know for a fact that it was bipedal. So if you find something, and, and this isn't even a thing where they're like, oh, Australopithecus garhi, was it bipedal or was it not? It's like, that is just an absolute given in the literature because it looks so much like Afarensis, who is a definitive biped. Like, this is just a, this you're is just like a- You're a talking about the first family, 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 correct? The no, I'm talking about- the first family. I'm talking about the entire about species, the Australopithecus afarensis, and the entire genus Australopithecus. Every single one that there is enough material to actually assess for bipedality. So things like the distal end of the femur, the feet, the foramen magnum's location, and the shape of the pelvis. All four of those aspects, along with certain parts of the pelvis, like the uh, anterior inferior iliac spine, things of that nature, muscle attachment sites, like the protolinea aspera, every single portion of all of these guys, every australopith ever dug up, ever in the history of paleoanthropology, shows something that was bipedal when it was on the ground. Like, full stop, there isn't a way to make these things non-bipedal when they're, when they're on the ground, and, and that's just how biomechanics works. Right. Okay. So it, it makes now, a lot more sense to now. say this one was bipedal, this one was bipedal, this one was bipedal. I'm not sure about this one, but it was probably bipedal. And then instead of saying, right. and then all of a the sudden they evolved back onto all fours, and then they went back onto bipedality after that. That would be huge amounts right. of changes for no reason back and forth. It's not a no parsimonious parsimon solution, oh, as it, we would call I dig, it. Our I dig it, dude. Let's, but check this out, though. Now, these guys are so far down on the list as far as the phylog phylogenetic tree. We're talking, like, millions of years before the afarensis, you know? And so, like, they could be so mm -hmm. close to Pan that their, their form and magnum would be, like, in between where you would expect a, a, an afarensis no. and, a, 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 are, and something no, Pan no. would be. <laughs> no, no on both are counts. Yeah, what, yeah. Well, well, Everything you just said, like, no. Why wouldn't they be on the way to becoming Australopithecine? Listen, Richard, Australopithecus like, Garhi is like younger. Do you really think it goes from pan, chimpanzee to Australopithecine in a day? Like, that's crazy. No, it doesn't go from chimpanzee to anybody. Yeah, chimpanzees are not a common ancestor. Chimps are not a common ancestor. Yeah, so Richard, only chimps have been evolving so just back. as long as we Hang have. On. What's that? I'm sorry, Eric. I couldn't hear you. No, it's okay. I said chimpanzees have been evolving for just as long as we have. They are uniquely derived in their own ways that are completely distinct.
from Miocene apes, right? Like there were apes living for over 12 million years before the first thing that even starts to kind of look like a hominin shows up on the scene, right? But some of the first apes go even older, depending on who you talk about. You, you've got Merodopithecus published on that shows up 21 million years ago. So these things are distinctly ape. They have, as four said, the Y5 molar pattern, 2123 dental formula, all of the characteristics that define an ape, paleless form, uh, mobile shoulders, flexible clavicles, all that kind of stuff. They're all apes and none of them look like chimpanzees. Not a single one of them can knuckle walk. And I know because right now I'm studying for my comps on Miocene apes. I've probably read almost every paper out there on stupid Miocene apes and it's all fresh in my mind. <laughs> not one is a knuckle walker, period. So, so we're not evolving from a knuckle walker to a biped. We're evolving from something that's in you know, my opinion, you know, there are people out there who propose there was a knuckle walking stage, but they don't have any fossils to show for it. We're evolving from something that's orthograde up in the trees, so upright in the trees, and you take away the trees, you got something that's upright on the ground, right? Um, all of the, or, uh, not all of, but there are a handful of basic uh, body plan characteristics that make something upright in the trees that are the same traits that make something upright on the ground, right? So it's, it's really not that hard of a transition to make. So, I mean, I, I, I sympathize with one of Australopithecus garhi to be related to panins, but like the, the face is also all wrong. It's not prognathic. It's got tiny canines. It's got a bigger brain case size. I could go on. It, I also want to point out that you mentioned that, that, that yes, Gari. You, you also mentioned that Gari okay. is like year, millions and millions of years before yeah. Homo. Yeah. No, it's not. It, it, if well, I, it's I just double checked to make sure. Millions. Yeah. It's, like, it's, it's not million. millions at all. Yeah. No, yeah. zero, zero millions. It is actually contemporaneous with Homo habilis because I'm looking at, I just checked to be double sure. Australopithecus gari lived around 2.5 million years ago. Let me see what you're looking at here. Let me take a peek. By all let me, means, let me you can look up too. the Smithsonian, go all to right, humanorigins.si.edu. Right I got Homo, Homo step back. I muted you. Shut the fuck up when other people are talking, Richard. It, it, I'll give you points for at least you're not sexist. You talk over everybody. And usually when we have this problem, they only try to talk over the women on screen. Shut the fuck up when other people are talking. I think every time Forrest and Erica have tried to talk in the last 10 minutes, you've tried to interrupt them, either participate in a conversation or go the fuck away. You've already mostly ignored the instructions I already gave you because you haven't gotten to a concise point or what your, uh, uh, I, I don't know if you're anti-evolution or fucking what you're trying to beat around the bush to. You've been beating around the bush this entire time. So get to the point and stop fucking talking over people. Jesus Christ. Well, we, well, we are having a conversation, man. That's what, uh, does it feel like a conversation right now? As I start to talk over you while you're talking, it, it does. how it does, does it, does it feel like it feels like talk. it right now as we're both talking and it, nobody it can does. understand either of us because we're both going at the same Absolutely. time. Fuck off. <laughs> You can decide whether you want to drop them or not. I, I won't make that decision for just, you, but Jesus Christ. I just, I, I'll do one more little bit here. You can go, if you want to look it up, you. you can go to humans. Hey, you human origins. Watched, um, si. you you're doing I am also it going now. to mute you. Dipshit. I am also going to mute him. Christ. Fucking Jesus, dude. We've been on this call for 20 minutes. We've gotten nowhere. Um, you can go, if anybody wants to look this up, you can go to humanorigins.si.edu. That's the Smithsonian Institution's website of, of like all sorts of human fossils. I'm actually going to link the specific page for Australopithecus gari here so everybody can see it. Um, and it shows Australopithecus gari was discovered in 1990 uh, in Eastern Africa and the uh, uh, Bori region. Looks like cool. Oh, it's in the Wash, Ethiopia. That's cool, in the Wash region. Um, and it lived 2.5 million years ago. Just so you know, the first member of the Homo lineage, Homo habilis, lived 2.6 million years ago. The earliest fossils we have of them, if I remember correctly, are actually right at 2.5, but we have stone tools that were definitely their kind of stone tools that go a little bit older than that, so we're like, these guys definitely made them. So these guys were, at the very most, uh, I can say that they were, they, they evolved a little bit after the early Homo, but more, like, if you really want to be conservative about it, they evolved at the exact same time. So this is not millions and millions of years older than us. It is not a bridge between us and chimpanzees. It is not a bridge between us and early uh, uh, quadrupedal ancestors. There is no reason whatsoever to say that this thing was quadrupedal, knuckle-walked, anything other than an obligate biped 
just like everything before it for the past couple million years. So like you go back as far, you know, back as, gosh, you and I talked about this, Erica, before. Like you can go back almost 7 million years and make good arguments for, for, for at least facilitated bipedalism, at least. Like, so we're talking about, you know, a difference of 5 million years here. Definitely things walking upright. And now you have this guy, Gari. Are you really going to sit here and say, no, but yeah, then this guy changed his mind. <laughs> and then this one here, because we aren't 100% sure of where his foramen magnum is, maybe decided that this was more like a chimpanzee dude. than anything else. It doesn't make any sense. Dude, dude, I I was like, I felt like I was tripping, right? Like I pulled up a picture of Australopithecus gargi because I was like, is it possible that we have left less of this thing than I thought? All the diagnostic yeah. characteristics of the dentition are there. We've got like every tooth in this thing's mouth. And like, for those of you who yep. don't really, you know, give a shit about paleoanthropology, I'll tell you, like, you can tell pretty much everything you need to know about a hominin by what its teeth look like, as far as at least yes. which genera it evolves in, or which genus, excuse me, uh, yep. that it belongs to. Um, Australopithecus has like notoriously diagnostic characteristics, but we all know what this was about, right, Forrest? Like, this was about. You can't prove using the material of this specific specimen I'm talking about right here that Australopithecus guard was bipedal, therefore human evolution is bad and dumb. And it's like, I always find it really funny when, when we talk to creationists who just want to pretend, and I don't know for sure that Richard was doing this, maybe he wasn't, but they We're never want to talk about- we don't know about the, they, they never want to talk about the plurality of the data. Like, I want to talk about Lucy. That's the only Australopith I want to talk about. Forget Sediba, forget STW573, right. the like, freaking complete Australopithecus africanus. Forget the dozens and dozens and dozens of foot bones that we have scattered across the entirety of East and South Africa. Forget about all of that. And you know what? Forget about Paranthropus too, a clearly apish, quote unquote, looking MF that's got this big flat face, giant teeth. No one would ever confuse this for a human. And yet everything about it screams biped. They can't have it. Yep. They can't have a bipedal ape because that would be admitting that one of these things that humans are unique for today isn't actually unique to humans. And it's like, dude, like, let's just talk about the data itself. If you want to, you know, I, we can have a conversation about say Halantibus, you want to talk about how you don't think that's biped, sure, whatever. Um, but Australopithecus, brother, you're going to have a hard it's, time convincing anybody who's okay. ever seen a bone or taken an anatomy class that that thing was a quadruped. Seriously. Anyway, with that, we'll bring Richard back uh, now that we've both been able to say a complete sentence and, and get everything out. Richard, what do you think about the things we just said? Do those answer your questions? Um, well, it doesn't. Well, I mean, uh, first of all, I'd like to start by apologizing to Forrest and Erica and the audience for giving you some misinformation as far as the phylogenetic tree. Because I'm looking at it right now, and he's absolutely right. The Gari it didn't supposedly die out until almost when homo was here you know so and i did say homo not homo sapiens now it is two and a quarter million years before homo sapiens is where we are now before modern days but homo sapiens starts way before that so it's not even a million years between that and uh and the uh and the homo sapiens so yeah you're absolutely right but i was also talking about the diarmida bones and i will talk about lucy with you erica if that's what you want to talk about but the dire No, she, was, she was saying that that's all creationists want to talk about. So what what is the oh, oh, point oh. then of, of, of this call is what I want to know. So what what yeah, what what is your I'm what is your thesis you. statement here, Richard? I'm curious. The thesis statement. Uh, yeah, what what, yeah, what, what are you calling well, to say? Well, for, for one thing, as far as the Gari goes, I think that's nothing more than a, an ape skull. And I think that you can tell by the teeth that it's an ape skull. I don't think it was really? of course what it's an ape skull. What, what yeah. about the I mean what, what I know yeah you're right. Of course it's an ape skull. Like you're you're right because it is an ape skull. Skull. Obviously. Yeah, but yeah, you know I got like three skull, yeah. Um what I what I'm asking though when you say it's an ape skull Richard you're meaning a non hominin ape are you not? Well, I mean that's that the definition of hominid, you know. I mean like do you say hominid or hominini or There's only one. What is it? There's only one. Yeah, a hominin, a hominin is, any, is, is any extinct ape that is more closely related to humans than it is to our closest living relatives, which would be chimpanzees and bonobos. Do, um, I know that you guys know the definition of hominid. I'm asking yeah, you, right. do you, yeah. you, you, you hominin, <laughs> hominin or hominid? 
I N I N. Let me just ask you a question. Richard. Are Coming you in. saying that okay, war is not? I'm sorry, I was interrupting you that time. That was my bad. That, now I'm running all over. I'm getting, I'm getting heated. You sorry. get too. No, go ahead, Erica. Go ahead. That's cool. I'm going to say. I was going what to say. Are you? Is your thesis statement here? Because this is what I think you're trying to say. I think what you're trying to say is that there isn't an Australopithecus specimen fossil that clearly represents an intermediate between modern day humans, some kind of intermediate between modern day humans and ancient Miocene apes. You don't think that it's bipedal and you don't think that it can occupy uh, the, the sort of definition that we tend to think of as a transitional species. Is that correct? Well, it's a very general question because you seem to be asking about the whole Australopithecine uh, species. You know, I am. Yes, place. I am. Do you think any Australopith occupies an intermediate Is position? There... So what you're asking me, do you think, do I think that there's any skeleton maybe that would point to the direction that humans evolved from some ancestor of chimpanzees? I'm asking, do you think Australopithecus is a human ancestor? What is it? Is Australopithecus a human ancestor? In your opinion? Uh, well, oh no! Human well, oh yeah, no! Oh no! Oh no! I believe the Bible. Oh, no. Yeah, I Forest, believe, oh, I believe no. the Bible. I believe that God made mankind. Yeah, because I'm a. I call it oh, oh, yeah. right? shit, dude. It took us oh, twenty nine well, minutes and twenty nine seconds to get here, no, but we science. finally got y'all. there. I'm okay, you're no, a creationist. I'm not even convinced this whole thing wasn't a troll, too. Uh, watch how I use that mute button. I'm not even convinced this whole thing wasn't a troll, too, considering that right before he finally admitted that he doesn't, he called Australopithecus Sasquatch. No, dude, that that's what, this is, this yeah, is no, the that's, thing, that's right? That's what like, you, we heard, were both I've cracking up over. I've heard them do this before. They, they, okay, for those of you who don't know, there's like a friend, there's two different types of creationists that will call Australopith Sasquatches. One of them think like I guess they're like a, a fringe group, but they literally think that Sasquatches are just living Australopiths that got off Noah's Ark and are are now survivors, and mm. and they're not human ancestors. They are real animals that are just bipedal apes, and they're now Sasquatches. And the other ones, it's meant to be a pejorative where it's like, haha, you believe in bipedal apes, and then it's like, yeah, yeah humans are bipedal apes one, but also, Aust- I mean, God. This is so freaking classic. Why did it take that long? Why why can't they just say it? Why can't you can they ask just, him. Why can't they say it? You can ask Richard. We, you we, want to he just hung up. Did he? He just hung up. What a little bitch. I was yep. going to ask him if he knows what pedantic means and if he'd admit that he did 30 minutes I, of it before I had a million other questions. It it literally doesn't matter. Like I we could we could sit here for us and pull up pictures and show him step by step every aspect of Australopith morphology and how it is virtually identical to the correlate in humans and how they're directly related to bipedalism, none of it would matter. We would pivot to something else. Yep. We've done this, both of us have done this dance a million times. I just wish they would have been straightforward with it. Hey, future Seriously, Jimmy, when you're editing this, future Jimmy, when you're editing this, hopefully you listen to this part because you often don't listen when you edit. Uh, this clip should be called something like creationist takes 30 minutes to finally admit he's an idiot. Something like that. Oh yeah. my god! There we go. Uh, that call took so goddamn long that the other theist on the line hung up. No, that made me sad. Like that yeah. blows. Also, do we have okay. any more lines open? Yes, uh, I can open more lines if you want, but we've already been going for two hours, and we have super chats still, and super chats usually take you all many more hours. Uh, I will say, if, um, if there's a theist caller, I wanna I wanna open one more line if there right. is one. I'll resume lines until theist only, until the screener theist only. Dude, uh, actually, we got so bamboozled by that. Like that was just a classic bamboozle. I can't believe it. I knew it. And, and you both I knew were it. like, "This is the hard we part." We were all of, thinking it. This is the hard part of the show that I I do these shows multiple days a week. I knew within two minutes this is where it was eventually going to go, and I was like, "I I shouldn't steer the conversation. I'll just hold back. I'll hold back." I I wish I had jumped in earlier and been like, "Just ask him if he believes." And in, uh, in fact. Two minutes in right. about, I almost unmuted and said, ask him how old he believes the earth is. I almost did that, and yeah. I should have just done that. Well, Dude, that's, when, like, I, wanted, we I wanted to ask him. Sorry, you go, you go. You go ahead. I was going to say, I oh, wanted yeah. to ask him, why do you believe in, in God? And why, you know, what's, because it says you're a theist. Like, what do you get? But, like, I was so desperate to, like, do it organically and just ask, what's your fucking point? 
get to a point and then we can decide, okay, where does that lead us in this conversation? And like, it just, well, this whole thing about debating skulls and debating yeah. this guy and that guy and, the, and like fucking God did. And he didn't even know how old the fucking thing was or Erica what we knew it. of it or what. He just learned a name. Yeah. I bet you anything. No, I bet you I would bet a million video. dollars. Is what he did. That's he exactly. Yeah. I would bet a million dollars his preacher or somebody showed said yeah. some dumb shit about like the theists or the atheist evolutionists say that this gari is this, but really they only have a few skull fragments and therefore what? they don't know anything. And that yeah. and I bet you that was what he thought was like it. We found Gari's half skull and we were like, aha, there's no god. And that was our our whole thing. And like just Dude. that, because that's Erica, the whole fucking quick. thing that I see on Erica, Earth. send me your email address on Twitter. I want to forward you the videos of the ghost proof. I'm not oh, going to yeah, say a thing do. about them until all three of us have seen them. Yeah, dude. Do we I, need um, to watch those on the show? Yeah, go ahead. You go ahead and watch. Don't say Try not to react. Only facial reactions. Okay. Don't say anything. My worry okay. is, I'll explain why I don't want any reactions in a moment. It's actually, it's for us. There's two of them. Yes. I said, I said, thank you, my email. Yeah, you're yeah, going to have dude, a hard time you? not reacting. <laughs> Mute your mic so you the audio. Okay. It's just so it's just so frustrating, right? Like you come to these conversations, I, you know, I come to these conversations in good faith. Like I want to know, I want to have the conversation, but like they can't just be forthright because they know the second they reveal <laughs> their intentions, it's like this yes. game over. Okay, fourth while you're doing it, now you talk and I get to watch the ghost video. I'm uh, I'm still I'm still get I think I think he's probably watching the second one also, but um yeah, I've I've sent it to you, and uh, yeah, I, I go ahead and see if it's in your email. Um, oh, Chat, I don't see anything yet. Uh, it's it's from dear Mr. Atheist at gmail dot com. Uh, yeah, okay, I just got it. Okay, excellent. It. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Uh, I would watch the yeah the yeah. Go ahead, Forrest. Uh, are you having a hard time not sharing your thoughts yet? Now that I see Erica has them and and nothing, the reason why I said don't react or say anything, I was worried if we give too much away, the videos would be deleted before all three of us got an opportunity to watch them. I will now say I'm not going to show them on air because my worry is that if I were to show them on air, it would encourage people to do stupid shit like this again. Now, I don't know who's fucking with who. I hope that the caller who called in is the victim of the prank, but this is clearly a prank. So hard. The yeah. So let's let me uh, describe the first video oh, wait. to people. The first video I saw. Oh, well, wait, wait for Erica. Wait for Erica. Yeah, okay. sure, sure. I got, I got like, I got twenty seconds left on that sec. Fifteen seconds on the second one. On the second one. Uh, oh and, and without audio, you probably don't know what's going on because they're basically saying like, oh, my God, I can now I can't turn it off. The first video appears to be uh, some sort of side table, some sort of, uh, uh, you know, just like wooden furniture with drawers in it where you only see a close up of essentially the drawer at the front with no ability to see the video on any side. By the way, uh, that just means they were too la lazy to set up fishing string. Because you can actually do this without that. Uh, but basically, you see a drawer open and then a drawer close with three mm -hmm. sides of the drawer co totally concealed where the per a person could just be moving the drawer. Uh, the the mm -hmm. idea that this is you could get a you could use fishing line or something you're not going to see on a regular video. And by the way, these are also poorly lit, so they're very low detail because the cameras mm -hmm. are are uh, compensating for ISO. So it's they're also yeah, it's you know slightly out of focus as well. The drawer opens and then the drawer closes. The second video. Well, is, hold on. There, there's more to it than that. The ahead. drawer opens and closes, and in the background, you can hear Tucker Carlson on the TV talking about the deep state. So yeah. like that, I feel like that's an important part of I the story. <laughs> I wish I'd done that. Yeah. Oh no, that's I, I had to go back and re-listen because like I, I yeah. And they're like, please leave our house, leave our drawers alone. Yes. <laughs> like, the yes. Drawers just yes. open it like crazy. Yes. And I hope <laughs> there's I hope there is day. better ghost footage on TikTok. Like the, the TikTok accounts make like 
ghost proofs and like there's somebody banging on the closet and they open the closet there's nobody there those videos are more quality than that one <laughs> it's great the second ghost video no dylan you cannot say i'm not going to spend all my night looking through ghost videos Dylan, <laughs> i love you dylan but jesus christ read the room i'm not i'm not happy i had to do this the second video is of exactly what Forrest suggested. It is somebody casting an image to the TV, which this is the best part. The T, it, it is a, uh, as, let me let me make sure I get it right. Let me make sure that I, I, I think I remember what it looked like, but I just want to double check. Um, yes, it is prayer hands with the caption yep. next to it. I am sorry, please forgive me. Thank you, I love you. Which, so I love the idea that for millions of years, some sorts of humans have existed, but there have been ghosts out there just waiting until their graphic design skills get get put up for hauntings. Like, or they invented TV, smart TVs. I can haunt now. Um, what I love about I, that is that there was one point where it shows these praying hands and it says, please forgive me. I love you. And they're like, this is grandma sending her message. And I, I, I forgot what they were saying exactly. But like, this is this, is this person. Look, you can see Margaret. Margaret. Yeah. And then there's a fucking notification, like a phone notification pops up on the screen for a second and then goes away. <laughs> and they're like, oh, I don't know what that was. And then it cuts back to whatever doctor show they're watching. I look, here's the thing. I'm gonna it go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and link it. Debra, who called? No, don't link it in the chat. Don't link the videos. We're not giving them views. Uh, too late. Okay, well, delete it. I just sent it. No, you didn't. I, oh, there it is. All right. Well, I'm remove. Shit, I can't remove it. I'll from remove this it. Account. No. Yes, I'm removing <laughs> it. What are you talking about? I'm not no. giving them what they are no. here for. Nobody watch it. I guess. Don't, don't click that. Dude, one. Where's? Where? Can where I delete are, it on like... my end? Yeah, you can. But I thought I did already. Did it not okay. work? I don't see it deleting. It's it's fine. Nobody click it. <laughs> Nobody click it. Uh, or watch it. Stop it. All of you. I think I just have to block <laughs> just, it. I have to put you in timeout. Get some help. I'm putting... I, uh, no, you, I did you put me in timeout? Delete That'll delete all the other links you shared earlier. Uh, these are... Th so, look. I don't know whether it's... The thing I worry about is that the person who is trying to, like, set this up or whatever is the kid of the mom and that that kid's in on the joke and trying to humiliate. I worry that Deborah is, they are trying to purposefully humiliate Deborah. Uh, there's a chance that Deborah is gullible mm -hmm. and has been believing all this quote unquote evidence and doesn't just think like, right, but what if some one of you is lying because humans lie all the fucking time to be interesting? Like, that's it. That's the whole motivation. I don't feel interesting enough. My, I mm -hmm. might take up lying. Like, the, I just don't. I I don't know whether our time was completely wasted or we're finding out that they're taking advantage of a older, not old, but older uh, yes. gullible woman. Somebody here is an asshole, and I I don't know if it's Deborah or not. Yeah, I don't know for a fact that it's Deborah, but definitely it is so such silly, shallow bullshit. Je uh, Loving Je how many people click that link. Je Loving I'll send how many people click that. I'll send you the link. Isn't it kind of isn't it kind of weird that the ghost is communicating both by being capable of writing full Graphic ass words design. on a TV screen and uh, also by slamming the drawer open and close? Like, not, what? You, you, that the is ghost is under, just like, today I'm going to try Morse code. Today I'm, try, today I'm just, I'm feeling a little naughty. I'm just going to start slamming drawers open and close. And then they're like, my dearest fellows currently in my dwelling, it is I, the ghost. <laughs> I am speaking to you through a stream of consciousness on your television. It's like... I mean, what, like, like, in, you know, engage for a moment with the idea, like, that it is someone talking from beyond the grave, right? It's like, we're, we're, why, why like this? Why, why like right. this? What, you know, if you were to entertain the possibility, what's with the drawer slamming, right? Like, I, I don't know. I, hey, what's up with I the don't... drawer slamming? Hey, what's going on? What are, you, no, the... what are you doing? What are, what you, are you doing? doing? <laughs> what the fuck? Come on, don't slam a drawer. Who slams a drawer? <laughs> You underrepresented that. This ghost, not only did they make a caption, they went and got stock imagery of a decent blue pleasant gradient and then <laughs> cut out some prayer hands, converted it to a PNG put so it could be layered as a, with a transparent background. This is a person, It like as memes go or as, as graphics go, it looks like the kind of stuff they put up in churches. 
this this All ghost right. is is a graphic designer. And, and, and like clearly, the ghost didn't have clearly. to make it a transparent PNG because the ghost is already transparent. Uh, That's the supernatural <laughs> part, you see. I, feel I, so I like the now. idea that it took it took the invention of GIMP for ghosts to be able to like just straight up write messages on TVs. Like TVs have been around for like decades and decades <laughs> and decades, but GIMP needed to be invented so they could make them transparent yep. and really get the point across. Yeah. For the record, uh Erica is referring to a software that is a Photoshop clone, basically, that is free for anybody to access. She is not just repeatedly using a slur for disabled people. I just want to make sure that everybody understands that she is oh, referring shoot. to the oh, photo oh, software. Oh, yeah. I'm talking about the photo software. Sorry. Yeah. Yes, I should have been clear. Yes, I'm talking about the, the unfortunate. <laughs> now, I am, now I know the unfortunately named <laughs> software. Unfortunately. Right? Why, why when I say only theist calls, do atheists then go, oh, the lines are open? I'm coming back. Right. Anyway, you, I'm going to drop, we have, uh, I'm dropping all the atheist calls that aren't, that weren't already in the queue. Okay. Uh, we, so do we have, we, I see we have one theist caller. Um, do, do we want to open up for any more? It's just this I mean, last one. And then we got, so we have three James calls and left. Ray have both been there for more than an hour. I'd say pick them both up. Oh, no, I'm absolutely talking play. to James and Ray. Cool, cool. I'm yeah. absolutely talking to James and Ray because I've been waiting sweat. for a long time. I got nothing to do. I'm just okay. saying. No, I'm don't, good. Don't try. I might and, get like, another I want to do drink here in a second. Honestly, <laughs> can you bring me another? Can you bring me a grilled cheese as well? Can we do that? You're like, like, I'm so jealous <laughs> of that fucking grilled cheese. Right, the new host mantra really when you're on the too. show it is. What is the question I'm being asked? That's going to be the new. Right. I'm just going to keep telling everybody. If you're hosting, just keep asking yourself that over and over again. If you find you're not getting closer to it, attack the caller. <laughs> attack the caller. Yeah. Hard Son of a Viciously. Anyway, do it. Uh, we've got. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this guy, and then we'll move on from there. And if we if we end up, because I'm. I'm always down to do theist calls until there aren't any more theist calls. But like, I don't know how long you guys want to stay up tonight. Um, so we got James uh, from the great state of Oklahoma uh, wants to talk about uh, unfalsifiable questions. James, how are you doing today? Hey, uh, Forrest, how's it going? Man? It's going well. Great, um, Erica, uh, your channel is amazing. I just. <laughs> wanted to Thanks. put that out there. Thanks, I, um, <laughs> yeah, oh, that's the, that's the yeah, I'm, I'm just I'm not trying to flatter uh, the host. I was just letting you know that I, I didn't want to just you're good. Come you're good. Just ask your question. You know, uh, <laughs> Titus uh, Jackson uh, produced a video, a um, commercial for your, whenever you ran for the House of Representatives in uh, Oklahoma. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that um, is so awesome. he's, he's a friend of mine. He did he did uh, oh, one great. of my commercials uh, for one of my businesses early on. Um, uh, what uh, I kind of wanted to ask you guys kindly: How do you handle unfalsifiable claims? Um, as educators, whenever you get hit with, I I think basically infinite regress questions, uh, questions of unfalsifiable ability like um genetic questions where we don't actually know you know yeah um i'm sorry i uh probably uh formulating the, that question poorly oh no you're just fine i, I think i think the big thing like so so really popular unfalsifiable claim is people like to talk about um the the like uh simulation theory that we're all living in a simulation. Yes. And I've, I've like seen that. so many clips, yeah, where people are like, well, Neil deGrasse Tyson and 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 uh, Elon Musk both said that maybe we might be, and they, they think that it's possible, so therefore it is. And it's like, okay, sure, sure it's possible. But it's also not something you could ever test in any way. Like you said, unfalsifiable. There is nothing that I could ever show to you that would prove to you that you are not in a simulation because you would very easily say that proof is part of the simulation. That's the rules of the simulation that you grew up in and reality outside of the simulation has different physics, different rules, different laws. So it's a different thing. Um, and if I were to show you that you are in a simulation, there's nothing you could say that like, 
actually, it's not a simulation. It's a different thing. It's a dream. And this proof of the simulation is part of the dream that I'm having. His dreams are crazy. And sometimes they make sense when they don't. And if you were to wake up from the simulation and actually enter the Matrix world where, like, oh, I woke up from the thing and that's a... You can't prove that that thing you just woke up into isn't level two of the video game you're playing, the simulation, the whatever. And so there's absolutely no way to even begin to test this. It's not just that there's no proof. It's that there is no test. There's no question you can ask. There's no reason to think that it's true or false or valuable to even think about because there's absolutely no way you could ever actually broach the question appro appropriately. Um, and so when I get into an argument about things like that, I'll just bring up the fact that like, there, I, I don't want to be a jerk here, but there really isn't anything worth talking about here. We might as well be talking about you know the magic invisible unicorn in my garage just because you can't prove it. It's the same thing when we talk about gods and people say, well, you just have to have faith. And I bring up roll in the closet goblin. Why don't you believe in that? I have the exact same amount of evidence that you do. Um, and so it's just, that's, mm. that's the big thing that I, I try to light on. It's just like, it's, it's as ridiculous as any other ridiculous thing. And even though it sounds science-y, and even if somebody with a scientific background says maybe, and even if somebody with a lot of money says maybe, and even if it makes you feel real good and sleep well at night, and even if it helps you get out of a sticky situation, and even if it brings meaning to your life, and even if it what whatever, it doesn't change the fact that it, it it's nonsense to think about. Um, so yeah, that's that's my answer for you as far as I can give it to you. Could I could I possibly ask one more question? By all means. Also, Erica, I'm sure you have something to say as well, but I, I don't want to, you know. No, I mean, you, you, you hit on most of it. The only thing I would add is that, like, so unfalsifiable questions, like, I think there's actually a lot of strength in saying, no, oh, that's not within the purview of science. Like, the beauty of science is that we can test and investigate things that are consistent within our understanding of the world, and they seem to operate mm -hmm. consistently. Predictive power is, like, the entire point, right? The, the gold standard mm -hmm. of science, if you mm. will. Um, once it falls outside of that uh, outside of that range, uh, not only is it sort of not worth investigating in the sense that we can't investigate it, right? But like, it's I don't want to say like it's a waste of time, but like as as Forrest says, it kind of ceases to be investigatable, right? There's nothing you can do to to really dig further into that. And what's I think interesting about uh, a lot of the, the religions in the world today, and you know, I'm I'm the resident agnostic, I'm the the unpopular. <laughs> like you know whatever like i, I allow it the possibility i guess but um not not certainly uh with with many of the organized religions that that are you know kind of on the world today and the reason i say that is because there are aspects of those that are investigatable right historical accuracy mm. right anthropology um if you get into like creationism of its many stripes there's aspects of the science re scientific record and fossil record and paleontology and physics and all of that kind of stuff that allow you to investigate it um and then it, it, as said, oh yeah go ahead sorry i'm so sorry um i i no, have shoot. been dying to ask uh you a question and forrest how do you feel about the notion that a biogenesis was it is a chemistry process of just high hydrogenating carbon dioxide like that it, it, that that's just what it is. I mean, not that exact thing, but as far as like it just a, an abiotic process that just happened by natural. Yeah. yeah. So like hi yeah, hydrogen and carbon yeah, dioxide, like you're, you're not going to make and it's not yeah. hydrogenation of carbon dioxide. Um, yeah, yeah, because the earth kind of needs it. I, I, I don't know. It was something that, um, uh, I heard Sean Carroll say, and um, I just, I wanted to know what you guys thought. Like, is it potentially chemistry could just answer everything? Well, that's the well, thing is that life now is just chemistry. So like, that's, that's, well, that's the whole thing. Yeah. There's, there's a really interesting, I think it's Jeremy England who talks about this. I'm pretty sure he's a physicist, but I'm not quite certain. Uh, he he kind of makes this argument, and I'm probably butchering it because it's been quite some time since I've actually read it, but he says something along the lines of, someone in the comments can kind of 
get you on the details on this, hopefully. Uh, but that that the origin of life is actually kind of within the normal pathways, as you said, of chemistry and physics of something going from a more, you know, ultimately a more unstable state to a more stable state while in the scheme of an open system still maintaining an increase in entropy. Um, and I thought that was really interesting because oh, right, like we, right, we tend right, to think right, of right, DNA. Right. Yeah, we tend to think of DNA as so orderly and as, as so and RNA as well as so orderly. But the argument that he basically makes is that ultimately the entropy is increased by going through this temporary stage of order. And I think that's not unlike what we see sometimes in chemistry, uh, as far as my understanding of chemistry goes. Um, so sure, I, I don't know necessarily, it is going to be quite difficult to, to do something kind of similar analogous today outside right. of a lab because right. anything that would form would be so simple. Yeah, it would yeah, be out a, 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 re a reductionist question. I apologize. Yeah. I, yeah. No, no. Uh, um, no, that was beautiful though. And uh, the symmetry of all of it is just, uh, uh, yeah, uh, really, thank you. Yeah, of course, of course. I'm yeah. sorry, it's been, a, it's been some time, but I always thought it to be kind of an interesting idea as well. I was just checking the comments to see if anybody added anything of, of note. So, but I, yeah, I think it's good. If you've, if you've not read The Vital Question by Nick Lane, you would probably enjoy it quite a bit. Um, is it okay if I ask for you to, can you share that show notes or is that, can you uh, drop the reading? Oh, the reading? Yeah, it's called The Vital Question. It's by Nick Lane. The Vital It's a book on abiogenesis. Okay. Yeah. Thank I'm you. looking it up. Yeah. Uh, yeah I also I, recommend... I, I, while you're here, I also recommend uh, What is Life by Addy Pross. This guy there. Hmm. Kind of cool. Um, and then also... Yeah, there's there's the book on screen there. Um, and then also, I always yeah, recommend, I've recommended this a down. million times on this channel, is uh, the Astrobiology Primer from NASA. You can look it up mm -hmm. online. It's free yeah, to download. I, it's I only actually, about, uh, yeah. I printed that off and uh, two copies, gave it to my son. Um, oh, that's, uh, awesome. after that's a great one. Your video. I, I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, yeah, I, that I great. Uh, have been curious about a lot of these things and wanted to pick your brain and kind of see what you guys thought. So I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, of course. Yeah, you, no you kind Take of care, two people who focus on like the tail end of the story of how we go from, you know, non-life to humans, right? Forrest and I are both like, yeah, humans, yeah, mammals. And you're like, <laughs> I want to know about the, the thing before the thing. And it's like, I, we, we can give you our best shot. I'm glad it was sufficient. <laughs> right. I'm all about it. It, it kind of becomes a uh, uh, God of the Gaps argument quite often, too which is problematic. Mm -hmm. So I've often uh, wanted uh, to explore that. Um, and, and I think we have, um, I think we have scientific uh, solutions. So I just, I appreciate it. Always. Yeah, of course. I mean, yeah. Have an awesome rest Thank of your you. day, James. Thanks for calling in and waiting so long. All right, guys. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye. And I'm going to jump right in to Ray, uh, call him from Colorado, wants to talk about uh, charity and evolution. Ray, you've been on hold for a very long time, and now you're on the line. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. So here's the preamble. Uh, when I talk with theists a lot, one of the things that they like to bring up is that well, the church does so much good through the funds they collect and through helping the poor and so on and so forth. So right. what is... That's, the, that's why there are no the more poor people, you see? <laughs> oh, I could go much okay, further wait, into wait, it wait. than that. But I, Ray, my, are you driving? I am, but I'm driving with a uh, hands-free device. Yeah, we don't do that. Can you pull over somewhere to do the call? Absolutely, but thank I'm you. in a in a stop here in a left turn. So give me a moment. Excellent, thank you. Forrest will fill it with fun facts about <laughs> gerbils while we wait for you. Yeah, to tell us about yeah, gerbils. I, I was on, I, gerbils I was are awesome. To to They're African up. rodents. Ger gerbils are these long, long-tailed African rodents. Um, they're really freaking cool. Um, I'm 99% sure they're like the primary prey of like ball pythons. Um, as I remember that a while ago because we were raising a bunch of ball pythons at this one place I was working and, and 
had to find food for them. I was like, we could do the most natural thing in the world. Get them a fuckload of gerbils. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, and uh, they are an R selected species. Um, they, they, they breed like crazy. Uh, you can have several generations within a year. I'm 99% sure that gerbils, I, oh, I can't remember what this is called, what this effect is called, but um, gerbils can do the same thing that like rabbits and other things do where they can actually get pregnant while they're already pregnant. They can have like a pregnancy on reserve. You know what I'm talking about? Is it the Bruce yeah, effect? Yeah, no, I know that. Cats, um, yeah, cats, cats do that. I still don't think it's the Bruce effect. It's something else. Um, shoot, what's that called? Yeah. When... I want to look up what the fuck the Bruce effect is too, because I don't remember what it's clear on. <laughs> yeah, no, it is a Bruce effect. No, the Bruce effect is the uh, the spontaneous abortions. The Bruce effect yeah, is when they can have abortions when they're yeah. It's super fecundation. That's, That's the called. one. Yeah. yeah it's so fecund. they're they're super fecundant and they're able to 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 stack pregnancies. I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, it's, there's some fun facts about gerbils. Is that as much as we need? Can we keep going or do we need to stop? Ray, did you find a place to park? No, that, that, I'm stopped. I, yeah, I'm stopped. Okay, good. So, no, you're talking about Perfect. tribbles. They're the ones that are born pregnant. <laughs> tribbles? Anyway. Right. Not enough, not enough people understand that these days. These children, okay, these kids. All right. Uh, All right. So anyway, uh, what is the historical or evolutionary evidence of charity, of where multiple entities in a societal group actually help the underprivileged, or un, not underprivileged, but say somebody who's been injured and they can't hunt. And so what's our oldest evidence of being taken care of as part of a group, but not necessarily yeah. as part of, uh, you know, like a family member? I don't know. Yeah. So there's a few things actually that you can point to. Um, I always like to point to like various evidences of, of compassion and empathy and, and what you could call proto morality um, in a lot of species, mice that free each other from cramped cages, um, uh, uh, grief and sympathy in, in, in elephants, rats, uh, uh, dogs, you name it. Um, there's, there's all sorts of things there, but speaking specifically of humans, um, my favorite example is uh, the Homo erectus from Demonisi that has no teeth, um, he, and his sockets are all healed up. So this was a guy who lived to a very old age, lost all his teeth, and still lived for several years after that um, in a time when you couldn't just wow. bop down to the corner store and pick up some food. So like this was, you know, you're living... Right. Like naked ha in the wilderness, having to hunt for your food, and this dude is so old he's lost his teeth. That's clear indication of some sort of community. Um, and I believe we also talked about. Uh, I think you and I talk about Shanadar One quite a bit, Erica. Um, which is um, yeah. uh, Shanadar One is a Neanderthal um, who had significant trauma, a crush injury to the right side of the head. Um, and that caused paralysis in the left arm, possibly partial in the left leg. And when we look at the the skeleton of this guy, we see like seriously like withered and wasted away bones, as well as significant fractures to the left foot, which would have caused a limp even if this guy could walk. It would have been a problem doing it. Um, and this guy lived well past the point where all these injuries were completely healed. And so this this is something you know this guy would have been laid up for a long time and had a really hard time getting around. Um, there's no way this guy would have survived in the wilderness without community care. Um, so those are two my favorite examples. And I believe we talked about a few more recently. Yeah, I mean, you can take awesome. it further. You. you can take it more basal than that as well. I mean, you talk to any primatologist and there are chock, chock full number of answers. That's not really what I'm trying to say. There's a ton of different examples. That's it. Their world is chock full of. That's either one of those. Take your pick of um, great apes especially being, you know, effectively altruistic for nothing that they seem to stand to gain in the moment. Of course, you know, the, the ideas for the roots of altruism are, you know, the selfish gene, ultimately selfish, right? You first, you help those who are in your, you know, group because you're effectively say, or in your kin group, I guess I should say, because you're effectively pushing your own genes onward through them. Uh, and then it extends to the rest of the group because of social cohesion, which helps, you know, the, the fitness of the entire group with you, you included. Um, but that being said, 
that kind of makes altruism feel a little bit sterile to me because what, what's kind of fascinating is like you look at chimpanzees, right? And, you know, I've been reading a lot about um, canon, so chimp and bonobo behavior recently. And Franz DeWall has a great book that came out relatively recently called Different. And in it, he recounts this example of, um, you know, he's working at, I believe it was the Yerk Center with all these chimpanzees. And so one of the days, uh, you know, they, chimps can't swim. They, their muscle density is so intense that they just sink like a stone. And uh, chimps are also known for being like really okay. competitive and kind of like like jerks to each other. Um, and France recalls, you know, this moment where they they the zookeepers went in to, to clean out the moat because they keep a moat around the entire chimp enclosure so chimpanzees can't get out and like wreak havoc. Uh, so they were draining the moat in order to clean the moat. And suppose the chimps were all supposed to be, um, you know, inside at this moment. Uh, but they drained the moat. They let the chimps out for a little bit, and then were supposed to put them back in before they refilled the moat. But I guess they they missed a couple, of some youngsters in particular, who had gone down into the moat to investigate the dried moat and couldn't get back out. So the way they figured this out is is you know the wall is talking about one of the zookeepers who's walking over to to turn the hose on basically to fill the moat back up, and one of these chimps comes zooming past him and stands in front of the you know whatever the spigot and starts slamming the ground and motioning over towards where where the chimps were were trapped. And so he walks back over there and, you know, there's like a couple juveniles in this in this moat where it's beginning to fill with water um, or, you know, about to be filled with water. And uh, some of the adults are at the top, all unrelated. Like these guys aren't kin groups. They're just members of the same group. Like they're a part of the same troop. Um, and they're trying to help pull them out, you know, and the chimpanzee who warned him follows him all the way over there to make sure that he's seen them. And like to me, this little interaction that seems so like, you know, dumb and silly, I guess. It, it's really telling, right? You've got chimpanzees that are so, they care so much for the others within their group that they're willing to like go out on a limb to warn who they know and recognize is capable of stopping this bad situation from occurring. And meanwhile, mm -hmm. other chimpanzees are risking their lives, you know, trying to get down into the moat to save these juveniles who are a member of their group. Um, what do they stand to gain from that if they're unrelated? Right. They're they're in a place that's completely provisioned, like they're they're getting all of the food that they need. There's no reason they need to rely on one another. Uh, and yet they are right. They're willing to totally go out on a limb for each other just to say, you know, they like each other. And to me, that seems very familiar. And and what that would suggest is that the roots of, of altruism, um, expecting not necessarily anything in return and thus you know, the roots of charity are indeed seven, you know, eight, nine, ten million years old for apes. Yep. Uh, and that's uh, if you're interested in the in the details of that, you can look up things called um, inclusive fitness, which is an evolutionary the uh, biology thing about like altruism and compassion actually being an evolutionary advantage. And then also group selection, the the strength of the group as a whole um, being you know as important, if not more important than an individual phenotype, you know, leaning on. Yes, yeah, so I guess. Yeah. Uh, group selection and inclusive fitness are both really important things there. Anyway, that answer yeah, your question? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank hey, you. It's amazing. I, I really didn't, yeah, I didn't know about the guy without the teeth. And, you know, that's amazing. Um, yeah, I'd love to look at that article. So thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, look, one last question. Do you think that the monkey yeah. that was pounding the ground, and do you think he was making supplication to his God? <laughs> hey, I don't Probably know. Not. I mean, that's. It, it seems it seems like religion shows up like not necessarily late in the game because humans are naturally curious and since the dawn of time we've tried to explain things it wouldn't surprise me if some chimpanzee out there was like who who bringeth the banana who who taketh the banana away <laughs> right all right thanks a lot guys I gotta go all right take care Thank man you, bye, bye bye thanks so much for your call what a nice dude hey really quick if anybody wants. Uh, to know, Erica and I actually made a video called What is a Human is a Surprisingly Difficult Question to Answer. I just linked it in the chat just there. Um, and in that, we talk about Dominici, we talk about Shanadar 1, we talk about a few other things. So you should totally check that out. Um, and also, Banger. if you want to know if if you're a generally empathetic person, um, it also relates to hearing. Here is a cool little sound test you can play. Son of a bitch, what am I? Play the thing. Go. Go, you bitch. Why is it not? It won't let me, it won't let me post so another link we, in the chat. Are we past the whole ho humans or homos thing? It's, it's, it's deeper than that. Huh? There it is. <laughs> no one's nice. answering my question. What do you, no, it's a real question. Hold on, I'm trying are, to are you asking course. if, 
You said you did a video like called "What Is one. a Human" and that it was more comp. It was it's actually complicated, and I've always just been living in the is. humos or humans or homos, homo sapien. Oh, just anything homo. in the genus Homo can be called human. Yeah, 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 that's that's what I had always. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. But the question Ooh. is, the lines get really fuzzy the closer you look. What yeah. defines genus Homo forest? What what what's the first member of genus Homo and why? Wow. Right. I mean, you'd think that it's Homo habilis unless you like think about it too much and then it's not but well, like it's you just don't, just don't think about it Who, wait, just don't think about it who's before homo habilis habilis well, right said it. well that's the thing it depends the, the thing is <laughs> yeah all right so right forest, there, there are there are some people in the anthropological forest, community yeah who is yeah. the is the who's before homo habilis in your what is your position? Who's before Homo habilis? Ooh, this this will be very telling it, for us. I'm eager to hear your answer. You're talking about in the Homo lineage, or yeah. just like I mean, actually you what could species? break free of Homo. You could break free to the first non-Homo, but yeah, yeah. Oh, if I was so, if I was to break free to the first non-Homo, right before Homo habilis is definitely going to be Australopithecus uh, uh, africanus. Yeah. The question is, is there another member of Homo that deserves to be categorized between those two? And wait, wait, depending wait, on... Are you, are you South African origins guy? I mean, no. So, what? okay, so, well, here's the thing. Are you? Is that, okay. like... What's the other? Is it Afarensis? What's the other one? Afarensis is, yeah, is a you, different one, right? Yeah, Maybe yeah. I'm getting do you think, Maybe you, I'm getting my man. What do, you, what do you think? I'm curious. I'm genuinely really curious. Do you, is everyone seeing okay, Erica's so, pre-judgy face? Like, like you're set, I'm like just, nothing you can do. I'm not being judgy. I'm this, just interested. Erica has the position of whatever you say, you lose. <laughs> so, okay. Here's, here's where it gets really sticky. Is that like, is, okay. Okay. I'm definitely East African guy. Like for sure. And so, like, okay, okay. I, I might be getting my names mixed up. Maybe maybe that's on. I'm, I'm blowing it somewhere. You and your goddamn qualifying exams right now on top of my shit. I'm coming after you, Forrest. Um, <laughs> I'm coming after you. So I'm definitely East African, guys. So am I, am I confusing? Am I, am I mixing up Africanus and Afarensis? I think so. Africanus is South African. So that's why I thought you said you were doing a South African origins. And I was like, oh, we've got a, like a Lee Berger um, supporter here. Right. Is Afarensis sh- Hold on. Africanus Hold on. Let me double check to make sure I'm talking. Afarensis in normal consensus, correct? Wait, say that again. Well, Jimmy, would you say? Are humans chickens? I'm just kidding. I'm just, just Federalist biped? Like, yes. Yeah, no, Afarensis, Afarensis is a different. Afarensis was way before that. That, yeah. that wouldn't work. That's why I'm asking, did you, did you say Afarensis? So Afarensis is the South African. I'll that. Yeah, but like that's that's the. Am I fucking crazy? Am I just? It, it turns out I'm really fucking just a terrible science man, and I don't know what I'm talking about. As, as <laughs> no, no, out. dude. I, I, <laughs> I was genuinely. I just thought you might be like a ooh Stirk Fontaine, ooh South Africa is the origin of genus Homo, because so, like well, there are people who think that, and I'm just curious. They're if, a touch you know, Well, like though. you've got you've got like you've got like it, it, in all fairness, I know that the timeline and what I'm about to say is way off. So I, I just, I'm not saying that Naledi came from fucking Afarensis, but like, uh, or, or Africanus, I mean. Um, Africanus is, is my favorite one to put right before uh, uh, Homo habilis. However, in, to your point, Naledi, well, again, I want to clarify to the nerds out there, I understand that comes way the fuck later. But Naledi in South Africa had some very, very like Homo sapiens style shit going on with their burials, with their tools, Weren't they the ones that were weaving like the mats to sleep on, like the grass mats with uh, with the ashes in them to ward off bugs? I think that was them. Um, and so, like, you've got, huh? Did you say Naledi? Yeah, Naledi's weaving mats. I'm ninety nine percent sure. I don't know. I mean, okay, I'm, I'm, it, like, it, it wouldn't surprise me. If, it wouldn't surprise me if Lee said that. I just don't. I don't know for sure. I'm looking it up now. God damn it. I wish I, I, wish I had trained up. this AI to do your two voices because I want to like inject in little places like you idiot or something to see, make you, <laughs> you think you're fighting. Just to manipulate the whole thing. Can I, I guess fight. what your you answer is, fight. Erica? I bet I know. I I bet mean, I... Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm an East African origins gal. 
Um, I think so it's, there's a really interesting. or robustus? I would say, oh, I robustus would say Robustus is a different thing. Um, yeah, robustus is paranthropus uh, and it's South African. But I would say, I would say afarensis or potentially, and like, here's my little side pet theory that, you know, Ooh. we'll see. But there's a hominin called Kenianthropus platyops that is associated with the oldest stone tools Ken- period Ken- that we have. Yes. It's 3.3 million years old, the, the stone tools. And some people think Kenianthropus should just fall directly in with Afarensis. So it's just a, a weird looking Afarensis, which might be true. But either way, it is the oldest stone tool maker. And it does show up before Genus Homo in the location that Genus Homo first shows up at, depending on um, you know what you want to classify it as. The oldest Homo material is at like 2.8. It's a, a mandible from um, from uh, Lady Gararu, I think. I think it's Lady Gararu. So uh, a mandible, though. Um, that's Genus Homo. So okay, 3.3 to 2.8. Doesn't seem it's not that far. It's 500,000 years. And both are tool users, so I, it wouldn't. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. I'm not saying Kenianthropus is definitely the predecessor of Homo, and I'm Homo, and I'm not even saying that Kenianthropus isn't Afarensis. I'm just saying it's an interesting connection to make. I do think Homo starts in East Africa, though, so I would agree with Forrest on that one. 100% Homo starts in East Africa. I just, I, the, the, as far as the timeline is concerned, is what throws me off. Because if I remember correctly, and I, I, first of all, I was wrong about the mats. Those were Homo sapiens that made the mats. I am linking a science article right now about the mats. These are sleeping things made of woven plants and, and uh, 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 ashes and whatnot, and like medicinal herbs and whatnot. Well, and so your, that's some cool shit. Naledi, did, Naledi was just discovered. And like, I, I tend to be skeptical of some of the stuff that comes out of South Africa just because the dating can be kind of weird in those limestone caves which are right. notoriously hard to make. Uh, but Naledi, like Lee Berger just came out with this giant Carnegie Hall presentation, like at the beginning of the year, he's got Homo Naledi, a, a hominin that, you know, it's genus Homo, but its brain is the size of an Australopith. It has a, it's half the size of a human brain. It's got ape yeah. fingers, ape shoulders. When I say ape, I'm referring to like a non-human colloquial ape. Um, but it's a biped. It's got kind of like, you know, normal homo looking feet, but it's got dexterous hands, despite the fact that the fingers are so curved. And yet they're finding it in the depths of this cave system, the rising star cave system that we can barely fit into. Like we can barely manage to yeah. get our way in. So the question for a long time was they how had the to hell get, did they like, get these that? Tiny, in? tiny little uh, fucking anthropology students to get in there. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. And so the question was for a long time, like, how did Homo naledi get back there? Because there's only homo naledi like there's no predator there's no other bones of anything else so it you know the idea went like someone put them there and it was other homo naledi was the was which was what was proposed by lee Berger at the time and so everybody was like lee you goofy goober that can't be the case you're saying that something with a 600 cc brain case size um you know shimmied in the dark for like you know 45 minutes to get to the back of these chambers how could it happen they didn't use fire Uh, and then at the beginning of the year Lee publishes pictures and videos of ash on the ceilings of the cave and, and hearts, like yep. like for real, like old hearts. So the question is, of course, did Homo Naledi make the fires, right? And like, this is the thing about, you know, some of the stuff that comes out of South Africa is that it's like, I love the open science. I love the getting excited about science, but I really want to see the paper because like, if we can get the dating on those fires done, then that would definitively assign them to Homo Naledi instead of the alternative, which is that Homo naledi got into those caves by, by a different means. The geology used to be different. There was no fire involved, whatever, whatever, whatever. And the fires are, are much more recent. But that's the question. Because, like, this is really weird. Like, intentional burial by something that's got a, a pinhead, basically. You know, but looks like yeah. he, it looks homo in the face, but it's got ape arms. And it's a weird looking thing. And then the weirdest part of all, it's 250,000 years old, right? Like, it's it's younger than our species. Which is we not to say that it didn't, you know, it emerged after Homo sapiens. It's just that these specimens are younger than our species. So, like, what the hell is going on here? And like, you know, my whatever pet theory is that you you've got a it's a dead end genus Homo, right? Like, we're seeing exchange happen from East and South Africa by this this uh, green highway that comes and goes along uh, the southeast of the continent. So, like. Homo habilis shows up 2.8, not Homo habilis, but early Homo, let's say, shows up 2.8 million years ago in East Africa. Who's to say that Homo didn't make it all the way down to South Africa and and just kind of get stuck there and evolve mm-hmm. eventually into Homo naledi? Because, like, how else do you explain this really, really basal-looking morphology, and yet it's also using fire? Like, I don't know. It's a funky guy. Usually when I hear two people weird. talk like- about Homos this much, I have to move... 
<laughs> nice. Yeah. I, the, the thing d- for d- me. I know you would. Is... No, go, oh, go sorry, ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to be mean. I, no, I was just going to be mean. I was just going to say, like, this is like my biggest hang up with it because I'm, I'm all about East African uh, uh, evolution because that's what the fossil record, at least from homo shows. Um, the, the, the hang up that I get is that, and, and the reason why I mistake frequently. And I just did again when I was talking about, Oh, I'm you know, all about Africanus, but like, Oh fuck, that's the wrong one. Right. The reason why I mix this up so much is because Africanus, and maybe I'm mixing this up too. This is much more your area of expertise and mine of specifics, and that is gloriously on display right now. Um, but like the uh, the fact that I mean, like this is Africanus, my wife literally, if Africanus, I can't know what I'm talking uh, about with this horse, I got nothing. I have nothing. Right. Africanus is the one that actually leads up to the beginning of Homo and overlaps with it a little bit, whereas Afarensis is like you have this kind of gap. And I don't want to sound like a creationist, like, well, we all have the, the fossils, but like there's it's in the right place, but we have this separation in, in time. And you've got Gari that fills in that separation a little bit. But as we just talked about a minute ago, we have literally one specimen. And so, like, is that showing a continuation of, of this other species that was already there? Is this a new intermediate species? What's going on there? And then you've got Sadiba, which also fills in this gap, but that one's fucking South African too. And so, like, you have this issue here where like we have, a, it's like we talked about in that video, we have a shit ton of fossils that blur the lines. The problem is locality. And I have a really difficult time in my head keeping the locality straight. That's my biggest problem. And so like, I, I and it's because this isn't, I don't need to know that. Like, that's not where my research is. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. Like, remind, me, it, remind me after the show to, um, cause there's something, there's, there's something that I only got recently taught uh, by a guy who's like really into Australopiths. Um, the guy who, yeah, yeah. who focuses on afarensis. So naturally he's a little bit biased towards afarensis is kind of the root, but he pointed something out really interesting to me about Africanus that I think pretty handily precludes it as a, as a base of homo. So remind me to tell you afterwards, I, would, I don't want to bore everybody with it because no one cares except for you and me. <laughs> but Jimmy's like, That's right. Yes, Take that private woo, homo woo, talk woo, off air. Woo. Tired of hearing about <laughs> these homos. From straight people, anyway. Uh, you, but you still have at least a theist caller. We have lines open just for theists. If any other theists with challenges want to call, no more like, I'm even like a little, I, I should have said that before. The call coming up is not much of a, I, I don't know. We'll see where it goes. But if you have a challenge, call with a challenge as a theist or, or, or something and we'll take your calls. Or if you are, if you need to be disillusioned of some <laughs> misconception. Uh, though it would be weird for you to admit right. that to yourself before you call. Anyway, um, yeah, y'all can talk about homos after the. the after by the, the way, that whole conversation that you all just, everyone in the audience, that whole conversation that you just saw, uh, this is why I fucking love having guests that are smarter than me because I love it when people can just fucking like just absolutely tear into this shit. And like, well, just, I, I, I love that. So there's actually, no way I, I could have done that. This. I actually care about this. No, literally- there's no way I could have done that shit. That's why I didn't push literally, you all along. Literally, the, this is like my, this is literally like my zone, right? Like this is, you know, with, with, with PhDs and shit like that, you get really, really knowledgeable about like a very specific thing. And I've gotten very good at directing conversations towards the things that I know about, yeah. the things that I like so much. The show definitely like, has to become, the show has to stay on formula and on topic unless I don't feel like it. Oh, okay. Much, I like this rule. Rules. We yeah, just have I, to, we just have to kind of win you over Jimmy. It's like, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, what is cool. it? Some gladiator the number of homo up topics up. I'm ready to talk about at any moment is vast. <laughs> <laughs> a veritable, the number of a treasure topic. <laughs> Fun fact, Australopithecus robustus did not have a robust wiener. Tall little wiener. Probably. You're probably right. Actually. Like, yeah. You know, you really want to talk about it. The level of dimorphism suggests a uh, high polygyny, and uh, that yeah. usually means that the yeah. males have small wieners, like yeah. gorilla size, which is small. Yeah. Tall, True. tall thing. Uh, I was going to try and come up with a version of fat guy in a little coat. Hey, we had 84,000 <laughs> subscribers during the show. I shouldn't have announced that because now the chaos agents will go, I'm going to go unsubscribe. <laughs> they like to do that stupid <laughs> thing when you hit, when you announce my, Dude, so 84,000 is not funny? a mark. It's so funny when people do that. I love when they do that. It genuinely oh makes me laugh so hard. It's so love funny. It. You guys are real funny. So funny. We're sitting there with your keyboards and your mice. You're real funny. 
They're here mice. <laughs> they they're mice. <laughs> what do you call the plural of mouse? No, I mean it's oh, tech. I feel like it's definitely right, but like I've never oh, heard. I feel like I've never heard someone refer to the plural of computer mice. Mouses. <laughs> Mouses. Mouses. Might act, I, I actually think you're on. I think it actually might for computers. I think it actually might be mouses. That's the worst part. I have no idea. I, I'm I'm sending in a, a distress signal to my husband for a beer, but one moment. <laughs> Ask for two. <laughs> we haven't even started. Actually, yeah, I probably yet. should. Yeah. He he actually uh, last time we did one of these, my the love of my life uh, rolled in with with double. He was double. Double fist and white claws, and he set them both down and just nod him. Every it's time somebody one. says, love one, my life, I always want to do the Homer Sapien, uh, the Homer, Homo, Homer Simpson. I almost said Homer Sapien, the Homer Simpson <laughs> thing of, We got him, we got him, Forrest, we got him. <laughs> love of your, uh, Homer, uh, Homer said, Love of your life so far. Worst experience <laughs> of your life so far. That was, that was an old Simpsons joke. Anyway. Yeah, no, it was, it was from the uh, it was from the movie when he um he gets handcuffed to the Bart gets handcuffed to like the yeah. lamp post and he's like naked and this is the worst like, day of my life. Worst day of my life, day day of life. life so far. But I, I think it, you know, it appears in other forms throughout the series. I think because I feel like I can what remember him saying thing? "love of your life" so far. Also, yeah, Flinders was like, you know how you know how boys are always praying through the knees <laughs> about how Bart is <laughs> Ned. You should probably take that that Thea's call that's been waiting. <laughs> yeah, I'm, oh, I'm yeah, just setting yeah. up everything else here. Sorry. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to like get my shit together here on the computer and then my computer froze for a minute and I was trying to like pretend like that wasn't happening just in uh, case my screen wasn't frozen. Take just your moving shit, on put with it, it in the bag. And just like take it down to the shit store. Do whatever you gotta do, but get your shit together. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I guess move on then to the thing. Uh, we've got Sven, pronouns they, them, in Washington. Uh, wants to know about if our hominid ancestors had a soul. Sven, you're on the line. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Awesome. So what exactly was the question? Awesome. Yeah, so I was just wondering if uh, if... Some sort of dualism or Platonism were to be proven true in some possible fashion. Do you think we would have to worry about our previous ancestors or species that are now dead being the equal level of conscious that we are that would have gone extinct that were had souls? Does that make sense? So you're saying if 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 we prove that we have souls, would that also imply or, or give us some understanding of like other things that are related to us yeah like neanderthal what i'm hearing previous homo uh, right previous homo species or it seems like we would definitely be the the first level of this consciousness uh or previous versions of ourselves before homo sapiens would have been capable of that you so you're using the word soul and using the word consciousness and i don't know if you're using them interchangeably or what oh i i would imagine that if if we were to prove or to show some existence of a soul, it would have to be through neuroscience and consciousness. So I guess in you guys' field of anthropology and biology, would there be enough connection between us and a previous species to have the same level? You know, Sven, you are I'm you going? driving like would have too? To relate to the brain. Sven, are you driving I'm not also? driving. It's, oh, it just sounds like the, I am not driving. It sounds like it. It sounds like... So okay, I I've got a I've got two cents on this. I'm on my patio. I can I it's all good. Um yeah, so like I as far as like the soul stuff goes, right? Like I'm of the opinion that I'm gonna put the soul stuff aside because like if we could prove that a soul existed, I I would assume that it would kind of scale alongside consciousness. I think that's a, a fair enough, you know, we'll we'll just operate under that assumption for now. So I'm just going to talk about consciousness and you can kind of hitch that to the soul wagon if you'd like. With regard to consciousness, I I think consciousness is absolutely a gradient. I don't think there's a single shred of evidence that the type of existence that humans occupy as far as our level of sapiens is a degree uh, or excuse me, is a is an order of kind different, a categorical difference than as, as compared to everything else that's alive, right? It is absolutely one of degree. 
Um, human consciousness is, you know, self-awareness, it's creativity, it's cognition, it's all of these things uh, folded into one kind of lump sum that we're like, this is consciousness. We see degrees of all three of those characteristics and indeed many more that uh, sort of would fall under the human umbrella in other animals, you know, from great apes to monkeys to crows to proboscideans. Your dog has a lot of these elements as well. Most mammals do and many non-mammals do as well, like cephalopods. So I would propose that if there's such thing as a soul, it scales just as consciousness and sapience does, uh, which is to say all of the tree of life falls onto that gradient somewhere. And there is no categorical stopgap difference between any two organisms. Right. Uh, ah. so I do love that uh, sentiment. I you know, my own version of Platonism involves that other animals are just all an aspect of Gaia or the Earth. So I, I respect the the spectrum of consciousness existing. Um, I guess I would push back on to... Hmm. I think the soul is more akin to intellect and... Ah! Con I don't know. That's why I didn't really want to say consciousness. I apologize. That is where I went to. I, yeah, I mean, so the, the, the main versus knowledge. Yeah, and so I, the main thing that typically gets put forward as something that separates uh, humans versus, uh, let's say, other great apes. Uh, and Forrest and I have talked about this extensively. This is um, from a Sapolsky uh, talk. Robert Sapolsky is a famous primatologist. And he said that, you know, the, the vast majority of behaviors that humans do, every other animal does. There's a smaller circle that every animal does it, including humans. Humans just kind of dial it up to 11. And in that you would put something like language, right? We Everything vocalizes, most mammals vocalize, but we do it in a really weird, complicated way. Uh, and then the smallest circle balls, the things that humans do that are like relatively unique to us. And Sapolsky put in that category, the ability to empathize across space and time. So we're able to empathize with things that um, exist in the past or empathize with things that don't exist at all. Like I could show you a picture of a sad cartoon dog and you can feel sad for it, even though you know in your heart of hearts that cartoon dog isn't real. Um, but even mm -hmm. then, like when I hear this as an example, that's still not a categorical difference as far as I'm concerned. That's just empathy dialed up to 11. Um, I don't think that there's like an on off switch that allows you to either empathize with things that aren't real or not. I think it's just taking empathy to the next extreme. Uh, you have to keep in mind that, that our brains are three times the size that of a chimpanzee. I think, I don't think there was a point in human evolution where suddenly we could empathize, you know, to this degree and before that we couldn't um unless you want to kind of draw an arbitrary line somewhere which i, I suppose you could but the, the gradient of it all makes it quite difficult and so in that way even that like i can't think of a single thing that humans do that nothing else even gets close to doing at a categorical level like we build spaceships cool that's a really really advanced tool you know i mean what what else? yeah it's an advanced tool but it's still a tool. Other animals use tools. You know what I mean? Certainly, I guess that it does add uh, a lot of problems to the question of, you know, supposing a, a dualist world. Uh, yeah, I guess it's too much of a spectrum to answer the, the question I was posing, and I respect that. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like you 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 want to have a conversation about the potential um, you know, possession of a soul of all living things. And like, I, I simply can't speak to that. You know, I'm not um, I don't think there's any evidence for a soul at present. I, I, if, if we found evidence for a soul tomorrow, I would be under the impression that, again, it would scale with relative levels of consciousness, which would, you know, again, be something that most organisms have some degree of. Um, but that's that's my opinion. Boris, you got anything? I was just going to ask, you know, why, why do you think that this is, you know, a thing? Why do you believe this? Uh, I'm sorry. I was, I was tweeting because we've been live for three hours now and taking calls and the person who got into a long argument with me about gender and, and, and how textbooks are biased and corrupt, uh, still hasn't called in despite my, my, uh, offer to do so. So I was well, putting a thing out there, but, um, well, yeah, my, my biggest thing is just like, fight with you. They're too scared. Right, of course. Uh, you've got uh, uh, you, you say here that you're a theist and you're calling and talking about souls, and you've made it clear from what you're saying that you think those are real, and that that's kind of why I'm more interested in. It's like, 
why why is any of that true? Why do you think that those things are true? And why are you why do you believe in this God? Why like that's kind of where I'm at with my confusion. Awesome. Well, I'm definitely uh, a BS leaning. I, I don't agree with doctrine or that any human can know like solid answers on a DSC that doesn't exist in this realm. Uh, I think metaphysics should be limited to like human understanding. Um, and we, we could go into a lot of argument of why it could lead to a lot of word salad. <laughs> Like, why do, do, do you like souls? if you think that souls think are real? If, because it sounds like you do. Experience. Yeah. What I'm saying is, if you think that souls are real, like, what do they do? What are they made of? Like, what what's their function? Is like that? That's that's kind of I'm mentioning like their function and their substance. Right. I think they are the vessels from which we gain knowledge and are able to have experience. Why is that different than a brain? Why is that different than a brain? Uh, I agree yeah. a lot of it can deal with neuroscience. That's why my question was posing towards uh, going back in time to other our previous ancestors with brains. Um, I do think it, a soul is able to have its experience through our brain. Um, you know, if you impede its so, brain... Do- what if we can say for sure, because Erica brought up a ton of examples of other animals doing cool things. So like dogs, do dogs have souls? Uh, I, I, I admit to not in my view of Platonism, I think like there is a, a, a soul to a Gaia to the earth uh, that is, you know, having an experience. Um, I, I'm what, what does that mean for an individual is what I'm asking. So like, if you think, that, does everything that's alive have a soul then? Is that what you're saying? Uh, I think most living things share a soul, but humans have an individual soul because of our unique ability to have experience and to reflect on life and on those experiences. Um, I agree they're not all okay. like, completely unique once you go to a spectrum. That's why I like that Guts that Kevin brought up the spectrum because yeah, it adds complexity to it. Um, I do so, think there is an individual identity to a human. So if if everything that isn't a human, all these other living things, all share one, then it would make sense to say that they all share experiences and knowledge as well? Correct. So then why do you have to train uh, different uh, dogs to plant, get the same... Seems that's why I have awareness. Oh, go ahead. So if they all share souls and souls are the thing that gives you knowledge and experiences or allow you to collect them, um, then why do you have to train a new dog? Why, when you get a dog, do you have to train it when the other dogs already learned the tricks and the things? Oh, no, I I had already uh, conceded. I'm sorry that dogs are part of one consciousness, whereas humans have an individual soul. So training a dog... Right, I get that. uh, A human inflicting experience onto a dog or the guy has experience. Right. You, but you, that's what, what I'm getting at. If dogs are all a part of one consciousness, as are all other animals that aren't humans, t- take dogs out of it, t- parrots. You know, but why do you have to train every new parrot with new words and tricks and behaviors and things and not to eat this and not to do whatever? Why don't all parrots know whatever words all other parrots know? If they all share knowledge and experience. Right. I can... Yeah. Um, I would imagine that Gaia is going through an experience that is not to a human individual human level. Uh, so I would not... Ooh, that is... Yeah. I, I, I don't understand your answer. I'm sorry. You, you said that it's not... Their experience isn't at the level of our experience? Um, okay. I'm not. Um, right. I, that's why I said at the beginning that like, I'm not even dogma and all. I think speaking on what Gaia would experience and the way like, that knowledge is retained and not retained uh, would be less something I, that a human could think about in metaphysical terms. I would go with biology and gotcha. evolution. Like They are going by their genetic code. Uh, Gaia's uh, aspects of animals under Gaia are going through evolution, and DNA uh, is 
what encodes their instincts and all. So, so I would if, turn to biology if, for the, a lot of those answers for us. So if this Gaia is represented by the life of all, all living things and the processes by which those living things evolve and, and, and operate and function are things that we can understand through biology and the ways that they experience things and learn things are understandable through neuroscience. And like, if, if every part of this that we've talked about so far has a functional explanation that doesn't involve a soul, then what is your evidence for a soul as an addition to all of these other things? As like this force in the background that all these other things are already doing? Uh, it would again relate to human experience. Um, as you all know, most theists and spiritual people love their anecdotes. Uh, it is something that is very subjective to what it means to be a human, and that is what is inspires me is the subjective experiences of humanity. Okay, that, that doesn't super answer my question. The is, so you to explain what's happening in nature. Right, that doesn't answer my question. You said that uh, we, we were talking about that souls exist. Okay. Humans each have an individual one. Okay. No other animals have individual souls. All other living things, you said plants too, I guess. I, I don't know. But uh, all other living things all share one collective soul. And you said that souls are there to give you knowledge and experience or the things that allow you to collect knowledge and experience. So all things that are alive that aren't humans have one collective hive mind that allows them to collect knowledge and experience. And you said that the way that you would explain individual differences, you would have to fall back on evolution and just look to biology for that. So my question is, when we talk about gaining knowledge and experience, we look to neuroscience, which is a subset of biology. When we talk about why something is the way it is, we look to evolution, which is a subset of biology. When we look at why it exists, what it's doing, where it comes from, why it's behaving, what it, all the things that we're talking about here in this call, we fall back to biology. And you're saying, yes, all of that is real, but then also there's this thing called the soul that's involved there as well. So what I'm asking is, why is this extra thing necessary? And why do you believe that it's real? If everything that you've related to, a soul does X, Y, Z, every one of those X, Y, Z things goes back to another field of biology that we can easily explain. Why is the soul something that you need to hang on to? Why is that a necessary part of it? I guess a lot of it would be armchair philosophy, unfortunately. Uh, uh, I, I concur that metaphysics is separate from the empirical scientific method sciences we have. Uh, you know, so why do you need When a human experiences them? redness, the quality of redness, I need something to explain that. And to me, the, the natural world doesn't explain that. I mean, even redness... You can break it down to wavelengths, but I get where you're coming from. I'm just saying, like, it, it, it sounds red, to me what a human like you're... Like experiences when they see red. Sure, sure. I, 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 I get where you're coming from, exactly. kind of. It's just like, it. basically, Aren't my whole thing is like, why, why add on the extra baggage? You know what I mean? If, if you don't have evidence for this, and you don't have, like, it doesn't do anything that's extra, then, like, why, why form a belief system around it? Do, do you have evidence for any of this that you that haven't mentioned yet? Or is this just something that sounds reasonable to you and so you kind of want to stick with it? No, I apologize. I thought I had uh, that I, I don't think there is like what you would call it, empirical evidence for it. It's, it's, no. Right. There, so there's no I guess extraordinary my, evidence to present to you that no one has in the history before it. And so would you use this same line of thinking that you're using for this for anything else? Uh, if it were foundational to my experience in day-to-day -day life, possibly. Sure. So I, I, it, again, to go back to the tired old, you know, cliche, here's this, you know, goblin in my closet that, that gives you your ability to experience things. It's foundational to your everyday experience. He, he grants you this ability and he lets you see the color red. 
is is the foundational nature of this claim important to its reality to its truth truthfulness i should say Uh, certainly not, and I, I thought I had clarified when it comes to metaphysics, I would prefer to talk about what it means to be a human and having experiences on a, a level. Not right, well, that's entities. what I'm saying. I just, I don't, so I don't follow dogma. You're trying to, you're creating a dogma in that scenario, and I don't think those would be logically consistent. And we do need I mean, I think, I think there's also something of a flaw here in, in your, your sort of, uh, separation of humans from everything else. Like, what, what makes you think, I suppose, because like, you know, I, I I guess I'm a little bit apathetic about the the kind of God claim here. Like to me, it's like, OK, you know, me, sure, whatever. Like I, I don't care as much about that so much as I compare about where so much as I care, excuse me, about where sort of humans fit in with regard to everything else. Why do you have us elevated? Uh, I guess it would be a lot of just life experience, human experience I've gone through that seems to be on a another level of, uh, you know, it seems like it would be much simpler to just react as a, you know, it could I mean, be I would, I would the life of a dog or yeah, the life of an ant. They go through tragedies, but it's like boom, boom, over. Uh, to be a human is to like have to reflect on your life experiences for decades. I mean, I don't think if don't you're think lucky you or if you're cursed, you know. That <laughs> I don't think we have any support for the idea that say apes don't, non-human apes don't self-reflect. I mean, they mourn, they're dead, they grieve, they laugh when they get tickled, they pull pranks on each other, they have politics, they feel apathetic, they get depressed, they get excited, they have sex for pleasure, they you know have take out revenge and, and are aggressive against each other um, due to past sins within the group. This all seems very human to me. I guess I, I'm having trouble sort of conceptualizing, you know, because you're you're kind of speaking about your own experience, right? Like, it's like a vibes based argument, like, I, you know, I feel these things, and I don't think anything else feels them. Therefore, humans are unique, because I myself am a human. But like, I don't think there's anything about uh, the human experience that is, again, like categorically different from anything else. So like, where I'm sitting, it's more like, you know, if e either, either everything's got a soul or nothing's got a soul, I guess. Um, and I don't, particularly buy it by into the soul thing so consciousness works just as well and um, i tend to think that that most things have some level of it um i mean i i guess i'm kind of beating a dead horse but but to me i i guess your argument i don't find your argument that, that humans are categorically different to be different to be very compelling yeah i mean uh... I note, I would love if orangutan to have souls and on the same level of consciousness as me, and I could experience things with them in a, another realm. Who knows? Uh, big teammates here, but yeah, what I guess I can't describe anything that's way? different than humans and their human experiences. They could. Be. How do you know that their experiences uh, yeah. are different? Right. Like, you know, that's all I'm saying, right? Is that it's like, I, I get the kind of vibes based argument, and like, but, you know, we were talking on this show a little bit earlier about like unfalsifiable hypotheses right and and this seems to fall a bit into that as far as i'm concerned right like how how would we go about testing the idea that you know one everything has a soul and two the human soul is you know categorically different from all other kinds of souls uh and at that point like and I, I don't mean this in, in a means that is meant to be sound harsh, right? But like I, as, as a person sort of personally lose interest once it becomes unfalsifiable, because it's like, what can you do? Like either I buy it or I don't. And in this case, I don't. Yeah, no, I respect all of that. I, I, I can appreciate it. I, I believe everyone should have their own belief and individual choices. Uh, I just as well have not been convinced of the purely material uh, worldview. Uh, I appreciate the conversation, though. Uh, I don't know what else to give you. I have to apologize unless there's any other specific questions. Uh, the unique human experience would just be one that you could only know for yourself. Again, that's why I think it is an individual soul. Uh, I can't tell you what's uniquely different about you. Anyway, I can't tell you what's uniquely different about me other than what I uh, feel and how I experience redness and sweetness. I can't tell you that the sweetness of a banana affects you the same way that it affects me, you know? So I cannot clarify that I, an orangutan or a chimpanzee is not having an individual soul experience. Right. It, more, it, more you keep can, using it, words it, like experience uh, and consciousness, action. and then you just throw the word soul on them, and it's like, I don't know why. That's kind of where I'm at.
It's like you Wolf keep explaining Python, things think, that make is, sense, the and then you just use the, the word soul for them. And it's like, why? Why? Because <laughs> I'm a dualist. Anyway. But, I, 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 I appreciate it. I'm a dualist. That's why. Stick why? to Yu-Gi-Oh. Why are you a Sorry, I couldn't resist. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, Sven, I hope you, you think about the things we talked about because, like, it's twelve years. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a lot here, and it, it really just hinges on the question: Why do you think the thing that you think? And like, I think that's something that you need to sit with a little bit more. It's just like, do I have a? Not, I understand you said I don't have any evidence for X, Y, Z, but like, I'm just saying, like, do you have a good reason to believe it? And just saying I don't have evidence to me, that's not a good reason. But like, I mean, like, do I have a reason to actually? go about the work of thinking this do i do i is it actually benefiting anything is it because i'm of the belief that you should try to believe as many true things and as few false things as possible so you should investigate what you're believing and why you're believing it and it sounds like that's just not a, a, a priority for what you're saying it's just kind of like this is what it is and if it's not what it is i'm gonna keep saying it anyway and here's these things that i can easily explain but i'm gonna call it a soul and it just it doesn't seem like there's a reason for anything that you're saying I appreciate, but do apologize if you feel that way. Uh, I think Sumi kind of back me up. But I've I've been sitting on this. I, I think about philosophy often. I have a therapist. I listen to a lot of podcasts. Uh, this is my first time talking to Forrest Nang. That's why I, I love you both, and thank you for the conversation. And maybe we can have it again. But uh, maybe so. Maybe so. Yeah. If, if you, you all in and tell. I thought it was a silly call. Oh, that I've been in the community for a while. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You definitely I, caught in. I've okay. called in before. I've been you. sitting on it. Yeah. <laughs> I got you. I got you. I've been right. sitting on yeah, it. Yeah, just if, so if nearly half it, over if half you it, think, if you want to call in and talk a little bit more about like why why you feel the need to attach this label of a soul to things, I'm I'm down to talk about because I I don't want to be too harsh and be like everything you've said here is fucking stupid. Like I'm not. It's just, it's just like I'm. I just think like this this claim that you're putting up here. That there is such a thing as a soul, and that there's different kinds of souls and different ranking orders of them, and it has all these really kind of arbitrary connections, and like they, they, some of them mean this, and so, and they do this thing that we can also explain this other way, but they don't do it with these other things. It's like, like all these different things, they just seem like really arbitrary rules that seem to fit more into like your mental framework and your personal heuristics, and like what you would like to, what sounds really pretty in your head, as opposed to what you actually have a reason to hinge your beliefs on. Um, and what sucks about that is that beliefs inform your behaviors, your actions, and how you see the world. Um, and as that is the purpose of this show is to ask questions like this, I, I hope that we could have more in-depth conversation about that. You know what I mean? So if you want to call in and talk more about it sometime, I'm, I'm down. I'll give a little bit of advice before you do, Sven. Uh, the last time you were asked then why after you got through all the examples and Forrest were in, you threw a bunch of hypotheticals, and then he asked, so why do you believe in it? And you said, because I'm a dualist, which is not a good answer. It's a bit like me defending Mormonism and somebody debunking. I understand Mormonism is different and way worse, but someone debunks thing after thing after thing from Mormonism shows there's no good reason to believe in Mormonism. And then I, and I agree with almost everything they say. And then, and they go, okay, then why do you still believe in Mormonism? Oh, because I'm a Mormon. It does, that doesn't work. Right. It doesn't work as a defense of the belief. So work on that before you call back in. Well, and I think there's a compelling oh, conversation to be had here. Right? Like it, it could be an interesting talk. I'd be interested. I'd, I'd definitely tune in to watch that. I'd, I'm curious as to like, how you how'd you come about to this conclusion? What 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 do you find com so compelling about it? You know, I, I find that to be a, a fun question to ask. Yeah, for sure. Anyway, Sven, to, we're going to move on to the Super yeah. Chats because we got the last bit of the show, well, but thank you so much for calling in, man. There's another what? Theus queued up. Yeah, thank you, Sven. Thanks. Oh, sh shit. Okay. Thank All you right, take care, Sven. Oh. See you later. Take care, Sven. And I definitely want you to take this one because the it gives conspiracy theorist vibes, but maybe not. We'll find out. Oh, no. Hey, cool. Yeah, this no, I just saw it pop up on my screen here. Yeah, it sucks. I had a guy on, on Twitter who argued with me for a week fucking straight. That that sex and gender are the same thing, and that that I was and and that they're both strictly binary, and that it's it's been man and woman and nothing else for a, as long as time. Um, and I was like, hey, none of that. And also, here's literally textbooks that show that. Uh, and then he went on a tirade about how my textbooks are woke 
and 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 they're they're all lies that have been made up in the past. And they're like, well, how old are those textbooks? Because first he said <laughs> your textbooks are like several decades old, so they're not right. And I was like, what? how old do you they're fucking what? think I am? These textbooks are from like a couple years ago. And he was like, well, if they're not old enough, then that also means they're wrong because now they're woke. And it's like, and I was like, call into the fucking show. And now, of course, that hasn't happened. So I wanted to harangue him on Saturday, a little bit on more. On Saturday, course, I got in a fight with happened. somebody on Twitter and they kept saying like, uh, debate me. I steal, man, my opponents. I'm known for it. And everybody's afraid of me for it. I will just, and, and I was like, call. It's like, I'm going to call. I'm going to, and I'm going to embarrass you on your own show. And I'm going to expose you. And he kept referencing my friend because my friend knows your show and, and would act like he's never heard of the show, but then he'd mention details that definitely <laughs> require you to watch the show. Um, yeah. Yeah. You guys, the common denominator here I'm noticing is uh, being on Twitter, and I'm also yeah. on Twitter, and I I never once have gotten off Twitter in a better mood than when I got on Twitter, and yet I still keep getting on Twitter. I have a suggestion <laughs> so for you. I'm, do what I'm I do. starting to understand just how horrible it is. It's awful. Yeah. It's, there's, so there's something you can you, do Have that you guys found. noticed the timelines, like the algorithms? So sorry, Jimmy, I was interrupting you. I've worked on my algorithm and I'm going to suggest you work on yours. So it reflects mine. Yes. I do get about 30%. Um, shitty people, right wing, alt right yeah. bullshit. It's, it's a lot of, uh, Hodge twins, Steven Crowder, that crowd. Then I get about Dude, another Matt 20% permanently on my yes. timeline. Like, I don't want to see anything that guy has to say. And he's on there all the time. I've never once liked it. I don't think I've even Never. clicked on it. To see what comments are saying. Yeah, I, He's I still think, on it. Yeah, I think with right wing people, fucking... if you even slow your scroll, they're like, well, that that means they love them. That, That's so it's engagement, about, uh -huh. right? It's about 30% that. It's about 20% my friends and people I like. It's, you know, it's Forrest, it's Matt. Uh, about 10% ex-Mormon Twitter. Uh, and then 10% cute animals, funny videos. And then the remaining 30%, if I've been doing my math correct, uh, I put a lot of time and effort. It is boobies. And I would suggest that you... <laughs> convert your Twitter algorithm to 30% boobies. And that is going Dude, to improve I, your experience on Twitter. I'll tell you my timeline right now is about 30% uh, monkey and ape videos, which is the equivalent of boobies for me. And that's, okay. that's like, I see it and I'm like, nice, okay. nice. But you could, have, but you nice. could take a different 30% and, and you could have 30% monkeys and 30% boobies. This is, this is like, a good point. You make a compelling you argument to me. Thank you. <laughs> You're making a really Okay, before this next one, I gotta go get a beer, so I'll be right back. Um, I'm allowed to do that, okay, right? You go, I'll complain about something else. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Start, okay. I say start the call. Erica will be fine. No, I'm not gonna start the call until she gets oh, back because I, I want her to hear this too. I was gonna, I'll, I'll do something else. Uh, I, I got my first uh, uh, tweet that went big recently because I on TikTok or on YouTube you get like some some good views and I'm like, okay, cool, that's actually. It. But like Twitter, I've never given a fuck about. But I posted this. Dumbass little meme is this little cartoon um, showing like here's basic uh, math and then advanced math, basic physics and then advanced physics, basic biology and then advanced biology. When they get to advanced biology, they they talk about sex and gender, and everyone freaks out whenever you do advanced biology. But all the other advances, it's like whatever because that's science, right? Um, that's the first tweet that went crazy. And at God, so many fucking butt hurt people. So many fucking people that are like all, all just all the, the, the bio literal realists that are like, you don't understand biology because in biology, you, you either have a PP or a VV and that's all. And it's like, dude, come the fuck on. <laughs> it's yeah. not even close. Also, I one dude making more um, people mad. I'm like, I see you do that kind of stuff. And I'm like, what I, you well done. I get mistaken for the amazing atheist kind of often, especially back when I had long hair yeah. and I'm so jealous of, of, uh, how the like he got attacked and retweeted by Jordan Peterson, Ben Shapiro, and J.K. Rowling all in the same week, and I was like, "Nice man, I want some of that." <clears throat> I got I got a couple of people. They're they're a uh, couple of biologists whose like whole fucking existence is dedicated to telling everybody that that sex and gender are binary. Um, one of them, this dude. He went to my my sex and sensibility video on my YouTube channel, the one that I, I, I hate because it's my early. You know what I'm talking about? I saw this yeah. on your. I saw this on your. Yeah, I saw this. Yeah, dude reacted to my 30 minute video for four hours 
and was Dude, upset about thing. everything I said. Every at one point in the video, at one, this is real. I because I haven't watched the whole thing. I'm not gonna fucking watch four hours. Some guy telling me they don't like me. But like at one point in the video, um, I say if you have ovaries right now, here's why, and here's the gene pathway that leads to that. Um, and they fucking like just excoriated me for like five minutes about like, what do you mean right now? That's such a stupid thing to say. What do you think you're gonna have ovaries one day and testes the next day? What? And it's like. Very clearly just, I was just being silly. I was being stupid. I said something stupid to try to be funny. The same way as like when I start my, uh, I, I have a video about fruit. And I'm like, if you've ever been a kid before, here's what this is. I don't actually mean there are some people born adults. It's just a dumb way to say this. And then like, but not only did they get upset about that, they called back to it later. Later on, I was talking about testes. And they're like, how do you know you have testes right now? What if you have over? And it's like, and that's the whole tone of the whole goddamn video. And like it's oh my yeah. god, dude! I could go on about that. That's but nothing. I, like, Four it's just, hours against forty-five minutes they is put, nothing. I've got they a guy put who's so, so obsessed with me. much time and effort into this. I've got a guy so obsessed with me and hating me so much that he did something like twenty-four hours of content in, over four different streams in response to a single tweet of mine. Oh One tweet? Yeah. Granted, the tweet basically called him a narcissist, <laughs> but you know. Right. If, yeah. Dude, I Days had one guy who decided me. I had one guy who fucking went like on a fucking like Sherlock Holmes super sleuth mission to prove that I wasn't a real scientist, that I was faking it and pro just fooling everybody. Um like went and looked up when my website was published. Like this website's only been up for like a year and like it and that proves this is all bullshit. I was like I changed the name of the website a year ago. That's the new domain, you fucking idiot. And people, then, and then yeah, I linked conspiracy them to uh, theorists don't care about shit like that. All they need is to convince some right. people and then they'll live in that spot. They're never going to come debate you directly. They're never going to actually he, be held accountable. This is one of the things that frustrates me so fucking much. You have terrible creators out there who are never held accountable and you have terrible audiences who are never held accountable for what they do in mass. Like fucking, well, it's time to blow the, the world thing up. Move on. The thing is, is like even conceptually too, right? Like I guarantee you, you could bring any of these people on and actually have a conversation with them. You could present all the facts to them. You could present your citations. You could give them, you could, you could have like a time turner or whatever and stop the mm -hmm. clock and give them an infinite amount of time to peruse every one of your resources. They never change their mind. Never. Some of these people are absolutely determined. It sucks that it's like that because like I didn't used to be of that opinion. I used to be so much more optimistic. Anybody will change their mind if presented the proper information. Dude, no. Some of them will not. And that sucks so hard. But you you gotta think I mean, like, I guess something that I've learned and like I'm a much smaller creator than you guys. So I like I'm not getting like the dedicated four to twenty-four hour response streams. Um or just wait. Usually, anyways. But but that being said, like yeah, just you first know, of all, they're happening, working. and you don't know they're happening, and they're way creepier than you imagine. Because well, I don't I don't this, actually know how big a creator you are by numbers or anything. But as a woman, you only have to have seven subscribers before things start getting fucking awful and weird. Listen, I've said it before, and I'll say it again, Jimmy. There are flagged there are flagged words on my in my comment section, oh, uh, yeah. and they're there for a reason. Say. Yeah. You like yeah. anything foot or feet related? Yeah. Immediate <laughs> purge. Immediate purge. Um <laughs> people are That's how you know you're a real funny. internet celebrity. I mean it's, I think, no, it's true. I, I think that uh yeah, indeed. So I, I just double checked. You or uh, Google fixed it because they figured out what it was going on. But yeah, it used to be if you put in any woman creator's name into Google the first or second autocorrect as happened with our friend Shannon uh, would be. Oh, feet. Shannon. It'd be, yeah. Shannon. Keith, Keith, or Keith, Shannon. Keith, fucking shit like that. Or Shannon. It's, it's oh, weird. Yeah. Weird she, world. she's, she's a trooper with that stuff. I've seen her on Twitter before, like showing she some does. of the comments that she's getting. And I'm like, damn, we Shannon is hard. Oh, Absolute cool. warrior. Uh, hey, Forrest, Good do you want to do this again next week? Huh? I, I, I want to do recently I need this to show next Monday. Yeah. Dude, wait, is the 22nd I will not still? Be Let's... Here. Yeah, we'll figure everything out later anyway. I'll cancel your trip. That's fine. Uh, go ahead and take that call. <laughs> take yeah, the right. call. Yeah, let's do the thing. Let's do the, let's do the show. Uh, yeah, so we've got this weekend, Dave Prona. 
this weekend? No, I'm leaving okay. on Saturday. I've got to get out of here. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. You're not in uh, Austin. By the way, no, that's that's uh, the last. I'm not gonna say it's it's a weekend later on in the month. I'll be in Austin. Okay, um, but not this sure next I, weekend. I'm just making sure that I don't need to finish building your computer. I did that. start the word last, but I'm not actually sure if it is the last weekend or not. I have to double check. But I'll yeah. I'll publish. I'll be at your house. Too, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so we've got David pronouns he, him in Louisiana. Uh, let's talk about a mathematical structure of King James's Bible. David, you're on the line. How are you doing? I'm very blessed, sir. Thanks for having me. How are y'all? I'm awesome. Thanks so much for listening to us ramble for so long. Uh, so you wanted to talk about a mathematical structure of the Bible. What do you mean by that? What's going on? Yeah, I just wanted to tell you the information. Uh, this is just what I believe was shown to me by God, and that the uh, King James Bible itself, it has a complex mathematical structure. It's encoded with information, and it actually even uh, it matches with the number pi. Okay. For example, I'll give you a small example. Uh, if you look in the first 200 million digits of pi, you'll find that position 555, you'll find the number 370. And that's interesting because the word Christ actually occurs 555 times in the King James Bible, and the word Savior occurs 37 times. That's a small example. Okay, Not so small, this is a joke, one. right? So We're all on the same page. Just, that this is a prank like, call. In, that in the first I, the, the, 2 million digits of pi, you find these numbers yeah, that you can reference. It. Are we all on the same page that this is a prank call? Well, can well I, I was about Jimmy, to like, ask just to kind of suss it out a little bit more. Like, is there a reason why that super specific arbitrary number <laughs> in this massive stream of infinite numbers with no repeats anywhere? You know, if there, there are actually algorithms you can look up online where because pi never repeats, literally every single conceivable phrase is encoded in it. Like if you assign a number to a letter or a sequence of numbers or whatever like that, you can literally, there's shit you can look up online. You can type in a whole fucking book and somewhere in Pi is literally that whole goddamn book. My name is in there. Your name is in there. Everything in the Bible and the Quran and the Bhagavad Gita and every other holy text ever are in there. It like, that's the nature of infinity, dude. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, also, like, why, why the King James version? Like, the what you know they do. Like, what's so special about that version that this is the one right. that God chooses to speak through? I mean, I understand, you know, <clears throat> traditionally why it is because King James only people like the King James version. But like, you know, as Forrest said, you can also find <laughs> all the other versions in there. So. Uh, well, it was actually the first uh, 200 million, and it's interesting that it's 200 million because if you take 200 million and you divide it by 555, okay. you get 363. Okay, shut and up. The David, all David, David, no, hold on. David, don't drop him, don't drop David, him, don't drop I him. I won't drop him, but answer, respond to the question. All you did was start saying your same silly script as though you didn't hear a single thing Eric, Erica or Forrest just said. So let's not go with more examples of silly. Wow. In 200 million digits, respond to what was said to you. Yeah, I was given the uh, reason why it was in that specific set. He asked that, didn't he? Or did he? Did he do, ask oh, that do in you the not know what he, he asked? Said, why? I'm very surprised. It's almost like you were just no. waiting to say your next part. Yeah, so here, here, let me let me try it this way. Let me see if this helps. David, pick any random number between like one and a bazillion, like literally any number you can possibly think of, doesn't matter how big, small, whatever, just a random stream of dig uh, digits. digits. Give me a random stream of digits right now. Okay. That's not the answer to the question. This is a prank call. Oh, you I, 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 do you need this any longer? Do we, we, are we gonna indulge? David, will you admit this is a prank call, please? No, I'm sorry. I didn't know he wanted me to say the number out loud. Yeah, she say, say the number. Give me a trick. random string of numbers. He thought you were doing a magic uh, trick. Four, 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 four. Great. So four fours in a row. That's it? You don't want to change it to anything else? No, that number. Okay. 
4,444, the string of numbers, 4444, that occurs at position uh, 54,525 in pi. I just found it. Because any sequence of numbers ever is in pi. (laughs) So if you say Jesus' name or whatever corresponds to the numbers, I'm just going to pick some numbers, 5764985213434 that's that's the string of numbers guess what that pops up in pi and here it is and it like I've, there's a literally a search engine well, to find it well that's interesting that 4444 so, like, was at the 54 cuz that adds up to 21 and 21 is the age you can drink and uh this is how I've come to realize that Sam Adams is a uh, holy beer right Five five seven six four nine six five nine occurs at position four four six nine zero zero seven seven. Amazing! That's a position with two fours, two zeros, two sevens, and sixty nine. That means it's magic, right? Like that, that. Just what what you said. It doesn't make any sense, and it doesn't matter that these things are in pi because everything's in pi. And there's a reason why you had to look through the first what was it two hundred million digits to find something significant. That's a fuck of a lot of digits, dude. Like, I don't know what you want here. David, this is a joke though, right? Can we just get the, like, I don't, I don't know why we're still indulging this. Like it isn't a joke. It's just like a bad, like David, it, no, it is I'm, a joke, isn't it? No, I'm not joking. I'll explain it if you'd like. You are Explain it. it. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, the reason why the first 200 million is significant, because if you divide it by 555, you get 360, 360.36036, and all forms of the word faith occurs in the King James Bible 360 times. The reason why I picked the number 444 earlier is because the word God actually occurs 4,400. Go ahead. J- just really quickly, you said you said that it corresponds to number 366? But then faith appears no, 360 three, times. I'm sorry. Uh, 360, 360 point 36036. So they're different numbers, right? Uh, if, you, if you do 200 million divided by 55, you get that number. And all forms of the word faith occurs 360 times. So it's specific to in the first 200 million digits you get the number patterns that i've been shown and the it's not just so in the within first, pi you know in, call. in the first 200 million digits you get a number that roughly corresponds to the number of times one specific word shows up but not a different word just that one mm-hmm. word well it's not roughly in that scenario it, it's precise it's 360. Just, just out of curiosity, uh, we were talking about the Bible. Do you remember, you, and we're talking about pi, do you know that the Bible does talk about the number pi? Yeah, I've heard people say that it's, it's the number three, and it's interesting because if you actually look, uh, the, word, the phrase, his word, is actually word number 314,159 of the King James Bible. Oh, wow. His word. It occurs 37 times. But then why did they say it was three? Like that's that's kind of where I'm at. Yeah, yeah, why if why why have the complex numerology? Why not just I mean they're they're literally talking about pi. I believe it's in the old testament. They're talking about pi. They say it's three. Why not just say it's three point one four? Like why why hide it in the numerology? What's the point? The only thing that that comes to my mind, and I don't I don't have an actual answer other than you know technically when we talk about pi at any point when we give the number like if I say <laughs> someone pi, in chat point, fact check you four. all forms of the word faith show up four hundred and two times. Oh no, God doesn't exist now. <laughs> no shit. Why are we pretending this is a real call? This is not a real call. This is. Two, he, the moment he said 200 million numbers, we didn't all know this isn't a real call. Why are we pretending it is? In you, have a, you have a series of 200 million non-repeating digits, meaning some version of this exercise could be literally done with any book. 
And if you say, or therefore, I, I that book becomes true, Harry Potter is now true. Lord of the Rings is now true. And David, he, every time I talk about how he's fucking full of it, he doesn't even try to interrupt or correct me. It's just, he's, he, this guy is fucking with us. Why are we, he said 200 million. Why are we pretending? Because it's fun. <laughs> it's, it's just so. The, uh, Go ahead, David. For the people. I'm sorry. I, I just uh, for the people that were fact checking, you have to look in what's called the pure Bible search. It's oh. there's a free program you can find it online. That's what I'm looking in. Pure oh, Bible. Yeah, okay, so right. everybody, everybody else who counted didn't do it right. Is yeah. What it is. Yeah, I love too the whole King James. Because I just looked it up this too. Proof as the Bible's being written over the centuries, thousands of years ago. God's just sitting there with a calculator, going, "Wait till that bisexual translates it. It's gonna fuck up their whole. <laughs> the math is gonna make it all so fucking obvious." Jesus Christ, David, I worry you're not a troll. I worry for you. I don't actually. This is this isn't real. This isn't a real. This is like. Oh, I can prove that God is real because rakes have 20, you know, little rake parts. And 20 is the number of times that women have rejected me in bars. Well, now, hold on. I'm, I'm actually curious. Like, I do want to ask. I mean, I, I we all know that this is, we all know that this is like a numerology call, right? Like, David, I, I'll i just ask you one. point blank, right? Like, why... Does any why does this matter, right? Like I, that's what I'm asking. What what is why is God hiding all of this random stuff in a bunch of different like in, in the digits of pi? Like why? W w according to you, what do you think the message is here? That's what I want to know. That's that's my last question. That's, that's all I got. Well, I believe that it shows. Uh that the Bible itself, the, the King James Bible, was constructed as in the sense that if you have 66 books and they're written by different people over different time periods and they're translated over and over, to find such a specific encoding of information, there has to be design. And I believe that's from God. Uh, earlier, whenever I gave you the 370 and the 555, that's within the first 200 million digits, but that's 370 at position 555. Now, if I'm not mistaken, pi wasn't calculated to that digit whenever this book, when the King James Bible was, was completed in 1769. So you would have to say it's a coincidence that 37 appears at position 555. No, you don't, because the rest map. was so arbitrary. What? This is so that's, stupid. That's, that's what I don't think you're getting, David. That's what I don't think you're understanding, is that you yeah if you if you have if you take pi and you split it up into two numbers and you can find this number at that number great but you can divide that number up a bunch of different ways right you can divide pi by a bunch of different things you can multiply by a bunch of different things you can do subtract chunk, whatever you want to do and one of those combinations is gonna work because as we proved a second ago you can find any string of digits in pi and because pi is infinite, you can probably find just about any string of digits at a lot of different positions. And so, like, you if you found one of the, you could absolutely. So, like, correlation is not causation. And again, can't stress this enough. I looked up, you said that the word faith appears how many times in the Bible? Was it 330? It's all forms, all forms of the word faith is 360. Now, the word faith by itself, is 247. I love that. I love okay. that. I love so that even why? in this case, the coincidence had to be forced by qualifying with this all forms that's, thing. That's exactly that's exactly what I'm driving at. Is that like I just looked it up here, and here we have from reference.com the word faith appears 336 times in the King James Version. So this same version you're talking about, these guys got a different number. In the New International Version, it's 458 times. In this other one, it's it's 270 times in the NIV. And so it's 287 times in this one. And like so like that, you had to find the right version and also all the proper forms and also, these guys came up with a different number, so you had to find the right computer program that told you the number because you didn't want to count it yourself. So you found somebody who said the right number about the right version about the right book 
that you could then divide up in the right way and then look at an infinite stretch of random really, randomly repeating numbers to find something in there that looks like that. And you don't think that that is kind of like not really actually evidence? Like, do you not see how that's a massive problem for actually trying to solve a question? Well, it has to be very, very specific. You have to be in that one version. So you have to go over to the pure Bible search right. to see oh what I'm talking God. about. But that's just one of them. David, right. here's the problem. Do you not get how that's <laughs> wrong? David, like, do you not get how that's the problem? 55% of our audience thinks you're not pranking. This isn't a prank. And I just polled. Well, at least 55% of the people respond to the poll. Will you please disillusion them of this notion? Do you understand how kind, what a kindness it will be for you to explain to them that actually you are a prank so that it'll help them suss this stuff out in the future? Because how could you be serious right now? It's not a prank. I'm serious. And it do that okay, doesn't so embarrass the, the hell out Let's of you. No. Here's let, let, let me tell you. This. Do you know that there have been there have been several different versions, several new editions of On the Origin of Species by Charles Darwin, right? So here's the truth that I'm I'm fucking making this up, but I just want you to like if I told you that in the third edition of On the Origin of Species, the word adapt pops up 437 times. And if you take 437 and divide it by six, then you find this other number that then correlates to some number in pi. But it, it only pops up 437 times if you look at this one program that counts it. Would you now believe that exactly the fifth edition or whatever the fuck I said a minute ago of On the Origin of Species is true and that actually evolution is real and that that's the proof that Charles Darwin knew everything about everything? Is that good enough reason for you to believe in that? Well, the problem with that analogy is that uh, I had started out saying that the Bible itself has the encoding to show that God exists. So the the analogy that's what I'm asking. Given, I see what you're trying, but the answer it is no. Really I'm asking if I did just answer the it's question. No. If I did the same. exact same thing, if I did the exact same thing that you did with a different book, would you believe it? No. I don't believe you can do that. Well, let me Why? rephrase that. Let me rephrase that. You may be able to find certain things in other books. And now I personally believe in you, you know, that all languages come from God. So you may find things in other books, but that still doesn't change the fact that this information is still here. And what if I found a book that, through this magical numeral code that you, the exact same code, I found a perfect thing that said, God isn't real. Jesus is a lie. Praise glorious Satan. Does that now, are those things true now? Because I found it That's in a book and it had in all languages. Would you believe it? If That's I said that I found it in a book and I had the, yes, it's a fucking hypothetical. Fine, take, That's no, what no, I'm doing. The hypothetical. People do this same numerology bullshit with everything. They've done it with the Quran. David doesn't believe in the, David, do you believe in the Quran? Hey, there you go. Oh, I know. Well, I've heard that there, I've heard that there, I'm sorry. I may have interrupted you. Uh, no, 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 I've definitely heard that there is some mathematical. I'm sorry. I'm not, go ahead. Okay, the question is, David, do you believe in the Quran? No. Do you believe in the Book of Mormon? No. There are numerology defenses to both of those that sound exactly like this. Now answer the question that Forrest asked you as though we're talking about non-hypotheticals because the same shit has not only been done for that, but also the versions of the Bible you don't expect. The NIV probably has I, more numerology bullshits. I literally just found, I just went to Google and typed in numerological proof of aliens, and I found a bunch of shit here. Oh, God. If you believe in God, then you also, well, not always, but I'll say this. I believe in God, and I also believe in the devil. So if you find mathematical structure to the Quran, oh, there's no. an explanation. How do you know that, this, that Satan didn't uh, write the Bible then? If you believe in, the, in Satan and that Satan would trick you into thinking that it's God through numerology, how do you know the numerology you uncovered this, this is isn't like Satan? How do you know Satan this didn't is, do the King James Bible? There's nowhere to go with this. Well, there's, there's nowhere to go with this. Answer the there's question. There's a problem with Islam. David, answer my question. 
How do you know that Satan yeah, didn't dude. write the new the King James Bible if you've just said that Satan can fake it, fake numerology to make you think God is there? How do you know he didn't do it with the King James Bible? Because there's a problem with Islam. That's not the question. That's Islam not. doesn't even exist in this example. Pretend you live in a yeah, world where said, Islam do doesn't I? exist, but what you just said is true, that, that Satan can fake it like my ex always did. Satan fakes it. <laughs> I tried to make this remotely funny. Satan fakes it, pretends to be God. How do you know he didn't do that with the King James Bible? I don't live in a world where Islam's not real. It's there. Shut the fuck I'm not answering hypothetical. Oh my fucking God. David, it's not David, that it do doesn't you, exist in the world. It doesn't exist in the question. Do you understand? David, do you understand how hypotheticals work? Like, no, like, but it's not even a that... hypothetical in this case. It's like I'm saying, what kind of sandwich do you want? And you're saying, I don't live in a world where Islam isn't real. Islam's not a part <laughs> of the fucking question. It's not that you have to, when I said pretend it doesn't exist, it's because you weren't grasping that. We're not talking about, this isn't a real call. This is the most pedantic, <laughs> stupid defense. He doesn't get particularly offended when you tell him, it, when you say it's a prank. He's not, this isn't a real call. This might be my brother. Is this my brother, David? No, it's not. Well, according to Christ, David. we're all brothers and sisters. How dare you? <laughs> I I mean, like, David, surely, God, like, you you got to understand how this is frustrating for us, right? Because, like, where we're coming from, we're taking the exact same thing you're saying, which is numerology proves the, the King James Bible and disproves everything else. And we're saying, and we're saying, okay, well, what if you can show truth in these other versions, these other works of fiction? And you say, well, that's just the devil. How do you know that the devil isn't at work in the King James Version, too? How do you know that? Well, I would have to answer with what the problem of, with Islam is. It would take me a minute to no, answer. No, you so. would not. You fucking liar. What, what does, <laughs> what Dude, does Islam no have there's to no do way. with it? Like, there's absolutely no fuck? way. There's no way. What? Hey, what kind of sandwich do you like? Can you answer that without mentioning Islam? You said, what kind of sandwich do I like? Yeah. You can't answer because yes. Islam exists. <laughs> No, I'll tell you what. I like, I like, I like different types. That's good, but you can't actually cool. tell us which one because because <laughs> you live in a world where Islam is real. I, I like. Yes, you do. Yeah, there, there's this, no way for us. There's, there's no way moving forward. There's no way. There's absolutely no I way. I just want David. David, is everything in the Bible true? In the King James Bible and the Pure Bible Search, yes. Okay, is everything in the King James Bible good? Explain the question. When you say everything is good, what do you mean? Like, like is, is everything that the Bible tells you to do a good thing? Whatever God tells me to do is good. In, okay, cool. I'm that's just going to double check. Asked, but maybe it's because Islam exists. I don't know. Uh, I'm just double checking. Just double checking. Uh, this is King James. Yes. So here I've got Exodus 21 from the King James Version, all about how to keep slaves, buy your slaves from the heathen among you, from the uh, other countries among you, tells you that you can beat slaves as long as they don't die within a couple of days. Um, it tells you that if you buy a Hebrew slave, they only have a set amount of time that they're supposed to be with you. But then if they want to go free, but you give them a wife and they have ch children with that wife, their wife and children are your property forever. And they, if they want to keep their wife and children, they have to have drive a spike through their ear and that makes them your property forever as well. It specifically says that people are property. They say that slaves are heritable. They get passed on to your children. So this is in the King James Bible. These are instructions on how to keep and own and beat and collect slaves. Is this also good? 
Well, the word slave is actually, slavery isn't used in the King James Bible. There's the word slave once, and it's the says, word slaves also once. So just to be clear, whatever word it uses, whatever word it uses doesn't matter because it says they are your property, and you can beat them, and you can breed them, and you get to sell the children. It has all of that. So if I call these pumpkins... And pumpkins is my word for human beings that I use as farming equipment and own as property and pass on to my children. It doesn't matter that I call them pumpkins. They're fucking slaves. So it's talking about slaves. It doesn't use the word slave sometimes. I use the word servant quite a bit. But it's slaves. So is this a good thing? Well, if God commands them to do something, then it's good. Now, I know that from our modern perspective, you think slavery is good? People... So you think Me that slavery was good? Own, I would not personally own a slave, and I can tell you what why. What if God commands I'm not him asking to what you personally no, wait, wait, would wait, 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 do. Wait, 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 I'm David, not asking what you would personally do. I got to know, David, what if God commanded you to own a slave? Well, he hasn't. I, that's what if God commanded question. you to own a slave? Would you do it? Well, that's a hypothetical question. Oh my God! But Can you just? I'm not. I don't I, think you know how hypothetical. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to say something, David. Do you have any kids? Yeah. I'm not talking about my personal life. I'm not well, going to answer any you, questions that might you, reveal what a fraud I am. If you don't have kids, I'm going to assume that you do, because you strike me as as someone who would who would have children. Uh, if God told you to take your son to the top of the local mountain and kill him. To show your devotion to him, would you do that? I'm not answering hypotheticals. You're talking about this like isn't with Abraham, correct? Yeah, it's not. It's not a hypothetical, yep. right? Because God told Abraham to do that. So, would you do that? Well, if God told me, I'll answer the hypothetical. If God told me to do something, then okay, sure, absolutely. But keep in mind that this is just a hypothetical, so we can't use it as a gotcha. But He did in the story of Abraham, have Abraham do what's recorded in the story. But you will also uh -huh. notice what happened. What's the uh -huh. ending of the story? What's the ending of the story of Jephthah? Well, the remember ending the story of, the story of Jephthah? I like that he because, won't answer yeah, my I know what you're about to say. Mine was in the, the same thing. It was the same thing. God in did the story of things. Abraham... It, David, in the story of Abraham, yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. At the last second, he stays his hand and says, don't yeah. kill your kid. But in the story of he Jephthah... Puts he puts a ram there. Yes. Right? Like, he yes. a ram instead. Yeah, it, he, finds a, he finds a ram tangled in the bush, and they sacrifice that and said, yes. But in the story of Jephthah, Jephthah prays to God and says, if you let me win this battle, I'll sacrifice the first thing that comes out of my house. And God helps him win the battle. And when he goes home, the first thing that comes out of his house is his daughter. And he goes through with it. And God makes him go through with it. So child sacrifice for God does happen. And God does command it. So yeah, you're right. The story of Abraham got a little twist ending there. And now, you know, Isaac just has fucking psychological trauma for his whole life, I guess. But in the book, of, in the story of Jephthah, absolutely. He sacrifices his daughter to God. And that's what God tells him to do. Was that good? Was that a moral good thing? Well, anything that God commands someone to do is going to be perfect. Now, there are times... So killing his daughter was the right whenever, thing to do? Yeah. This. Whenever God commands us to do something, there is a valid reason answer for doing the it. Question, we may not understand. Just answer the question. Answer the question. Was he right to kill his daughter? Was killing his daughter the right thing to do? I'm answering the question, but I need time to finish. No, because it's a yes or no I need question. You, give me a direct you need answer. one syllable, dipshit. Yes is one syllable. No is one syllable. No, we know the one. answer. We know. We know the answer. We're gonna get through this, and then we're gonna go right back to slavery, and then we're gonna do a couple other things as well. <laughs> and in the meantime, this is the best deist call I've had. Skull open. I'm curious about that verse in Numbers too. Mm-hmm. Which, which verse in Numbers? Oh, yeah, you don't answer. No, no, hold on. Right. I, we want to hear your answer to this one first. We'll get no, to it. We're not getting okay. past this. Was it good? Was it the right thing to do for Jephthah to sacrifice his daughter? Was that good that he killed his daughter? 
Well, anything that God tells us to do is perfect. Yes anything. or no. I mean, yes anything. Yes or no. Yes yeah. or so, no. So yes. Just to clarify, you think it was good that a man slaughtered his own child because he won a war. Yes, right? I've already answered that what God commands to do is perfect. <laughs> Why are you afraid I've to just say that. yes? And what is it that it's you because of course, right. I have another question. Uh and I want to get to your numbers thing as well. Uh we also talked about slavery and you think a slavery is a good thing as well because God has slavery in the Bible and he never said anything about slavery that was negative. He never told people not to have slaves. He had three different commandments about praising him and not taking his name in vain and sucking his dick, but nothing in there about don't own humans as farming equipment. So slavery is good then, yes? Turn off your vibrator and answer the David, question. David, are you texting? No, give me just one second. No! You're not going to no. waste our time. You called into You're our show. For a conversation. Is slavery good or bad? Is slavery good or bad? That 1, is the question. 1,100 people are waiting to hear you answer. Jesus. All right, I'm going to read. You ready? No! no answer the I'm question. not letting you read. Answer the <laughs> question. Jesus Christ! Why are we indulging him still? Please. <laughs> Sir, no, dude. We know it's question. Question. Your answer to the question is a yes or no. Is slavery, when commanded by God, if you like, good? Yes or no? I need to read this verse to answer no, the question. No, you don't. You fucking No, you it. don't. Why are you such a hey, coward? David. Why are you so afraid to David, stand up David, watch this. It's a magic God? trick. Watch this. It's a magic trick. It's amazing. Watch this, okay? Slavery is bad. Killing your children is bad. Nazis are losers. The Confederates are traitors and losers. The KKK are losers. Slavery is bad. Racism is bad. White supremacy is fucking stupid. Racism is trash. See all those opinions that I just gave without having to cite anything? I didn't have to pull up some ancient fucking book to prove what I was talking about. I just gave my thoughts on some things that are very common and understandable. I'm asking you to do the same. Don't quote a Bible verse. Tell me your, your opinion. Is slavery good or bad? Slavery as practiced by the South of the United States, I believe that the South was judged by God. I believe that's what happened during no, the Civil dude, War. Any, that's any not slavery, an answer. Any, any slavery, any like whether slavery. the Jews are owning slaves or, or Egypt is owning slaves or the South is owning slaves, all slavery any of slavery. any kind is bad. And, and, and like, you know that that's true. I know you know that that's true. I know you wouldn't own a slave, David. But the reason you won't say it is because you know that God permitted it in the Old Testament. And you don't want to make them look bad. So I don't I don't understand why you can't just do what the other apologists do, which is say, you know, oh, well, that was the God's built different or something like that. <laughs> say that it's bad. You know, it's bad. Well, I wanted to read. I wanted to read something because it clarifies, and I believe it may possibly. It does. There's no clarification, give, David. Do you understand? David, I'm not trying understand? to be a dick to you here. David, I'm not do you to understand? What the fuck is this? No oh my God! Did you put me on speakerphone so you could fucking look at your phone? Stop it! I'm not trying to be a jerk to you and not let you speak. I'm trying to get you to understand that there is no nuance here. There is no clarification here. There is no necessary reading for this. Slavery's bad, period. Not slavery's bad when, not slavery's bad if, not slavery's bad when these people do it, not slavery's bad so long as it isn't this, not slavery's bad in this context. Slavery is bad, period. Can we agree on that? There is a clarification in the Bible. If you can't answer one word questions I, or one word, give one word answers to a question that only needs one word, why should we then allow you to 
read whatever fucking Bible verse or clarification when you won't engage at the honest level of something purely Socratic and just answer a fucking question directly because you're either a troll or you're a cowardly little bitch. Just remember that we're live right now and people are going to hear you insulting me. I have bitch, insulted. I know we're live. This whole channel is live. That's I built this channel, bitch. The fuck do you think I, what are you worried? Do you think I'm worried about being live and calling out your cowardice? Is it, is, are you, do you think I'm worried about people hearing me call you a bitch? Bitch, but bitch, bitch, bitch. Is that what you think I'm worried about? Bitch. <laughs> Sounded like a cat. It doesn't thing. hurt much. You ha there's nothing to hurt. You haven't given a fucking solid position. Every time anyone's asked you your position, you go, well, you know, in the direction of, and if I could read, a, I won't answer a yes or no question. Do you think? I'm I mean, it's like, like we, we know the answer. Like you, you've got a dissonance thing going on here, right? Like you think <laughs> slavery is bad, but the Bible says that under certain conditions or whatever, it's okay. But like slavery is never okay. So that's where the dissonance is coming in. I, I, like there's no Bible verse, like Force said, there's no Bible verse you can read that's gonna make it okay. Like it, there were conditions under which God <laughs> permitted owning slaves in the Old Testament. I don't think there's a way you can get out of this. Like th this is kind of like, this you know is the dead end, right? I'm sorry, you know what a public servant is, right? Obviously. Yes, and a corvée sure. laborer, okay. which the Egyptians had, but the, the Israelites didn't have corvée laborers. They had slaves. <laughs> this guy doesn't know shit. So, I'm commanded to love everyone. So if I were to have a servant, Bitch, then I, I would need too. to love that person, just like I would love anyone else. So, in that sense, if you look at the type of slavery that was practiced like in the American South, there were some atrocities that happened, and we all know that. And that was awful. And I personally believe that God judged the South for what they did. Oh, my God. We're so just, just going like off again in these explanations that aren't relevant to any of the questions asked. No, no. By all means. By all means, well, David, please finish your sentence. Finish your sentence. Tell us how the slavery was different. Tell us how some slavery is okay. Tell us all about it. We'll give you a what full you 30 seconds. Like, well, you've got to read Well, about because that's the, the only uh, reasonable way that you would possibly start a sentence by saying, I understand this slavery was bad. But what are you going to say next? Let's, what yeah, let what can you possibly 30, 30 say seconds. next? Go for it. Go, go nuts. Yeah, justify yeah. slavery. I'm Tell us how the slavery was different. Let's hear Justify slavery. Go for it, David. If you read in the old testament about the laws of servitude there was a very precise way that this was done now god commanded this and for some modern people you know a lot of people people have their opinions but i trust god i do i trust god and i know for a fact that as a christian i am to love everyone so whether i'm at work and i have someone that tells me what to do that's in charge of me or if i were a servant if i were a servant I would still love the person that was over me regardless because I'm commanded to in the New Testament. Cool. Technically uh, all about here's love. Exodus, Exodus 21, 20 to 21. Anyone who beats their slave with a rod must be punished if the slave dies as a direct result, but they are not to be punished if the slave recovers after a day or two since the slave is their property. Those are the words in the Bible. Hey, Forrest, if you hey, Forrest, beat how about, your slave, huh? How about taking slaves? Because we've we've got one here from uh, what is it? It's oh, yeah. number. This is not the numbers I was talking about, but this is numbers thirty-one eighteen. So now kill mm -hmm. all the boys as well as every woman who has had relations with a man, but spare for yourselves every girl who has never had relations with a man. All of you who have killed a person or touched the dead are to remain outside of the camp for seven days. On the third day and the seventh day, you are to purify yourselves and your captives. So in this case, we're yep. not just taking adult slaves. We're taking we're taking young girls. We're taking little girls as slaves. David, I know you. Mm -hmm. I know you aren't for taking little kids, little girls as slaves of war. 
I know you're not. But this is what God. So we have. Commanded. Right. So we have one verse here that says you can beat them as long as they don't die within two days. Because, and it says here, it, the words are, because the slave is your property. And Erica just brought up another verse, and that one is actually from the mouth of God telling the people what to do to kill all, every man, woman, and child, but save the virgin girls for yourselves, because they are the your captives, girl. they are your slaves now. The, the little, little girls. virgin girls. So, kids. She's again, reading. this is a... This is a yes or no question. This is a yes or no question. Is what we just talked about good? I can't answer with a short yes or no. I'm sorry. Well, I'm not sorry, but I just it would take more information. How? You know, How? Those things. How? How? How can you possibly hear that and not be able to give a short yes or no? If you ask any person in the world with a fucking brain... Is it a good thing to own slaves, to capture little virgin girls as your property and take them or whatever you want to do with them after you murdered their family and now they're your captives and you can beat your slaves as long as they don't die in a little while. It's okay because they're your property. If you ask anybody that and they need context, that person's a fucking monster. So how are you different here? How on earth could you hear me say, Capturing little virgin girls as your slaves, beating your slaves with a rod, keeping slaves as property. And you're like, ah, oh, well, man, I can't just give you a straight up answer. Maybe it's okay. I don't know. How the fuck does that make sense, dude? Honestly. I mean, in what, in what world does the God of the universe, the omnibenevolent, omnipresent, and all-knowing Lord of the entire universe in all its magnificence and glory have a plan that includes taking young girls as prisoners of war because they're virgins. What are the implications yep. there? What could, what could the all-loving God possibly have in store for them? That, that, is, that is despicable to me. That is absolutely abhorrent. I, it, it, it reeks of human influence, and yet you're willing to take these as the words of an all-loving God? I don't understand that. I genuinely can't get in that headspace, David. You know, the numerology is one thing, but this is the kind of thing that, that causes, like, actual harmful attitudes, that, that it's God's plan when these kinds of things happen. No, that it's his command when these kinds of things happen. And um, yeah, I can't abide by that. Uh, and I need another beer because this is, uh, yeah, that's a little too much for me. That's painful. David, we'll give you the last word here. Uh, how is it possible that you could, could in any way possibly need more context to just say, no, these things are horrible. Go for it. Because I'm in no position to judge God. You know, I'm told to love everyone. That's what I intend to do. Cool. So I'm in a so position. Just I judge clear. God to be a little yeah. bitch. Yeah. You, you say you can't judge God, but his sins outnumber yours, David, by a lot. So just to be clear, if you or I were to tell somebody, go capture the virgin girls and take slaves, we would be monsters, right? For sure. Can we agree on that? We're people. We're not the judge. Of He'll never of just the answer world. a yes or no question. Not what I asked you. I'm asking you a straight question. Yes or no. You don't need context for this one. If you or I gave those same commandments, would we be good people? Yes or no? I have to answer with more than yes or no. No, you don't. No, you don't like that. No, you don't, David. That's it. We're done, correct. dude. That's it. It's over. You're such a dishonest There's no coward, way. little bitch. Such a fucking coward. Are you kidding me? Like I, I, oh my God. Remember Dude, that Erica, when you walked away, the last question, <laughs> right? Up. Erica, when you walked away, the last question was if I gave those same commandments or you gave those same commandments, would then it be evil? And he, he still couldn't answer that one. If, if God you... can do it. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's, it, obviously he was dodging it because he can't question God. He said over and over, I can't question God. So like. If I said, go capture virgin girls, would that be wrong? Oh, I, I can't answer just yes or no. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Anyway, I am now going to be the person who I'm goes and gets on, another beer. I'll be right back. I'm still on the yeah. side that that guy wasn't for real, for the record. I think the entire thing was a, I'm going to see how crazy of shit I can say. 
And unfortunately, <laughs> I'm ending the poll now 50 50, right on hard lines. 50 50 percent of the chat thought it. Uh, honestly, I hope you're right. Like, I hope you are right on that. I hope that guy wasn't serious because that's the kind of that's the kind of attitude that's genuinely super fucking dangerous for people you know i mean god said do it it's it's in the it's in the old testament yeah, that shit's uh that shit's mint go ahead go nuts i mean that's <laughs> just like some it's shit just right there yeah i mean we can even get to the 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 abortions verse and numbers where it's like <laughs> and you know that guy's pro-life you know that guy's pro-life and and yet there's, no, I there's know a that verse that about character will be pro-life the character yeah, that right, goes by yeah. and and would have probably said things like if we got into the issue of of sexuality or gender would start implying uh, uh, that anybody who disagrees with him is a you know into kids that's the thing they do they have their one thing no, or, or he'd say you know i i would never stone a gay but if god says do it then it's out of my control it's like dude i, 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 mean, I hope you're like, hi can i start you with some drinks well, let me read you a verse before we get started. Uh, I'm going to need to give you some additional context before I answer. No, 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 sir. I'm just asking, like, would you like a drink? <laughs> right, I, uh... right? Like, what context is there? What context is there? Within so the confines just, like, of... the most straightforward thing, bad stuff out there. It's so simple, but he can't say it because he's he's caught between a rock and a hard place. I mean, oh, God. I, I Like, you, what do you uh, say to that? Do you want to try the special? Well, I live, I, first of all, I'd like to remind you that we are in public and I, um, I live in a world where Islam does exist. Yes. His response to the I later. can't answer that question shortly because Islam is in fact real. You fucking, <laughs> I, I asked you a question about sandwiches, you bitch. I, I just like, oh my God. Like, I feel like I've, I've met more honest rocks than that. I, I mean, what do you do with that kind of shit, man? Like, Roblox what do you say? Uh, I still think it was a prank call specifically because of the numerology thing. And then once he was here, he was like, I'll go as long as y'all can go. I'm, I'm making yeah. content for my channel. It's probably like just another atheist right. YouTuber who was like, I'm just going to see if I can piss them off. It's going to turn out to be like, wait, does anyone know where Dillahunty is right now? Where is Dude. that guy? Dude, I, look, man, he, we're lucky that wasn't in person because, like, that's so justifying some of that shit is like, <laughs> you know, not that I, I would know, love not that I you go be on, on a dude. <laughs> uh, hey, listen, man, I, I'll have you guys know, and this is my opportunity to now brag on camera because I've already bragged on Twitter, but I've been training for like six months and I can now do three consecutive pull ups. So, wow. I mean, that's my pretty tight. is like, Dude, my upper body strength is pretty nice. You do need to be careful. You do need to be careful with Erica. I have met Erica in person a few times. She is this big and she is fucking mighty. She's crazy. (laughs) I'd like to specify to the person who, uh, and unfortunately their their $5 super check came in after the $10 threshold was added, but uh, I'm going to address it anyway. They said they came in at Jimmy doing his Charlie Day impression. No, you came in at me just yelling. I found out I could do a Charlie Day impression when one time somebody went, you sound exactly like Charlie Day and I can't take you seriously while you're mad. That's uh Yeah, dude, that was like a you you responded to that guy after being told it's a Charlie Work Day. Like you, oh you were not Yeah, I wasn't ever. Yeah, I just come up here and now I'm Charlie Day. Um <laughs> Are you just, I did love it when you like went on a whole tirade about like why this was stupid and it didn't make any sense, and then you realized what was happening. This isn't even a real call. Even a, why oh, are we pretending? Dude, uh, dude, like the third, the third, the Quran is written by Satan. Yeah. <laughs> when you right? absolutely lost, I was like, oh, he's it's not gonna be good. Would the two of you like to hear AI say a haiku in my voice? And the haikus are about you. I have a haiku for each of you. Yeah. Written. Are they by... complimentary? Yes. They were, are they, they free? Were, they were written by AI and they're nice. And they will be performed by a, an AI robot that has my voice. Okay. We'll do forest first. Renegade transformed. Biology's whispered truths. Forest wisdom blooms. Sweet. 
I didn't like that. Sweet. I didn't like. I didn't like the voice. I didn't like the context. I didn't like any of it. I fed it your body. Oh, it was bad. I, yeah, I have to retrain it because it's currently trained on what I'm realizing is my reading voice. Like I'm reading to you children. Did not voice. Like it. And uh, my, I definitely need to train it on my YouTube voice. But here's uh, here's the one for Erica. Erica's I feel like had a longer oh. bio where I stole a bio. I fed a bio first to it and said, "Now write a haiku." And Erica's bio where I got it from was longer than for us. Here we go. Primate Scholars Quest: Creation to Truths Embrace, Evolving Insight. Okay. I like it. That I was like mine tight. better. That was mine so was much good. better. My mind was good. Mine was nice. good. Oh, I, I feel cheated. That was great. <laughs> no, AI cannot do the Jimmy scream yet. Uh, it'll get there. Technology yeah. is advancing. Oh, yeah. It'll definitely get there. It'll get there hard. Um, uh, by the way, we have to do one forest. And Erica, actually, I'll do one with you too. But I, I'm making these special patron videos where I have. I feed chat GPT bio and information about the person I'm, I want to interview. And then I have chat GPT create 10 good questions to ask that person. Uh, and then I also have it answer the 10 questions the way it thinks it's going to answer. Um, and we just did Matt's the, that'll be coming out for patrons. It's already come out to my personal, but it'll be coming out to uh, patrons of the line sometime this week. Um, Patreon.com slash call the line. Anyway, it's really good. In fact, there I mean, there were a couple of instances where Matt's like, yeah, it's like a generic answer. I wouldn't have said there was, a, there was two instances where he was like, that answer is actually better than what I said. And then there were so, there were a few answers where it's like they basically said the same thing, but maybe slightly differently. But in, it, Matt would usually say it longer and it would say a more summarized version that was basically the same thing. It was cool. Hmm. It was cool. Yeah, dude, I'm game. That sounds fun. Cool. Anyway, these are super chats. We can start anytime you like. Let's do them, hey, dude. Super chats. Uh, who's reading them? Are you reading them? Am I reading them? What are we doing? It's not me that's reading them. That's for sure. Do you want me to feed them into? Well, the I'm asking AI? him. I'm just kidding. I'm not doing that. Yes, yes. <laughs> no, have, yeah, I read all of them. It takes a minute to process. I can't do that. Oh, uh, lame. Uh, five dollars from Sheridan Bernasconi. Um, my uh, question has to do with RH negative blood. Was all blood RH negative before the RH factor was introduced? Thank you both. I don't know. Sort of a I, I know question. I know a very little bit about blood evolution. Yeah. Yeah, dude, I'm actually not sure either. Um, I, the thing is, is that I've, I've talked about the RH negative thing before, but usually it's in reference. Like you know, a lot of ancient aliens people who come. I'm not saying this person is ancient aliens. They're probably dealing with someone who is. Uh, where they propose that like the RH negative blood factor couldn't have evolved, like. Yeah, analogies to the blood factor have been like <laughs> developed in numerous different taxa. So it's not like we're looking at something that it, with humans, it's like a completely isolated case. But I'm not sure what the ancestral form is. My my guess would be, my guess would be because RH negative is, it's quite rare, isn't it? It's it's rarer than positive. Am I wrong on that? I'm it, pretty I, sure 50, it is. Let me just double the check. The numbers, I think, are 85, 15, 85 positive, 15 negative. Yeah, okay, right. So so my guess then would be that negative comes second, um, although it could be that it came first and then positive had some kind of adaptive advantage to it. I'm I'm also not well-versed in the blood type. E everything I'm seeing, everything I'm saying says uh, 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 positive came first. I will I will tell you that um, Probably I, I believe it was with Robert Sepper, uh, He's not an ancient aliens guy, but he is a race realist. So do with that what you will. Um, he's a dipshit online that does a lot of videos that really irritate me. But the thing about Robert Sepper is that he's talked about the RH negative thing before as well. And he's like, evolution has no idea how these could have evolved. And I guess that's like his Atlanteans did it or aliens did it or the great Aryan race did it or some shit like that. Anyways, it turns out there's actually a vast body of literature that um, sort of covers the evolution of the RH negative blood. Uh, and RH factor in general. So it's not like we're bereft on, you know, <laughs> work on this. It's just that the folks that like to use that, again, I'm not saying that Sheridan there's, here is, there's, is that Just so you know, there's like 60 more of these. 60? Six yeah. zero? Yeah. Okay, like I'm that. done. Right, well, I'm just going to, I done. was trying to find an answer. I'm just going to link the article. Here's an article about it. And I'm trying to look, like, this is uh, Evolutionary Genetics oh. of the Human RH Blood Group System by Perry et al., um, uh, from 2012, it looks like. Um, one of my, so one I'm, of my I'm, I'm going, videos has like 
six sources on it, on the evolution of RH negative blood factor, but I don't remember which one it is, so you take forests. Only 59 to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll read this one while Forrest is looking. Disease and newborn. Twenty dollars from too young to feel this old. Time for a Forrest book rant. Have you ever? Have either of you ever read *Sapiens: A Brief History of Humanity* or *Evolution: The Human Odyssey*? I have both on my shelf, but I haven't started either of them. Any other recommendations? I've read the first one. That's precisely where I'm at. I've got it on my shelf, but I've never actually had the time to read it. I'm working on other stuff right now. I've got a *Human Odyssey*. I think I've got both, and I think I've read both. Um, I've definitely read Sapiens, and if the Human Odyssey is what I'm thinking it is, where it's like it's kind of like a nice um, picture book type thing, I'm gonna double check. But while I'm doing it, I'll talk about Sapiens. Uh, Sapiens is really interesting. Um, human Odyssey, whatever book. Well, it's just showing me Ancestors, the Human Odyssey video game, which I have played. Um, hold on, hold on. Whatever. I'm just going to talk about the first one. I think I know the second one you're talking about, and it's quite good. Um, the Human Odyssey book, if it's what I'm thinking of, it's got a lot of nice, like, kind of rudimentary basic information with good pictures. Sapiens, I'll tell you, is a bit controversial, and it's mostly a bit controversial not for the human evolution stuff per se, but for more of the Evo psych stuff that it gets into into the latter half of the book for, like, you know, why do we have capitalism? Why agriculture is, like, the biggest mistake of human history, which I actually kind of tend to agree with. Um, things of that nature. Overall, I think it's definitely worth the read and it gives you a lot to think about. However, I would keep in mind that there is a bit of controversy with some of the latter half of the text. That's all I'll say. Tight. Only fit. No, I'm, I, and I'm going to check that book. Lots more of you should send more. Are you still reading uh, Forrest or are you ready to hit another one? Yeah, no, I'm going to move on. It's going to take me a little while to crank through. This is pretty dense, and that's just not not something I can do while listening at the same time. It, I was trying to, but it's not going to work. Um, $20 from Amargen, uh, who Amar I believe is also our call screener today. Amar again. Yeah. Um, not just Amar once, Amar, Amar again. Mm -hmm. um, the two of my favorite people, I can nerd out on any number of things, so I'm always. it's always fun watching others go down the rabbit hole. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. That's That's, that's exactly how I feel all the time. Love it. This was the book I thought they were talking about, but it's actually not. But this is a nice little picture book. It's got some, you know, some cute stuff in it. Look, they did a St. Philanthropist. Isn't that so cute? Ah, I, like I like them. The chat has been pulled on whether to fight fire my dog or your goblin. I mean, <laughs> dog, right? Hey, it's don't, scary. Don't affect the poll. That is Gary. Hello, Gary. Uh, 1999 Hi, from Gary Booger. That exploded in the universe again. Uh, Gary here is referring to the the thing with you and I on Seth Andrews' uh, z -z -z channel. So um, we we were together about. in person. It was very fun. We got to meet Seth's dogs, and they hate Forrest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they hate me. They hate me. It's really funny, actually. Why, though? It sucks. I don't know. Because, like, that was the... They, I was, I've never been mean to them, but that's the second time I've been over it. Like, cause like Seth lives not too far away from me. And so I went over to his house and did a, a short, uh, 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 an interview one time dogs freaking hated me. We had to sequester them some other part of the house. And then Erica and I go over there and they're fine with her and they're fine with Gary and they're fine with Seth. And this other one just posts up next to me and we had to cut a couple of times and reshoot because this one's just next to me. It's like, Rrr. and I'm like, why? Like, what Gracie, did I do? Gracie hates him, dude. <laughs> Force will look down and like make so, eye contact with Gracie. And like, for the record, these are both little tiny, like Shih Tzu mix dogs. Those dogs are Force little like, dudes. Make yeah. eye contact. And Gracie was like, she zeroed in for the kill, right? She's like the, the guardians in Breath of the mm. Wild. Like, honing in on him getting ready to blast him out of the stratosphere it was hilarious the oh thing is God, linus dude, liked I... you for it linus did like you and gracie just didn't you linus. know she's just she's, she's you know she needs to take some getting used to i don't think linus knows what it means to be mad or have thoughts linus is just there you know what i mean he's a little guy that's a, I think little guy. the thing wrote right we have more than 60 left <laughs> I, I love I, you. Both. I think I pissed Seth Andrews off because we were in a group chat and I was, he was like, Look at my cute dogs. He sent a little picture. And I was like, Fucking gross. <laughs> he didn't talk to me for uh, a week. He's a, he's a chill. Dude. <laughs> By the way, he'll be back next uh, next Tuesday. He's uh, he's doing the show with me next Tuesday. So, oh, 
yeah. He and I are cool. doing some sort of a thing for the atheist community of Tulsa later on this month. I don't know what it is yet, but he mm-hmm. wanted to get together and do something. So like, Tight. if you're in the Tulsa area, I guess come see that whenever that is. If I don't know any details. Psycho Octopus, the thing writes, reading Evolution, 4th edition by Douglas J. Futuyama and Mark Kirkpatrick is a good time. Nice. nice. Hell yeah. I've been, yeah. let me go grab, actually really quick, because a lot of people ask for sure. books. So while you do that, too young to feel this old, right? Grilled cheeses. You want oh, the grilled dude, cheeses? so good. I'm actually full. I love a grilled cheese. Just kidding. James Master Flash. I found says, this, oh, there this cute little series of uh it's just called understanding fill in the blanks there's understanding evo devo and oh, little cool. understanding evolution and there's a little understanding oh, human evolution i've been going th- they're little tiny pocket books um oh, and cute. like i've been if you have got if you have guy pockets these are pocket books um <laughs> but yeah. like these and I there's about a million more of these understanding oh, race God, understanding Aren't they Those sweet? Those icons are adorable. Um, I would put that on my computer. I'd put a sticker like that on my computer. Those are adorable. Right? Oh, I love the So these are great me. little dudes. Erica, is it true? Um, and there's a bazillion more. Dude, I'm huge. I'm like what? six stories tall. Are I'm you like, really six I'm three? big. Yeah, dude, I'm fucking huge. I'm six stories tall. I don't know if you're fucking with me or not. No, dude, I'm big. Ask anybody. I, I heard a rumor recently that you're tall. Yeah, dude, literally ask anybody. I'm fucking huge. Yeah, but I feel like all your six, friends eight. would be in on it if you were lying. See, now four's just and six, my, eight. My muscles are big and my stature is big. I'm I'm a large gibbon, gibbon-esque. After the show, <laughs> what, this, there's no not creepy way to ask. After the show, will you send a full body picture of you in a doorway, <laughs> please? <laughs> Stand, stand next to a tape measure or oh, door, several man. different bananas of different sizes for scale. I've built houses before. I know how big a doorway is <laughs> supposed to be. Bananas. You're going to go find some like weird small like, doorway you have, like, uh, like a closet under oh, yeah, the dude. stairs kind of thing to make it look Yeah, normal. I'm going to find like a Pee Wee Herman house and stand in front of it, like looming yeah. like a gigantic creature. Well, I still, just so you know, have no idea whether you are in fact tall or not. Uh, oh, I, I, I am, trust me. I'm more, you don't have to worry about that. I'm very large. See, this still, I feel very, like, I feel, okay. Anyway, uh, <laughs> did anyone else want to read this or should I? Uh, $10 Ooh. from Game Master Flash. Oh, yeah, I was going to say that everyone asked for books. Look up this little series. There's a million more of them, and they have all sorts of topics, and they're all biological, and they're really cool. And I love them, and I, I bought them so I can, like, pick little lesson plans out of them. I like them a lot. Uh, $10 from Game Master Flash. Erica and Forrest, the show is going to take forever. We're currently coming up on hour five. Um, and I love every minute of it. Go fuck yourself, Jimmy. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, Erica, Dude, I, you... I was actually, also, I was surprised, also, Jimmy. I, was, I, love... I, I said earlier today, I was like, what, what Jigsaw-esque game does Jimmy Snow have planned for the latter half of this show? <laughs> What kind of, he's going to like press a button and an obstacle course is going to appear in my home that I have to navigate. <laughs> if we if we had less than 60 more and more coming in, by the way, I want people to send more. I don't want to sound like I don't want more super chats, uh, but we're efficiently getting super chats without the need of a game. Uh, and boy, am I glad we don't have 60 that then require 30 seconds to respond to the prompt or whatever, doing the. That, though that game Dude, was a lot seconds, of fun, and I want to play it again. 30 seconds was never enough, though, because, like, for you know, you need a couple beats, right, Forrest? Come on, back to you. You need a couple beats. First oh, of yeah. all, you speak sure. the number of words in 30 seconds, Erica, that the average person speaks in five minutes. So <laughs> I think you're fine. <laughs> Will you text you know, me? Either you text or DM it, me your true height. Will you please? I won't react. I won't tell anyone. Sh- would it shock you if I told I you will. I've heard that before? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. No, I did I, love when you said w- when you were telling Erica to please send a picture of her standing in a doorway and all this stuff. Somebody in the chat was like, "Make sure to include feet." I loved it. No. <laughs> yes. oh, no. dude, someone I'm earlier was feet. like, "I'm really." Someone earlier was like, "Erica, I'm really interested in hominin bipedalism. Do you think you could show me without shoes what it would look like for a bipedal hominin <laughs> to stride?" That's, ooh, you almost had me. You almost Fuck got. <laughs> Fucking very it. sneaky but then, <laughs> but then they asked if if they could see what it looks like for me to crush a chicken under my feet it was <laughs> and i realized 
I realized there was some fuckery, some fuckery. Here's the pun. There was some fuckery, like, dot, 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 afoot. Afoot. <laughs> They're like, how often did hominins step in really firm jello? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we read this one, right? Yeah. Uh, five dollars and too funny of uh, young to feel this old. Uh, go fuck yourself, Jimmy. Hashtag go fuck yourself, Jimmy. Hashtag Valkyrie Labs. Hashtag uh, gentle and very modern ape gang. Love that. Hell well, I, yeah. Well, I've got a name. I've got to name gentle my followers. Gentle and very modern, you know I mean? a- modern ape gang too quickly because it. There's just no, the know. very end of that does not go well together if you read too fast. No, I know, Jimmy. You know, there was a time period where I was like, let's call ourselves the greater apes, but it does not work when you say it. Oh, my God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. By the way, not, by work. the way, massage therapist becomes very nefarious if you put a single space in it. Yeah. What's what's right. the uh, arrested development? The uh, the <laughs> analyst <Anus> therapist? <laughs> Anal, yeah, wait, wait, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. I'm the first analrapist. Uh, and then, and then a new start was anus tart. Why do we watch all the same shows, Erica? No, dude, because we both have really good taste. That's what it is. Love community. How do you love fuck? community? Yes. Hey, dude, oh my um, god. Hey, are you watching? Jimmy, ba- you're... Are you watching Barry right now? No, I, I, I'm watching Succession right now. But Barry's Me actually too. on my list. Um, I was going to tell you, you're, it's very streets ahead of you to have such good taste. Thanks. Show. Thanks. I, uh, uh, oh my God, I could talk about TV all night. I actually, I am Abed, I think, from Community. We have way too much in common and such similar. <coughs> Dude, Abed is, Abed is dope, though. Oh, God. Abed is, is my God. I'm no longer. He's atheist. a dope. I don't, anyway. I don't watch any of these shows because I don't watch shows because I'm a sad little man. No, that's who just not why. Does YouTube Forrest, things. Can I defend you a little bit right now? <laughs> Can I defend you weirdly against yourself? You're a First, guy. You clearly sure. have uh, sources of serotonin, which are healthily drawn. And you don't, I've never felt a mo- for a moment. I've never thought you do anything but live in the moment you're in. Whereas I am constantly trying to get out of the moment I'm in. And that's what TV's great for. It's a perfect escape. I don't see you as someone who needs to escape life. And I do. So You'd be surprised. I, 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 living in the moment, I challenge you on. But as far as just like being happy and stuff, like yeah, that's my whole brand. Yeah, why, yo, if that's you're that's happy what I am. All the time. Why would you need TV? First, you're what we would call a well balanced person. Yeah. For sometimes <laughs> no, I have. You know to, what? For sometimes what? I don't call you know because I'm sad and I don't feel like stopping. That's not even a joke. I've done that I'll before. I'll challenge like, you. I. Oh, what is happening? Not, Did you just grab a small I'm working vacuum? on something. Hold on. <laughs> he's like, I, just, I he's, bought a he's bubble like, gun. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, no, my it's showing God. Gonna talk about Why is your bubble gun making me being a happy frame person. rate worse? So, <laughs> well, like, it's because it's trying to focus on too many things. Probably. For, Forrest, you're like, Harry the Platypus. I just got my serotonin <laughs> innate ready to a <laughs> <laughs> I've never, <laughs> I've never watched Phineas and Ferb. Oh, he does. But, but I know, but I know what it is. I know what you're talking about specifically because uh, Dan Povernmeyer or whatever his name is, uh, we're mutuals on TikTok, and so I've seen a lot of his shit. So I don't know what it is, but yeah. like we're friends. <laughs> you knew, oh, you knew, you knew. Bubbles. <laughs> Doofenshmirtz Incorporated. Uh, Lord Doinkus says hi, guys. What do you think is the likelihood of life arising on an Earth like planet orbiting a white dwarf star? Thank you for what you do. I don't know. If it's Earth like, then a lot, but I don't know about like with a white dwarf. I don't know the differences between uh, ionizing radiation output, and it all depends on the magnetosphere. But if you're saying like it's Earth like, then fuck, man, probably. Who knows? Is in the habitable zone? We'll see. That's that's my whole thing. Yeah, dude. I, I was gonna say it depends on how close it is, and uh, your foliage, if you evolve kind of like a plant-like analog, is gonna probably look quite a bit different than the kind of plants that we have here on Earth. I don't um, remember there the was order. A really is, cool... is yellow or white hotter? White is hotter, right? Yeah, yeah but white's it's, hotter. It's like t- it's like tiny. It's like yeah, but 
But our sun yeah, is because, tiny. We have a yellow dwarf. Is a white dwarf always smaller than a yellow dwarf? We we do not have a dwarf star. We have a, a star that is of uh what like average force? What is it? Our star is like normal size, but it's a little bit on the bigger side of an average. No, I don't think I'm pretty correct. sure it's actually a little bit smaller. I, I yeah, I, I just pulled up. Let me double it's check. It's a yellow dwarf. But that's oh, just God, that's that's according to NASA. Okay. So look, man, I, I do I do monkeys, I do apes. Yeah. That's what I do. So uh it's don't only... ask me about stars or planets or any kind of little comets or things like that. I don't know about <laughs> It's okay. But, but what I will say, what I will say is I do know someone proposed an idea that uh, earlier in Earth's history, when it was a bit, um, when the days were shorter and um, it's, it was sort of getting like, you had like the, the distant starlight problem with regard to how much actual UV radiation was getting through the atmosphere of Earth. They proposed that like foliage of a, of a purple color would have actually done quite a bit better as far as photosynthesis goes because of how wow. the wavelength of the light was getting through. So like, that's kind of fun and, mm. and whimsical. Maybe we would experience something similar if we orbited a white dwarf. I don't know. Um, Isn't that why photosynthesis, or, and photosynthesis be, duh, Jesus Christ. Isn't that why uh, uh, chlorophyll B, the different different chlorophylls, there's one that's good for like what we see is the most abundant one. And there's another one that is actually specialized yeah. for like, super uh, like higher wavelengths or lower wavelengths something like that i can't remember off the top of my head like, i think yeah. it's considerably yeah i think it's considerably rarer as well i don't know though the the, the botany stuff mm-hmm. the botanists out there will be mad botanists die angry it looks like the, a white the only thing that i remember fine. for sure from my like from my 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 uh, uh 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 plant bio classes is that rubisco is the most abundant enzyme on earth that's all i got under my belt for sure i can talk about a couple of the things but like that one, I got I'm a, in my noodle. <laughs> I've been drilled there. Wow. So my, Dude, guy, I see, oh, my I plant biology see. professor, oddly enough, was named Dr. Green. How good is that? <laughs> a white dwarf. I know the C three, C four difference quite well, but outside of that, my botany uh leaves a bit to be desired. Yeah. Do you know that a white I, dwarf? I have, would oh my have... god, I have a whole fucking half a chapter about C three versus C four right now in my thesis. So fucking... Yeah, dude, because you're studying Homo no. erectus. I get that. Do you know a white dwarf? Well, would basically yeah, my whole be work the, is in isotopes. Do you know that a white dwarf would basically be the mass of our sun in the shape of our planet, shape and size of our planet? Yeah, that's yeah. Nuts. It just gets crushed. Yeah, yeah. So that that's would be like, the hardest. What's thing. fucking crazier? Go on. Look up neutron stars. Those are fucking nutty. We're like, neutron stars are nuts. We still haven't broken to to the point where we're only sixty behind. Otherwise, I would. Uh, okay, keep going. Keep going. Let's let's. Uh, Zictomorph showed a neutron the, star is like the size it's the mass of the sun but like the size of a city it's like yeah. a few miles across just wow. crushed Big. down to the point Big. where it is how does something that pure neutrons. Not colla- like is that is that the final stage before a black hole or are you capable of it's, actually it's about being- as dense as you can get it's about yeah. as dense as you can get without being a black hole if I remember right but what's really cool it's about it is that no, I was going to ask, isn't it, isn't it post like, um, you know, you, you reach like the red giant phase and it either goes supernova or collapses in on itself. And then you either go black mm-hmm. hole or what, or a neutron star, right? You go one of two ways. That's as far as I understand it. Yes, that's right. As far as I remember, but again, you know, neither of us are astronomers here. So I might be getting something fundamentally no, that, wrong, that but I don't true. think I am. That is but really, like, really true. Yeah. But I'm 99% sure that is correct. And what's cool about neutron stars is that strictly speaking, they're, they're like 10, 12 miles across. It is one atom, essentially, because what you've done is you've crushed all of these atoms down in the star wow. into a mass of neutrons that's held down is in this mass by its its own gravity, and you have a sea of electrons going around the outside of it. So, like a teaspoon of neutron star weighs more than Mount Everest. It's just pure fucking neutrons. So, because of what it is, one single ball of fucking of of it's one nuclide. It is essentially like a 10 mile wide atom and that's but, fucking but what's nutty to think here, about what's important here you didn't finish all of that that is true that it's mind-blowingly true that hurts to think about that mm. gives you a, a, a sense of scale of the universe that makes you feel so tiny and don't forget jesus doesn't want you to masturbate and in the bible and... if you divide this by that it comes up with pi <laughs> but only in the first and... 200 million digits and you guys like, comment, and subscribe. That's right. Thank you. <laughs> Hit the subscribe Please. button. The most disappointing thing oh, about yeah. hey. the AI is it doesn't say, even though I trained it, it says button instead of button, like I say. Oh. 
Uh, I was supposed to read the thing, but we couldn't find it. Make sure everybody joins the Patreon and become a channel member Thanks. and subscribe to the Line X. Thanks. And also subscribe to Gutsit Gibbon and also subscribe to Forrest Falkai. And we have Patreons too. Give us all the money. All yeah. of us. It, Give us all the monies, please. You know, I, I, I'll speak for myself, but I know Forrest does it too, and I know Jimmy does it as well, right? Like, the, the, the goal is to distill information and make it available. Um, I, I think that that is a, a worthy endeavor, so consider it. Or if not, like, if you want the free book. option, you just, just like, comment, and subscribe. It's easy. I mean, it's free. It's, it's totally free. Hey. I'm trying to buy a boat. No, I'm kidding. I fucking wish I kept more of money for myself instead of expanding this garbage. Uh, Zictomorph oh, had put his tongue out. That was the last one. What's that? I said mine's all about paying the mortgage. <laughs> I uh, I do things like send new gear to people I like whose channels I think should this, be. This should is be true. Better. Jimmy does that. He's he's a generous guy. Absolutely true. Uh, that, wow. Mm -hmm. I don't know about that. It's it's a little self serving. We then ask you back and you can't <laughs> say no. Uh, five dollars yeah, no, from James. Very true. Very true. Five dollars from James Call. <laughs> Erica and Forrest, I've gushed over you two before. I just buckled in for a six hour show. Well, we are on our five uh we're about to cross into hour five, so you're probably right. We're going there. Yeah. Uh, it is what it is, baby. Mestai thirty one says, What are both of your opinions on why many of us get hangry? There's actually you don't need an opinion. Uh, There's science. Yeah, it's long and short of it is 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 you know low blood sugar and and your your so like just as an example, um, there is a direct correlation when we look at like people who are going in for like a parole hearing, whether or not they're going to be granted parole. Um, the best indicator for whether or not they are going to be granted parole is how recently the judge has eaten lunch. If they if the yeah. judge eats lunch and then goes into the hearing, very good chance this person is going to see mercy. If the judge is at the end of the day and they, they're hungry, they want to go home and get dinner, very low chance that this person is going to get the parole they want. And in both circumstances, the judge is going to feel like they did a good job, like they were being fair and honest. But like your blood sugar has a huge play on your mood. And if you are hungry and you're agitated and you're, you're, you're uncomfortable, yeah, you might, you might change the way that you see a situation, the way that you behave, even to the point where it can get to something where actually somebody expresses anger. It depends on your personality and whether you're susceptible to that kind of thing in the beginning. But like, yeah, that's, that's, that's the long and short but of it. You're, you're, you're a giant mech that is composed of a bunch of tiny organic blocks and a ton of bacteria. And so you're constantly in this negotiation with, you know, your consciousness which is, you know, all of your neurons kind of acting in tandem and the rest of this giant biological unit. And when they need energy, they're going to kind of withhold some of those chemicals that you need, your feel good hormones. They're going to kind of hold those captive from you until you acquiesce to them. And so you feel hangry because your body's trying to tell you that you need something, right? They're saying, look, we need to run properly, eat something now, or we're going to make you angrier and angrier until you lash out at your loved ones until you get a hamburger. Um, and like, you know, that's kind of a great motivator if you're living on the savannah, right? You know, you're living in your troop of a bunch of uh, Egyptopithecus uh, little monkeys hanging around in the Fayum and you guys are getting hungry. The troop's dynamics get kind of iffy and it drives the entire group to go eat some chow, right? It's a it's a really great um, yeah. uh, sort of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's like a, um, in, in, inspiration, isn't it? What am I looking for, Forrest? It's like a uh, incentive. That's it. It's a great incentive. It's a great incentive hey. to keep you feeling and to keep you healthy and to keep you um, functioning properly. And it's kind of weird to think about. But um, yeah, make sure you're eating regular meals. It'll keep your mood regulated. Uh, somebody I'm said incredibly they snackish I'm... at this moment. Oh, dude, I had a grilled cheese and several beers, so I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I'm so fucking jealous. I have had the top of their half head, of a Coke people? Zero and some water. Dude, Who knows? It's not enough, Dad. It's not enough. Who knows off the top of their head how many me? neurons there are in the stomach? Oh, I don't know, but I know it's similar to the brain. You got a gut, no, uh, it's not even gut close. brain. It's not even close. That's it is. A, that's I a misconception. It. There's 100 million in the stomach. There's 500 billion in the brain. It's similar I'm to the right. spine. It's actually larger than the spine. Come on. Are in the gut. Yes, 100 million. Oh, you're right. Two yeah. thin, the ENS is two thin layers of more than 100 million. Yep. Yeah, you're right, Jimmy. Brain's 500 billion. Yeah, I do know some things. Uh, okay, you, you, you nailed it. Well, it's 86, 86 billion. Would you say? 
in the brain? Yeah, 86 billion neurons. There's 500 billion neurons in the brain. Mm -hmm. PNAS, 86 billion neurons, scaled up front brain. I might be mixing things up. I might be meaning to say that there are 500 million neurons in the gut, in the stomach, and 100 billion neurons. I think I've got my numbers mixed. Millions of billions. 100 billion in the brain, because it's roughly, it's half of a percent. There's half of a percent the number of brain neurons in the gut. Regardless, you're right. It's a weird yes. amount. You've got a weird amount of your of neurons in your gastrointestinal system compared to your other systems, but there's yeah. still more in the nervous system. I think there might even be more than in your peripheral nervous system in your gut. I don't know the answer to that question. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, do we do this one? Sean Isherwood says, what do you think of the selfish gene thesis that morality is game theory acting on our genes? I'm a huge fan of you all, by the way, including Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I think to some degree there's something to it, right? But I think it's also almost over, like I, I've said this earlier when we were talking to um, to one of the callers, or our second theist caller, it, it's almost an over, overly simplistic view in the sense that it like sanitizes altruism. Like <clears throat> in one sense, doing altruistic things in the group is ultimately motivated by potentially the benefit that it might have for you as far as your differential reproductive success goes. But on the other hand, it feels a lot mean, more meaningful to us as organisms. And I think that like you can you can appreciate the sort of ultimate cause as well as the proximate benefits without kind of diminishing the form, diminishing the latter for the sake of the former, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the, yeah. <laughs> Messiah 31 said, I forgot to say good fuck uh, yourself, Jimmy. Oh, beautiful. Hey. So nice. Thank you for sending money to do this. But Forrest, you can jump back in anytime you want. I've just been doing it because I'm faster I, I, and I'm interrupting. I'm happy with you doing it. I don't like cool. doing it. The Raven 200 says tomato. And then it's a tomato and then it's a ketchup packet and then it's pizza. And then I, I can't really make that out. I think that might be spaghetti with uh some sauce on it it's and spaghetti I, yeah i assume they're keep, all about to explode keep it away from the ghost of margaret yeah there you go jesus she's coming for you she's coming uh ten dollars from larry fishman i think the answer to the fermi paradox is that we live in the milky way's equivalent of rural nebraska where nobody would ever bother <laughs> visiting unless they're lost i know one of the things that uh is brought with that is just the concept of the sheer size of the universe that the universe could be teeming with life, including teeming with um, with uh, intelligent life, but it's so big and time is so, there's so much time to do stuff that everything could miss, every, every, everybody could miss everybody. It's I, I actually yeah. quite like the, uh, I like the zoo hypothesis. I like the idea that most intelligent civilizations are kind of eusocial and like insect-like and humans are kind of aberrant in our independence and in our individualism. And so everybody's like, yo, dude, stay away from those guys. Like they're messed up. They're not for the good of the species. They're for the good of eat of themselves. And they're like, what? Like they're individual hive mind populations. And it's like, nah, dude, they're individual units. They're psychotic. Do not go over there. <laughs> Autist Thick, which Love is that. very funny, says my my school taught <laughs> young earth creationism. I even won the scientific fair by proving the flood. Thanks for this fun resource to learn real science. Hashtag better late than never. If you still have that project and you decide to become a YouTuber, yeah, I was gonna debunking say. your own thing would be uh, hilarious. Listen, man, I, I, one I, one got, I one time got an A plus on an assignment in middle school for writing why evolution is false. So we've all uh, we've all moved forward. I went to younger oh, creationist yeah. middle school, so that's why. But we I, all we all evolve, if you will. But individuals don't evolve. Probably. I wrote so. I wrote stuff appealing to Christianity, not because of a private school or a Christian school, but because most of my schooling was either done in the South or Wyoming, which is sort of the. Oh. the Wyoming's kind of the south of the north. <laughs> it's, it's, I was about different. to say that. There's some, for some reason, there's a lot of Confederate flags in Wyoming. Don't haven't figured that out yet. You, you I'm went. originally from Indiana, so I sympathize. The south of the north. It's rough. When I was uh, driving through Alabama recently, I saw somebody who had, uh, like, at their front door, they had a Confederate flag and an American flag hanging both outside their house. And I'm like, what? what's the point? You know what I mean? Like, they're, they're, they're enemies. They're, yeah. One's the traitor, and the other one's the winner, and you have them <laughs> both, and you're like, yes, yeah. these are both of my thing. Like, what? 
What is that? Dude, you know people, what I mean? People, it's like, like people do the U.S. flag with the swastika now, man. Like, what is? What are you gonna do with? Yes. This? Like fucking. What is the what? Follow what? your leader, Nazi. Which, I mean, you can connect that a little bit because, like, the Nazis literally took their cues from America in terms of like how we segregated yeah. people and shit. But like. There's yeah. a there's a reason why Adolf Hitler had an actual fucking photo of Gerald Ford on his or no, it's Henry Ford, not Gerald Ford. God, Henry well, Ford God, on his desk. If it was because, Gerald Ford, that right. would have been something. Oh, dude, <laughs> a whole other thing. Yeah, it's God, time there's travel. a reason why Hitler had a literal picture of fucking Henry Ford on his desk and mentioned Henry Ford in his book like that. But like, still, like you know, it's ah, oh. Gerald Ford, thirty years right, later, crazy. Suddenly, we got, suddenly we got to fight time traveling Nazis. Kobe Soda says, "Will a forest, forest, a forest, forest for a list? Forest, 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 forest. For, uh, you're just making shit up at this point." And then, by the way, you it, threw it in is a one of those in there. <laughs> Are you fucking? Yeah, you idiot. Jesus, so <laughs> I know what's wrong with you? <laughs> we love you, Kobe. Uh, the Raven Two Hundred. I don't know what to do with that. I'm sure I could decipher that if we had like 20 minutes, but I, man, it's like the ones where it's like Buffalo, 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 Buffalo. It's like fucking, you have to stretch the meaning of it technically means this quite a bit. You know what I mean? Hey, when you all chat at me, you need some words of like win. When you all chat at me in chat, please assume that I only know what has been said in the last nine seconds. Cause I'm just now seeing in chat something not too long ago saying it's virtue signaling, Jimmy. I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> okay. I agree or disagree, depending. Uh, Raven 200 says the tomato soup looks like chicken noodle soup with bacon bits. Jimmy, go take a triple power bomb from the shield. I There the was shield, some kind of no. bits of something. Yes. I think it was like onion or maybe celery in it. But anyways. By the way, I asked Erica to text me her true height, and she didn't, in case anybody was wondering. I'll just tell you afterwards, Jimmy. It'll be okay. Okay. I, wa- I got to know. I, I, I got to know if I'm being bamboozled. Because there's a chance oh, we'll know. never meet because I don't travel, really. <laughs> but I'll come to come you. Come. You fucking always... refused. I was to say, you could come I invited you to an island. I invited yeah, you to okay. New Orleans. I invited you. just like, eh. No, the t- <laughs> no, you were I, like, I don't want to get on a plane. I kind of want to. Oh no, I definitely won't go on a plane. But I kind of do want to go to New Orleans with you, uh, and maybe one day we can we can tour bus and do some like shit. But yeah, I'm, I'm not flying. Fucking, I I don't planes do petri dishes. What's that? Planes are spooky. I, no, I fly I, on a lot of planes, and I, I have I, flying phobias as well. well not I legitimately phobias, don't like- have a flying phobia, which is so hard to convince people of. I could fly all fucking day long unless you give me. Let's just say 20 more people are on the plane with me. I also don't do private. I don't do open train cars for the same reason. I don't do buses okay. for the same reason. Like I call it hypochondria thing. I call it hype. I call it hyperchondria. It's for people who have mm-hmm. severe mm-hmm. chronic illness where little things mm-hmm. that get them oh. sick, they become hypochondriacs, but big things that almost That's kill them. Fear, they're though. like, I'm not going to the hospital. I, I think that if you've got a chronic illness, it becomes like less of a, like, it becomes like a legit, actual, reasonable thing to be concerned about, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. I think you're, you got reason, you know? Yeah. The last time I had uh, an immune system, you hadn't been born yet. Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> uh, Mike yeah, Buccelli, I wouldn't risk it, man. I don't even know how old you are. I just said that. It's just words. Mike Buccelli says, I'm currently fascinated with Robert Sapolsky. Are there any thinkers who disagree with him? I like to read thinkers who disagree so I can evaluate arguments and help point out flaws I don't see. Mm. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, there, there are some people out there I've heard some some negative opinions. Um, and there's a couple of studies that he's he's quoted in his classes or whatever, or in, in his books, and people are like, ah, this study isn't it has these flaws, and he's kind of taking it in this way, and I don't like it. Um, I've never heard anybody just say, this guy's fucking full of shit. I've heard some, some, which is some academic discourse around the interpretation of certain things that he has read, and like, and that's, but that's standard template. Um, I would say I recently had a a, a guy. He's a, a neuroscience PhD student um, who was on Twitter trying to debunk some stuff that I was saying, and I sent him a clip of Robert Sapolsky saying the exact same thing I was saying, and that's exactly what he came. He's like the studies that he's citing doesn't account yeah. for this confounding factor, and therefore I don't buy it, and therefore I think he's wrong, and that's fine. That's how science works is like, hey, 
here's this study that says this thing. I don't take it the same way out of there. And the people who wrote the study aren't going to fucking tell you. That, <laughs> so like, it's just, that's just how it is. You know what I mean? Um, so I yeah, there are definitely people you can look about him there. on beard care. <laughs> he's got a lot. He's got a nice beard. And he's not I'll, he's, I'll he's, 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 his beard doesn't have structure or reason to it either. It, it does not. His beard fails no. a lot of smell tests that you expect it, more out of researchers. If I was gonna have a beard, that's that's probably the beard I would have. That's actually, you the, know what? His beard every reminds direction. me. One of the ways that I knew I was going to marry Amber, actually, was one day. I was like, babe, you know I'm going to have to have like a wizard's beard someday. Just someday I'm going to grow old and I'm just going to grow a big old fucking wizard's beard. And she was just didn't even blink. She was like, I know, babe. Of course. Of course. Well, like, I know you. Bushy you beard. I was like, I was like you're perfect for me. You know. You understand like, me right. here. <laughs> Does anyone know um, the quote? Okay. She gets me here Hold and on. here and here. So both Sapolsky stuff, love the guy. He focuses a lot on baboons because that's what he, you know, spent his whole life observing. So if you want kind of a an alternative mm -hmm. opinion on human society, uh, Franz DeWall and Richard Wrangham are both great for that because they study um, bonobos and chimpanzees respectively. You can also look at Diane Fossey's stuff with regard to gorillas um, and uh, Viru Galdicus' stuff with regard to orangutans if you want alternative perspectives on why humans are the way that they are. Um, I think they're all a little right for what it's worth. <laughs> I want to see if Eric can friends, really Wall, watch. Check this out. I found this yeah. at the used bookstore. Hell yeah. This one's from awesome. like 89. So it's a little pretty, pretty outdated. But like, I just well, love. There's, there's so many good anecdotes in any Friends the Wall book. Like, that's really what I read them for. Is like, he talks about these, these bonobos and chimps that he spent his life with. And he tells you these cool little anecdotes. You feel like you get to know them. So I like it. Uh, Nick yeah, yeah. says, hey, Forrest and Erica, I figured this would be fun. What do you all think about convergent evolution between planets in the book Project Hail Mary? It won't be fun because I have no idea what that is. That you can't ask such a highly like, hey, I just gave you five dollars. Can you quickly read that whole book and tell me what you think? Man, that's too specific a question. That's the guy that wrote I'm the Martian. Cool. That's the guy that wrote The Martian. So, like, to that point, like, convergent evolution between planets, sure, why not? Like, why wouldn't you expect more robust organisms to develop in environments that have, like, greater gravity, for example, right? Like, mm. I don't think it's that far-fetched. How convergent? I have no idea, because as far as we know, we have a sample size of one, one yeah, planet with life on it. I feel you could also somewhat look at, at the evolution of our planet through massive things that change, like... We don't have yeah. we don't have fucking dragonflies the size of cars anymore because the world was basically an unrecognizable world. I think Forrest I mean, and I yeah. talked about I was that just talking about how I I just was talking about how much Amber was perfect for me because she knew I was gonna have a beard and she brought me some pineapples and some gushers and oh my God. a cranberry want, juice and a pineapple juice. Do you, I don't oh, know if you've noticed this happen. Really, your teeth. Uh, I don't That's know if gonna you, give you so much. Oh, yeah. You can use mouth. You just brush them, wash them. Uh, Forrest, are you aware I, there's that there's another gusher stand in the room? Are you aware that years ago we were that watermelon gushers were taken away from us? They're gone. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, I, didn't I didn't know that. I stopped eating you know gushers I for a while. About, I was thinking about cherry orange wildfire fruit by the foots like two oh days God, ago. Yeah. You guys remember those? Hell yeah! Those, that, that, that was so good. Okay. I loved those. I just, I still love candy. Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't lie. Uh, DeWitt said, dismiss the German caller too glibly. Just look at the interesting discussion that followed from two amazing biologists. I don't even remember the German caller. Who was that? That was the one with the, the juice of the you know, word glibly though. The juice. Yeah. The juice. What about the juice? The juice, dude. It was the juice. The juice or the, the juice? juice? The juice. The juice, the juice. A the German juice. called about the Jews. Did it go okay? Was I gone? No, I'm not. I'm not. Someone in chat, tell us. What are we saying? No idea. I have no idea. I don't the remember. German what called about. I don't remember anybody. Guys, it was the the the, the vaginal lubrication. Let's oh, call it that. Oh, the wet. The yeah, juice. Yeah. The juice. The juice. The you could have said the pussy juice. juice. I don't yeah, know dude, what you meant. But come on. No. <laughs> so you gotta give me a little slip. I thought you were saying a German was talking about the Jews. 
The juice. The that juice. is exactly what I thought you were saying. I was like, we had a Jew making, German call. That doesn't go well usually. I was making a tipping motion with my with my fingers. I was like, the tipping the juice. I thought it was a little Heil Hitler. Yeah, to yeah, tell you yeah the I truth. know that. I yes. thought you were you Heil. That's exactly what helps clear it up. You know, you guys the vagina. Remember who he was talking about? <laughs> the vagina. That's yeah. what this means. The, the vagina. The juice. <laughs> Uh, it occurs to me juice. that I said you should have said pussy juice, and I doubt you've ever said that out loud on camera <laughs> ever anywhere. I feel like maybe you go yeah. into your bathroom, you make sure nobody else is there, you like put a bunch of towels up for sound cancellation, and you just whisper pussy juice to yourself because you just won't say it out loud. Well, I just I just whisper all my expletives in the shower so no one uh, hears them over the cascades of water. Like Peggy. I actually never watched much of uh, uh, King of the Hill, but there's that episode where she's like trying. Dude, King, to... of the, King of the Hill is a sleeper. It's a sleeper. It's actually quite good. Um, I, I was a doubter, but then I watched and it's actually very funny. I just like the one where she's trying to get herself to be able to say penis. So she's doing there. Yeah. Happiness. Happiness. Whoa. Happiness. Ha. Penis. And then it's like the it moves the scene to outside and you just see her scream vagina. Vagina! <laughs> well, I mean, I'm so propane. Do I look like I know what a JPEG is? Propane. <laughs> Damn it, Bobby. Uh, Damn ja it, Bobby. Jazz Spoken J says at real Jimmy and hashtag AI Jimmy, go fuck yourself. That took me a second Ooh. to understand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are y'all <laughs> are muds? Are y'all stopping people from writing pussy juice in the chat? <laughs> We got like five pussy juice things that just say this has been removed by <laughs> you can they can say pussy juice. Just what just throw doing? up one of these. This they is it right here. They shouldn't ask about any individual person's pussy juice, but pussy juice is fine. And then somebody just remember, y'all. Someone just chatted, don't drop him. I think uh I think you might be a couple hours behind and still on a call right now. Oh, if you're no, if man. you're in the chat right now, it's all about whose vaginal secretions you're discussing. If it's just <laughs> like if you're using the royal you, that's yeah. okay. You know what I mean? That's fine. Y'all can talk about specific. my bussy juice. The capital J, the juice TM. Yeah, Jim, and apparently Jimmy with Snow Erica, serving also up that EWS on the nightly basis. <laughs> but. I said, and according to Erica, after the capital J is in the capital E W S. Jeez, Erica. Uh, the Raven Dude, I, was to talk, I, know. I don't know how many times I told you. Oh, to, to imagine that I'm holding a carton and there's an apple on the front. That's what I'm talking about. The juice. The juice. I'd have grabbed my cheek and done this. That would have yes. gotten this. Gross. <laughs> it's funnier because I'm not on air. <laughs> how do I tell hey, AI hey, to make Don't that forget sound? that you're live, Jimmy. I'd like to remind, remember we're live. Do it. Fucking come over to my house. That, let's get real live, buddy. Uh, Raven 200 <laughs> says, yes, officer, this is the stream I was telling you about. Yes, it started with tomatoes, and now they're talking about manatee lady parts. No, I didn't have spray paint. Hello? Hello? Officer? If yeah. if Richard Rangham can put it in a book, I can talk about it on YouTube. Yeah. A tremendous $100 from Jabari Dia. Oh, wow. I keep hearing that black people, African Geno phenotypes, were among the first inhabitants of the Americas, Eastern Europe, and East Asia, including the Japanese Ainu uh, people, maybe. Uh, I disagree, I especially when migration by northern routes was involved. Any evidence? Thanks. Hmm. You've asked three white um, people. Well, two. No one asked me. Af Af African Geno and phenotypes um, would have been the first people. And yeah. so everything migrating out of there. Yeah. And so like, you have, like, for example, in, um, in England, we have Cheddar Man, who we can tell by ancient DNA, this is a person who had dark skin and also blue eyes. And so, mm -hmm. like, you see things like that quite a bit. Um, it would have made sense that for the time that it took people to migrate out of Africa across Europe and Asia versus the time it would have taken for lighter skin colorations to evolve, big discrepancy. And so, like, yeah, they would have been dark skinned people traveling around and then changing over time from there. Um, it's important because, uh, to make the distinction, because a lot of times when you look at like reconstructions, like, um, digital images or like whatever of, of like human evolution, um, they also tend to make them white 
as they go along. And then they make like white people, like the most evolved looking people. Um, and that just, just no homo sapiens were black and then they became white later and everything like that's yeah. I am Again, so race is explained by evolution, not by actual what races are or what people think they are. Hey, Chad, I'm, a so I'm, I'm good with you all saying real quick. Sorry, but Chad, you all can say pussy juice, but let's not start experimenting with which phrases, including Jews, you can use. No, <laughs> just pussy juice. That's it. That's I don't want to see anymore. Anyway, go on, Erica. So the um, the the chatter here is asking for evidence, right? So like what Force is talking about with this this grand exodus from, you know, out of Africa, uh, around 60 to 70,000 years ago has quite a bit of support for it. So one is the fact that we see a nested hierarchy, phylogenetically speaking, amongst all humans today. Everybody nests into the group that is in sub-Saharan Africa. I believe it's like the L group. Uh, secondarily, you have linkage disequilibrium. Um, you know, tertiarily, you have the uh, homozygosity levels. So people are more homozygous or more quote unquote inbred outside of Africa than they are within Africa. And then lastly is genetic diversity, which is higher in sub-Saharan Africa than it is anywhere else in the world, right? So like an individual from Northern Africa, like straight up from Ethiopia versus from sub-Saharan Africa, these two are going to be more different from one another, genetically speaking, than someone from Ethiopia is to someone from Japan. That's what we're talking about here as far as the levels of genetic diversity go from sub-Saharan Africa extended elsewhere. Um, so the, the, the point of the matter is, like, I will say, I think as far as, like, we're talking when, I guess when they're thinking of, like, African-American or, I guess, Black, really, they're, they're talking more like um, Native African individuals. Those skin tones are going to be more prevalent kind of early on as we move into the North, like uh, Forrest mentioned with Cheddarman. By the time you're reaching like 12,000 years ago, it's going to be more like a, a general, like darker skin tone, like the, the classic brown skins that you see in um, South America, Central America, and in indigenous folks in um, North America, extending all the way down into Argentina. Um, so yeah, like, <laughs> I mean, if we're getting, we get right down to it. Like everybody's pretty brown brass tax wise, unless you're living in like pretty northerly Europe. The level of brown is going to differ depending on your latitude. Boy, isn't that crazy that the darkness of your skin is actually dependent on where you live in relation to the relative amounts of UV that you're getting. But as I said, again, Forrest is right. Initially, everybody's going to be pretty dark skinned because we all evolved in effectively the same place. So only like 50 to go. Uh, yes. Johnny says, was Tarzan safe from Hold being on, a baby I've got, daddy? I put a thing in the chat as well. Uh, because I did a reactoria about creationism in science class. It's a clip from this show with this creationist science teacher telling his students that, like, I'm trying to give evolution a fair shake. I don't know. Um, and near the end of this video, I show um, what, what Erica was just talking about, about, like, your geographic, you know, where you live has a big part of, like, what you look like. Um, and so I put up on the screen a picture of... UV saturation on the surface of the earth next to a pick a map of, of human skin color distribution. And they're the same fucking map. And so like, there's something you can track with that. Um, and if you really want, you can read up on this Tarzan question. Oh my God. God. I think it's Nina Jablons, Jablonski. I think Nina Jablonski. Oh, She's oh, the one Tarzan. who did the, the testing. She would, Take a little little uh, a sample of uh, under their arms. You'd put a little gun there and test the the uh, absorbency or reflective reflectivity or whatever of the melanin in their skin, um, and track heritage and everything like that. And she's the one who like <laughs> really revolutionized this idea because for a long time we were like, oh yeah, well, <laughs> oh dark God, skin Forrest. coloration evolved because <laughs> just call, wait, you you wait a second, going? all right, Why wait a second, oh my God. because it's fucking cool. Because a long time ago, we were like, dark skin coloration long evolved long to protect you from skin cancer, but skin cancer doesn't strike until way after reproductive age. And so now we were like, oh, actually, it has more to do with folic acid. And that's pretty cool. And if you want to know more about it, you can read I love Race, I love Are We so Really much. So Different? A uh, second edition textbook uh, by, it's published through the American <laughs> Anthropological Association. It's a great little book. Now I'm done, you impatient oh, you're good, fuck. Man. I love you. I love you so much. You're good. Hey, it wanted... with this to me because I, I I know this question. I know this. I've seen this question. I want to. I just am dying to answer this question. Was Tarzan safe from being a baby daddy? If he, I assume this was meant to say slap cheeks or smush cheeks. No or beat, beat cheeks. dude. Beat, beat cheeks. Him. Okay, beat cheeks with mm -hmm. gorilla because of Zona Puyicida. Puyicida. Uh, Zona Pelucida. Oh fuck God. Pelucida. 
all said pollicula. Jesus, zona pellucida. <laughs> it's the, it the outer coating too. of. Yeah, dude. Is it yeah. really pronounced pellucida, or is that the American way? No, that that's yeah, that's, that's how, how I learned it. Um, but it might be the American it. way. Mm-hmm. I, that's how I learned it. But yeah, dude, zo- be safe. Uh, the zo- it, it's basically a gate checker for um for um egg or for sperm for an egg. So the egg is basically like, mm-hmm. is this an appropriate species to let into our our inner sanctum here? And then if it is, then it'll allow the sperm to, to effectively cross the barrier um, and fertilize the egg. Yep. The zona pellucida, as far as I'm aware, is the only reason why humans cannot uh, reproduce with other great apes and why other great apes can't reproduce with one another, like why a chimp can't reproduce with a gorilla and create a hybrid. So when um, you hear of geneticists creating like chimeras, well, as far as are they humans. basically just disabling the zona pellucida? Well, they're in vitro fertilizing. So they, yep. they, they literally take the syringe and go past they the zona pellucida through. with the sperm, yeah. like just go right through, like they bypass Terrifying. it. And this is what yeah. you actually see in, in other in vitro fertilization that's, that takes place normally as well. Yeah. Yeah, this is the zona pellucida is this outer, it's like a, a sort of like a, I like to think of it almost like a bacterial capsule, this outer uh, squish coating around an egg cell. And it's what it facilitates the acrosome reaction where you can bond. But like, also it's important to remember that there are, pre-zygotic and post-zygotic barriers. So a pre-zygotic yes. barrier would be that zona pellucida. It would also be mechanical isolation, temporal isolation, things not fitting together properly yeah. or them not being whatever. But even post-zygotic barriers, where even if you were to fertilize this egg, if you have a different number of chromosomes, you're still not going to have a viable you know, a zygote, and so you're still going to have problems. So it's like, there's more to why we can't reproduce with them, but that is definitely a big one for sure. Yeah. Ye- uh, what is this? Nitsa Trap says Forrest tells sure. dad jokes but has no kids. I think that makes him a faux pa. Love you both. Jimmy, go fuck yourself. Very nice. Hey, uh, what's the difference between me and cancer? Uh, what? My Your dad, dad didn't never beat cancer. cancer. Oh my God, I knew it as you were saying it. <laughs> <laughs> Too good. Dante Verona says, viewer of the viewers of the line should have the sad part is both of us aren't making that joke just in jest. Anyway, Dante <laughs> Verona says, viewers of the line should definitely watch the new video from Forest, the land before dinosaurs, about the Permian period. Hey. Truly fascinating stuff. Hey Forrest, exemplary, dig it. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. That's very kind of you. And yes, everybody listen to this guy. Leave Lee says. For all those playing the book drinking game, Van, you can you each suggest, can you each suggest five new books? Thanks. We've already had so many. Uh, quick, five new books. Um, those books. ones. Uh, I don't know. Any, like, okay, so. Erica, this is a really five good cell biology. We got to okay. pick five new books for the drinking game to make everybody drunk. <laughs> Okay. This is essential cell biology. Um, it's got a great. It's it's. This was my undergrad cell biology. I think when it's five each, probably one. titles only. There for us. <laughs> okay, I gotta get five books. I don't know, man. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to look for like interesting ones that yeah. I haven't done before. Yeah. Um. Oh, here's a good one. The Hot Zone. The story oh. of Ebola. That one's pretty tight. That uh, yeah. By Richard Preston. I've actually I read, read that about Ebola, but not that specific book. I might, I might pick that one up. Love and Math, The Heart of Hidden Reality by Edward uh, Frankel is a, a, a sweet little biopic uh, a story about this guy and mathematics and, and racism and all sorts of cool stuff. I, I liked this one. It's, it's a page turner. I never finished it, but it's really good. Um, also, oh my God. How many was that? Was that three? Uh, no, that's seven. You're up to seven. Mortality by Christopher Hitchens. Great little read about dying and his thoughts on it while he was doing it. Yeah. Speaking of, we're about to launch uh, Dying Out Loud with Dave Warnock, May 16th. Don't miss it. Oh, yeah. Uh, new show every week. Uh, one more there, buddy. The Book of Mormon. Plows, plagues, and petroleums, how humans took control of the climate. Um, I had to use this one for a book called uh, Humans as Environmental Engineers, a book, a class, a class yeah. called Humans as Environmental Engineers, talked about climate change and human relationship with uh, their environment um, and human environmental interactions um, and human ecology. And this was a cool one. So check that out. 
Yeah, and and now Erica, if you'll do your five, knowing that there are forty eight super chats left. You got it, dude. Okay, Robert Sapolsky's nice behave. Really cool, really cool look at uh, the biology of humans at our best and worst. Looks at endocrinology and primatology and things of that nature. Yeah, Forrest recommends. He's in. Uh, number two, Love this it. is actually a personal favorite of mine. One of my favorite books I've ever read for reasons I can't quite articulate. The Ends of the World by Peter Brannon. It's about the top five mass extinctions impacting um, the, the geologic column and how perhaps that influences where we're at today. Great. The Death of Expertise by Tom Nichols. It's on uh, expertise and why it matters and where we all like sort of um, fit into our own niche and where we rely on others as humans. Uh, this is a recent one I read that I also really enjoyed, The Rise and Reign of Mammals by uh, Steve Bursette. Um, Really good. He wrote The Rise and Reign of Dinosaurs. It's a good look at mammals. And it turns out mammals are super diverse and were super diverse even before the dinosaurs went extinct, which I didn't know until I read this book, which I really enjoyed. Uh, and the last one, one of my more recent reads, is uh, Bitch on the Female of the Species by Lucy Cook. Uh, she takes a really interesting look at um, sexual dimorphism, sexual selection, female mate choice, and things of that nature um, from the perspective of the females. Um, looks at spotted hyenas, bonobos, things of that nature. And I kind of looked at this and I was like, how good is it going to be really? But it actually pulls a lot from uh, the Hurdies, from um, uh, who else is in this? From That's all right. We'll believe you. Uh, and that book is not Minnesota. about, that book's not about the caller, David? No. <laughs> No, no, <laughs> no. Cooler leave, I th that. leave Lee. I think you owe us like three more super chats minimum, but do not ask for more recommendations. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Anyway, all of Raven those are now on my Amazon list. Hell yeah. They're all really good. Can recommend. Raven 200. They're probably on his bookshelf too. And he just doesn't remember. Anyway, Raven 200 says, I occasionally use chat. G I think you mean GPT to just see how much ridiculous stuff I can make it right. I was able to make it right. Some decent smut jimmy go get into a sword fight with upper moon one kokushibo i will do that michael garcia says hey, i don't that reference i don't either hey you both it's probably anime fucking weebs i'm just kidding i love you raven uh michael garcia says hey you both love you gut sick and forest bro i got a tiktok because of you now i have to answer yes to my students questions if i have one what are your thoughts on e evolution evo life if you could reset earth Thoughts like if you could engineer um, it, I don't know. I, I, so I, I hear this quite a bit sometimes. I think, I think what he's asking is something that I've heard a few times where it's that, um, if you were to wipe out all life on earth and just hit the reset button right now, would life evolve the exact same way? Will we have the same trajectory? And the answer is no. Um, because a no, lot of not. our evolutionary trajectory now is guided by things like mass extinctions and other freak events that aren't going to just repeat the same way they were the Permian. You know what I mean? We were on a totally different trajectory. And then the Mesozoic, we were on a totally different trajectory. And so like all these mass extinctions that Erica was talking about in that, that book, The Ends of the World, every one of those was effectively a large reset button that changed things a lot. Um, and without those there, we would have been in a totally different thing. Um, you literally, that's a you video literally that I want to make, by the way. Dude, you literally wouldn't have gotten the mammals of the entire Cenozoic without the KPG. You wouldn't have gotten the dinosaurs without yeah. the end Permian. You wouldn't have gotten the tetrapods without the Devonian, right? Like all of these mass extinctions mm -hmm. set the stage because they soft reset the entire ecosystem and everything yep. that was like a long shot generalist who was just kind of like puddling around in the background <clears> suddenly <throat> has a chance to, to expand out into all these new niches, which is so cool. Nah. Sorry, Are you familiar no. with, and what is your... <laughs> are you familiar with and if so what is your thoughts on um the uh uh, uh, uh fungal infection mammalian selection hypothesis Ooh. talk about it after the show you smut peddlers okay okay put it, we'll put a pin in it we'll put a pin in it Slag but but somebody donate ten dollars and oh ask about why mushrooms are responsible for for us conquering the world why mushrooms and kill the dinosaurs six, and i will make $10. a six course meal while uh while while forest oh, answers will. I'm, I'm monitoring i'll explain it yeah slackback says i love your long form videos erica i hope you have will have time to continue to create them oh yes i'm very long-winded slackback don't worry about that i just have to find the time to sit down and uh, talk at the camera for a while they're not gone they're just on hold for right now while i freaking take my comps but then we're back Tess N says, Erica and Forrest, I can't get enough of you. You said before that it's hard to distinguish humans from other animals. What about art? Jimmy, fuck yourself very much. 
We're not the only species to make art. I was going to say, we're not the only species of hominid to make art. So, like, it's it depends on what you mean by human. If you mean anything in the genus Homo, I guess a little bit. But even then, there are weird behaviors that you would have a hard time saying for sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, e- even then, I would propose that art is effectively just um, symbolism manifested physically. And, like, we, we know that other animals can under, uh, specifically other primates, can understand a degree of symbolism. So, again, it's like, is this a difference of category or is it a difference of degree? Because I would absolutely agree the types of art that humans do, a lot of things that humans do are really weird and dialed up, like, breaking the entire machine to the level that we're taking it. Uh, but no the question is... painting elephants? The fuck? No one cares yeah, the about them. Cool. They're guided to it, though, right? Like, are, are they doing it in the wild? Right. Maybe. Are humans? No. Like are it. humans not guided to it? Also, Erica. Today we are. Hey, today we are. Were I'm we sure, initially? Sure, in, in the, sure. There was a the first skull. one. Right, there was a first one, but everybody since then, and you know, elephants. There's they're, been some very prominent elephant cats. artists. They're all copycats. <laughs> the first artist was actually an elephant, believe it or not. That's right. <laughs> Uh, from Malcolm 1366 is the uncanny valley, uncanny valley peculiar to homo sapiens could have arisen from competition with other human species Do other animals seem to have it. I have no idea if other animals have it. Absolutely no idea. But the uncanny valley is, is so interesting. And I think it absolutely has roots. I cannot prove this, but I think it's perfectly reasonable to suggest that this thing has roots in the fact that humans were contemporaneous. So living at the same time and in the same place as numerous other hominid species and have been, our lineage has been for millions of years. It makes absolutely perfect sense to me that we would have a sort of natural avoidance towards things that look kind of like us, but aren't quite there because it's a reproductive barrier and it's a waste of time. Imagine if you see freaking Paranthropus boisei on the horizon, <laughs> your your horny primate brain needs something to tell it. Absolutely not. And I think that that's the uncanny valley. Um, again, I, I like, can't prove it, but I think- got some thick jaw bones. Hell this, yeah. You're like, oh, the psychomatic. The sagittal crest, I'm into it. I like it. And and you need something to say no. Stop There's a it. significant do problem that. with your hypothesis. Are you ready for me to debunk it? Is it, it? furries? Are you going to tell me it's furries, no, Jimmy? not at all. Not at all. Your hypothesis is, is anchored to this concept of the sexual barrier. And yet, even when a human meets another a robot or whatever, and they get that unsettled feeling, they still clearly, after meeting the robot, go, this, per- this thing's unsettling, but I wonder if I could fuck it. So there's never forget, never forget that we talked about the paper where the guys fucked all those manatees to prove that they were the most human like. Right. I mean, we're, we're right. you know I mean? there's Axe. the, the Axe. you want to bring Axe. sex into this? There's nothing Axe. stopping anyone from fuck. Like we, the thing that stops people from fucking chimps is the wall at the zoo. That's no, dude. It, it's not just the wall clip of the zoo. That. It's if anybody's gonna make a the... clip of anything, clip I'm, that. I'm not saying I would do it. I'm saying if you took the wall down every day, there'd be a new story of chimps getting fucked at this, and then that oh, person dude, subsequently I, dying. Dude, I was gonna say absolutely not because the second someone went in there and got their face ripped off by an angry, angry Pantrogodites veras, it's game over, and then everybody learns yeah. <laughs> except for the one, the, the the handful of 4chan users who are like, it's worth it, and then they still cross the barrier. I wish that was all. Like fucking chimps, chimps before you die go for the things that you want to keep the most. They will tear your dick off and then your hands off and then your they- eyes ears, tongue, they, they, they take it all. They, they, they seem to want to humiliate and emasculate you. Well, um, um people are into that. Friends, friends, so friends, so wall has this really interesting anecdote again in, in several of his books where he talks about, uh, again, he's at the York station. He's got these three male chimpanzees and they're all housed in the same general area. One is the alpha. Uh, he's in charge of the troop and the other are two sort of lower ranking males in their hierarchy. And one day they, they show up in the morning. And the male who was previously the alpha male is like absolutely destroyed, right? Like he's busted up, he's bleeding. And when they took him into the veterinarian, they found that he had no testicles. His testicles had been popped like grapes. And what had happened was the other- This isn't me speeding you along. This is, I don't wanna, that's, it's fine. No, dude, the the other two males had Mm -hmm. just ganged up against him. Like they they straight up formed a coalition and ganged up against him. So it happened. Erica, as a testicle haver, let's just move on. 
<laughs> you don't want to know the details. Stop being so descript. Pop like grapes did not make me feel good. It it did not I it did not alien. elicit joy. Anyway, Emery King says, can I call myself an atheist if my Lord and Savior is Carl, Carl Sagan? Uh, no, if, if you think he's literally God. But for his, I, I know it's a joke. For his science, enthusiasm matches that of Sagan. And that's what I love about him as a fellow science educator. Thank you both. I think you're wrong. I think Forrest loves science much more. <laughs> Carl Sagan <laughs> was like, Carl Sagan was like, a consistent science booty call, maybe occasional boyfriend. Forrest put a <laughs> ring on it. He put a ring on it. I believe that. In all, in all fairness, in all fairness, Carl Sagan was a better scientist than I will ever be. Maybe. I don't know. You know I don't see why that has to be true. Ten Australian dollars from Adam D. I love when the dynamic duo is on and I can arrive two hours after the stream start time and still be early. Go Forrest and Erica. What was it recently? Do we really do we really go that much later than everybody else for us? Yes, by at least double. The average oh, show doesn't yeah. hit. Yeah. Yeah. No, Almost. no, no complaints at all. No, I like it. I these I are, these are fun nights for me. Dream. These are fun nights until <laughs> suddenly at some <laughs> after some amount of hours, my brain suddenly goes, I'm done. And then it's less fun. But I this is like this is the closest to a social thing I'll do this month. Right. Dude, so, I thought I thought you were gonna say I thought you were gonna say at some point my mind kind of goes blank and then I realized we're halfway done and I was like, <laughs> Oh no, I'm good right now. I, I'm having a fun time. Uh, Lena uh, Lena says, Hey, Forrest and Erica, I wanted to call in, but I drive most of the show. Question: Do you think abiogenesis is impossible when life already exists? Since life would probably use all available resources. That, that pretty much is what? the reason why, you know, people say, why don't we see life popping up right now? Because you need an environment that is super rich in nutrients and also like oh. ideal for like the formation of it. Like bacteria are going to gobble that shit up like that. But, so like if you had a completely that means sterile that environment. Still is with more. All that, in the scenario you just gave, that just means a biogenesis happens. Not that it's impossible. It actually would happen a ton. It just gets eaten. Right. Well, I'm saying the the parts that make the life, the nutrients needed to come together to form living tissue, oh. those would be gobbled up. You're not saying the new yeah. things would be gobbled up. No, yeah, no, no, my, just my all the goodness, all the goodness that's, that makes that's it. That's a hypothesis out there. Also, that it may happen often and it immediately gets eaten because where it would pop. But these up are all hypotheticals, and we can't, yeah. we can't, my, we can't talk about hypotheticals my, because Islam exists. That's right. Yeah, true, true, true. Yeah, true, true. That's a really good point. Yeah, that's that's a good point for us. Sorry, I, what was I thinking? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. Um, yeah, there's so, the thing about abiogenesis is that, as far as I understand it, it's not proposed at present to be like a there's no life now there's life, right? It, instead, it's it's sort of like a multi stage process where where um, inorganic chemicals are effectively self organizing in various different substrates, um, and occasionally through wet dry cycles and things of that nature. Um, with that in mind. It's not so much that the life itself is getting gobbled up by bacteria and things of, you know, of similar um, attributes. It's it's more like the precursors are getting gobbled up before they can further self-organize. It's something that would take quite a bit longer than these organisms would have. I mean, you would need like a, a completely sterile environment that is at the same time changing and rich in organic nutrients that aren't themselves alive. Right, like it, it, this is a balance that can effectively only happen once because life is a plague in the best of ways, right? Like the second life shows up, it's everywhere. It is absolutely everywhere. And that's awesome, I think it's great. But it, what it means is that you're not going to find environments that are suitable for abiogenesis that aren't already colonized with life. Um, so not impossible, just quite, quite, quite. Right. Yeah, well, there's um, also the, you'd also have the philosophical discussion of when then what is a biogenesis? Is it the successful completion of an event, or would yeah, you call life, the beginning right? of a biogenesis, which would still be something that for our origin, for the purpose of discovering our origin, I think we are we are most in, interested in that first moment of a biogenesis. But when thinking about right, other events, life? it'd be the completion of the event, probably. Where does it start? Yeah, I think that's fair. I think that's fair enough. Yeah. 
now I'm just going to start making random sounds while I remember to do my <laughs> job. Uh, I think I didn't even read the last one, did I? Oh, no, I did. Yeah, yeah, good. Uh, 18 Ms. Ms. Mechanical yeah. says, Forrest, what are... Th no! No! What are three books no, just off the top of your head that you think everyone should read? Love what you all do. Forrest, help me punish them by recommending three books that are part of the five books you already recommended. Nope. Uh, so God. here's Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer. So I literally have a box of like a, like two dozen copies of this right now because I'm sending these to my uh, book buddies on Patreon. Um, if you're in the book club buddy tier, you'll be getting one of those pretty soon. Um, that's one that everybody should read because it's really fucking cool. Um, everybody should read... Um, man, I, I really like The Dawn of Everything. Really like this one. As it calls into question, um, it's it's an anarchist take on early human history and a bunch of other shit. It's a thick bitch, but it's really fucking cool. I have not made it all the way through this guy, but I've I've I've, I've poked around in it quite a bit, and I I've yet to not love this fucking book. I love it so much. It's uh, constantly great. So that's one that people should check out. Um, and then also, um, a brief history of time by uh, by uh, Stephen Hawking. That was the book that got me excited about science when I'm like in my early twenties, and I was like not confident. Um, and in, in my ability to do this kind of shit. And I read that and I was like, I want to do this forever. That's what I want to do for a living. And like this, it was my dream anyway, to be a science communicator. That book really like kind of sent me over the edge and made me like, yes. So you, you check that out. I don't understand this next one. $5 from elect base, elect base hundred wood says, Jimmy, I chew your food for you in lieu of your teeth. Also my guess as to the toothless survival thoughts, go fuck yourself, Joel. I don't know what that means. What? I think she's talking about the toothless Demonisi Homo erectus saying they, they chew the food for him and then like regurgitate it into his mouth like a bird mother. Okay, good enough. We're going to consider that the answer. So Savage <laughs> says, Forrest and Erica are the best two science creators that on this here internet that are, I think maybe that are oh, on this here you. internet. From a future anthropologist, thank you for all oh, you do. Lovely. That's great to hear. Hell yeah. Best of luck to you in your, in your depending studies. On, depending on where you are in your anthropological studies, um, oh, no, check no, out. Only if they ask. Only Our if they ask. Origins by only Clark Spencer ask. Larson. Yeah. It's a, I'm doing? trying to get the audience shit-faced. This is a great little textbook. Dead. Introductory bioanthro. Teach you all sorts of cool this, things. Good it's stuff. It's not great graphics. It, I said they were they were, um, they were uh, hucking that at the ABAs, and I was glad to see it because it's quite good. Northern Spike says, chat about the If you're not into bones. bioanthro, pick up this anthropology book by uh, is Oxford University Press. And this has got all four fields of anthropology. If you're here in America, there's oh, four fields of anthropology. And uh, it's a little introduction to all four of them. Not North into bio if you're, No. If you're like no, one no, of those no. nerds that wants to get into fucking uh, cultural anthropology, you can learn mm -hmm. a little bit about it. Uh, bioanth Northern is the best one. Be into bioanth. <laughs> Northern Spike says, chat about Agreed. the bones Agreed. in our lineage. JK, one minute chat. I don't know what, I don't get that either. Are you trying to give a, a like a. Dude, I'm, I'm soy jacking over here. Or for real, chat about the bones in our lineage. Of course, what's your favorite bone in our lineage? The the, the coolest one that's changed. What, what do you think? <laughs> your dad's bone was essential for your lineage. It's all I wanted uh, to say to that chat. Yeah. That's all I could think of. Um, yeah. no, man, if I had to, if I was actually talking about this, um, fuck bro. I think the coolest thing is the face. And I know that's like the <laughs> whole thing about looking at paleoanth, but like, honestly, seeing how our faces get smaller and smaller and less prognathic and our teeth get more reduced and like all that, like, it's such a fucking like wild experience just to like glaze over like all these fucking things and see this like blah, 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 turning human. Um, it's so fucking cool. That's I'm also cool. like, that's just what I hook on to when I look at, you know what I mean? When I look into people, I'm like, I'm interested in their faces. So yeah. Mm, like that. So like I would that. say if I had to pick I'm one, good. zygomatic arches, zygomatic arches, I think are the most substantial changing features of faces over the past 2 million years. They, they probably are. If we're including dentition, my interest is the canines. I think the, the reduction of the canine teeth is super interesting. I think it's weird that it, they get small and they stay small, but if we can include entire complexes, the pelvis, the trade-off between bipedality and the obstetric constraints that go along with giving birth to big-headed babies is 
very interesting mm -hmm. trade-off and it's extra fascinating because it impacts females obviously but there's a correlated response right. the male pelvis has to change somewhat in turn which is a, a weird reaction that you see where there's pressure on one group no, wow. the other changes they're kind of yeah, they're pulled along with it i like it considering the deviancy of our chat i have a feeling they were hoping you were going to say metatarsals but we'll move on yeah true true <laughs> Bill Dozer says, love you both. I always learn so much during your streams. What do you know about Luca? Any idea what it would have looked like? I assume, I'm assuming it would have been in the ocean. The last universal. Almost certainly in the ocean. Yeah. yeah. If it's the last Yo, universal Luca. common ancestor, we're talking about a little, a little tiny microorganism that looks like a little orb with, with goo in it. And that's your grandpa. $20 from James Pretty much, yeah. Atheists be like, go grip. <laughs> I kind of am just a goo orb, though. So there's that. Uh, $4.99 from the Raven orb, 200. Fly high, my black eagle. I don't know the song you're referencing. So let golden wings bind our eyes. May our mind and heart's blood unite. Aww, go beautiful. fuck yourself, Jimmy. What's that? I said beautiful. Thank you. Joe White says, do either of you eat calamari? And if not, is it an intelligence-based decision, not a vegetarian? Just curious. Hashtag Team Tim a Tomato Bisque. Team nice. Team a Tomato Bisque? I don't know. I don't I don't eat any seafood, period, and it has nothing to do with intelligence. Um, so I, I'm I do allergic eat calamari to, because it's good. I'm allergic to shellfish, but I've eaten calamari. And every time I've had calamari, which is not that many times, the, the topic does come up on intelligence and do we consume something that's intelligent? Here's, here's where I draw the line. And maybe this is like, maybe this is just me. But to me, it's fine to kill and eat something that's intelligent as long as you're not farming it and like systematically factory farming it in the sense that it's like these big, massive slaughterhouse factories where their their origin to their death is nothing but suffering for an intelligent being i think that that's pretty abhorrent um that being said i also don't think humans are naturally meant to be vegetarian um we we are from you know the, from a health standpoint are we're supposed to have not that much certainly not as much as americans eat but we are supposed to have some animal products in our diet I think you can accomplish it with supplements, but not everybody has access, access to supplements, which I think is important to keep uh, in mind when pushing uh, vegetarian or vegan movement. Recent developments have uh, indicated that maybe that actually isn't the case, that supplements can't do the same job yet. Anyway. Oh, really? That, I, I, don't, I don't find that that surprising. But what, what, yeah. what I'll say Could is that... Could be that, that they um, fix it. They figure it out. Yeah, I mean, I, I have no idea because I'm, I'm not vegetarian, I'm not vegan. But, but what I'll say is, like, you know, I think... I think a sort of flexitarian diet, um, eating more vegetables and fruits than is typical for an American meal while still incorporating some animal products is, is ideal um, for your health. Mm -hmm. But that being said, like it's hard for everybody to get that without having factory farming. So if I'm on team lab grown meat. I'd like to see lab grown meat become uh, yeah. prolific. Mm -hmm. But as of right now, I try to buy as much that. as my yeah. as possible from the farmer's market. Um, and when I don't, you know, I get farm fresh eggs when I can. And when I don't, uh, I, I feel kind of bad about it, but I wouldn't eat calamari grown in a farm is the long story short. Here's the and wild thing is everything farm. that I, the vegan debate isn't even like the part of it that I'm surprised by. Everything that Erica just said is pro cannibalism. Weird, <laughs> weird, weird. But weird. Only, <laughs> only if you free, only if you free range your human meat, you, you have right. to touch no them unsuspectingly. No yeah. farmed humans. You have just to get them unsuspectingly. Okay, Army Hammer. Dude, uh, eat one of the other... Uh, that's a celebrity with it. For anyone who doesn't know, that's a celebrity who turned out to have a cannibalism fetish. And he does, yeah. It's very alarming. I did not know that. Yeah. Uh, so at some point, we were on some show. I was, it was on this network, I know for sure. And Tight. somehow or another, we got on to like, stray animals, something like that. And I was like, look, I'm just saying, we have a, a food shortage and we have a fuckload of stray cats. I'm, we can figure this out. We can work <laughs> it. And like, no. dude, dude, there were some actually legitimately mad people in the comments. And I'm over here like, I'm not wrong. Like, mm -hmm. I, 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 I don't tell me, like, dude, honestly. But like, it's, it's so good. Uh, it's, it's we have you spay and neuter. We have less cats and dogs, or you spay and neuter. Hunt. 
or neuter. And like, I, you know, this, this, this is sucky, but like, also if you have a cat, like keep your cat inside. I, I know that it sucks because you feel like you want your cat to be able to go outside, but your cat is decimating biodiversity because they have all the say- destructive power of a human and none of the reasoning ability and all of the chaos. So like, mm-hmm. you got to keep your cat inside. And barbed cat. penises. Yes. That's, that's enough to reason to keep them inside those barbed we do look I, I know that sucks because like i like cats i've got a cat but my cat's an indoor cat um and like because he would decimate ecosystems he's a force to be reckoned with yeah cats also ha- are like directly responsible for the extinction of like at least two or three bird species in the u.s um because they just fucking kill them for fun all the time that's just what they like to do uh and cats are also like he right um, huge, huge, huge decimation on bird populations in general. One of the biggest anthropogenic causes of bird death. Fucking domestic cats. Um, and if you're mad about me talking about eating cats and dogs, here's a cute video of a cute puppy doing cute things. Enjoy. And then at Let's the end, Forrest eats it. <laughs> yeah, he bites it. Just right and for end. extinction, cats are matched only by us, right? Like, and we, they're only so good at it because we bring them to places where they previously weren't and then they're yeah. just dominant predators they're nuts good at killing birds especially cute little songbirds so keep your cats inside what? folks okay ask, ask oh. yourself honestly if you're super oh against it we have so many left if somebody already cooked it if you were just there, if you were in a place whatever the place and someone served you a plate and you're like what meat is this and they're like it's cat it's already cooked yeah i would I, I would turn it down on the knowledge you, would, of you wouldn't cat. try it I would not. If somebody try said, it. "Here is a mystery meat. It's definitely not human, and it's not something full of bacteria." Would you like <laughs> to try it? I, we promise it's safe. Like they can make that assurance. I would try a mystery meat and then be told it was cat and go, "Ah, fuck you. That's whatever." But I wouldn't do it in reverse uh, because I think there's a psychological component to animals we domesticate with uh, that we have a social contract that's actually reinforced by some psychological components, and to do so knowingly fucks that up and fucks you up to it, it, it's kind know, of man. the way in a similar way that cannibalism can psychologically fuck you up yes there's diseases you can get but cannibalism also fucks you up because of social contracts we have with other humans and it's a psychological component because there are other species which simply don't have that. i i raised pigs chickens and goats from yeah. little babies feeding them with bottles and like loving them and they were my pets and i loved them very dearly I still eat pig, chicken, and goat meat. Yeah, you know that's what I mean? a little, but like, we, pigs is the tough one, and I actually don't eat pigs because of how uncomfortable I became being around pigs. Uh, I try not to eat pigs. They they end up in the problem is pepperoni pizza is the best pizza, like objectively. Anyway, and um, but you can get beef pizza, beef pepperonis that literally don't taste different. Beef chicken, I think it's a combo. Uh, but no, I, yeah, there's like a there there is something different there. I don't think you're wrong, and I don't think you're saying that it's. I, I think there are probably people who can overcome it, but I do think, yeah, in this, in, in the same parts of our brain, which exist to psychologically prevent us from being mm. um, cannibals. I think that there's an extension of that between us and animals. We domesticate sort of like horses I'd put in there too. And horses actually have quite good meat. I've actually tried horse meat. It's pretty good. Uh, uh, it was I a different time would. of my life and I wouldn't do it again. Hard wood. The opportunity. What's that? I, I haven't, but I would. I, I don't think there's many meats that I wouldn't give a shot. You know what I mean? If I can, if I knew I wasn't going to get sick, I'd probably try just about mm-hmm. anything. Yeah, the sick okay, part. I can't. Think of yeah, the sick part's important. Like, you, it doesn't matter if you hate fucking raccoons. Don't eat raccoon. Here's gonna, here's my controversial die. take. Uh, people, you know, you know the whole thing. I won't eat the bug. I won't get in the pot. No, dude, eat the bug. Like most most human societies throughout history have been chill with eating bugs. I don't give. I'll eat a bug. I don't nope. care. I will eat a bug. I'll eat a cricket. I'll eat a worm. I don't care. I'll eat bugs. I've eaten I'm bugs, but I'm not into it. They don't. But I. But I, I, do I, it. A, I also have an autistic palate. You have to understand, and I'm not trying to say that as a like as a that I'm trying to st- stereotype myself, but it's. Clearly, that's the case. It's like I enjoy most beige foods and nothing else. I like I I in, there's like six meals I rotate and not usually every day. It's like the same meal six days in a row, and then I rotate one to another of the six or whatever. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't like stuff that much anyway. But it's interesting you say that though because bugs. The whole I I had heard that the reason why we are 
we don't really like bugs is because we've evolutionary uh, we've evolved to be repulsed by them because a lot of bugs kill us. I mean, the oh, thing no. is, is most of, a lot of societies today still eat bugs, right? Like I, there are places I, when I was in Thailand, they, they sell um, silkworms and crickets. You can buy them at gas stations. You can get them in a little shaker yeah. and you can even get like seasoning on them. And they're perfectly fine. I it depends just on the culture. They had as a culture. Yeah. Basically culturally gotten past it. Um, I mean, I think it's, I think it's more that insects as a reliable form of protein are not available in every single yeah. biome. And so you evolve around that. I think it's probably no coincidence that European nations, which live in an area where there aren't like super plentiful arthropods that are available year round are the ones that are most disgusted by them. Let's part, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's power around a few of these, uh, Paul the potato, or no, no, no. RPG debunk says, I wonder if Sven is an animist. They bring up Gaia and the soul an awful lot, which would be consistent with animism. Gaia being mother earth. Uh, yeah. There's a few things Gaia comes from. So it could be, could be. And I think you're probably right there. I think they are. Um, I'm looking oh. right now and I'm pretty sure it's exo brand. They make protein bars and stuff out of crickets now. And like, I want to try one real bad. I know I'm behind. I, I know that was the last conversation, but I've been looking at it right now. I'm going to see if I can get some and I'll yeah, send some to you guys. It. No, I, I'm not going to eat it. That's not one of those I things that I can be bullied into doing. I don't like foods. I don't want to. And I'm not, gonna, you know, I'm not going to waste your money. I'll eat a worm. I'll eat a, I won't eat a bee. I wouldn't eat a bee, but that's because I'll stairs. let a bee sting me on purpose before I'd eat a bee or a bug. Yeah, I wouldn't eat a bee. But I let I bees sting bee. me on purpose. That's they're important. Well, yeah, not bees, hornets and stuff. Uh, anyway, Paul the Potato says, trying to find substance to the Catholic teachings of souls was leading edge of my, deconver converse, my deconversion, I think they mean. Honestly, aphantasia and autism too, if that matters. If it matters to you, it matters. Uh, Raven yeah. 200 says, Forrest mentioning parrots reminded me of my friend's late parrot, R.I.P. Tony. He taught Tony to say, birds will rule, bird supremacy. Yeah, probably humans shouldn't probably buy parrots or shouldn't have them, really. Yeah. Like, they yeah, live they're, they're too They're unethically long. harvested most of the time. That's true, too. And they live they're, too long. They're, they're, smart, they're almost, smart little guys. Aren't they? Don't they? Mm -hmm. How old do they get? Like 80? They can 80? live to be like 80. Yeah, they like, like 80. Yeah. 80. They're, they can get super old. Also, turtles. And most of them go through like... Yeah. Most parrots go through like two or three owners over the course of their lives as well. Right. And that fucks with them mentally. Like they're that, really that's, sad. That's the, that was the main yeah. reason I was saying is that almost no parrot actually life to death with the same family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's a bad time. I hope that the parrot learned to be on time though. It sucks that it was a late parrot. That's fucking rude. Yeah. Nuzzy D says y'all are fucking. That's a f clever way around it. Fucking uh, awesome. Thanks for helping me feel smarter. <clears throat> Could more basal form basal forms of life reemerge? I.e., can evolution produce a circular pattern? Go fuck yourself, Jimmy. Never stop. I'll never stop fucking myself. Mm, I mean, radial forms of life are doing fine now. Like, look at echinoderms. Look mm. at uh, nidarians. Right? Like, you've got plenty of radially symmetric life forms that are doing perfectly fine. Could they re-evolve? Hmm. I don't know, probably not because those niches are already filled, right? A lot of these sessile organisms that are radially symmetric are like doing just fine because nothing is competing with them. So maybe, but it would probably evolve from something that was also like pre previously kind of sessile moving towards that radially symmetric um, yeah. uh, body form or uh, body plan, excuse me. So wouldn't it be more likely depend. to happen after like a, an apocalypse event where yeah. Only very oh, yeah. Yeah, basic forms of life, but then you go some forward, some amount forward and jellyfish are suddenly back and shit. Man, it's, it is absolutely a free for all after a mass extinction. Give it a mass extinction. You could even get like terrestrial radial life. That would be really cool. I don't, I can't think of a single radially symmetric terrestrial life form. Can you force? Um, well, you think. Large. I'll come back to it. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, uh, I don't think so. I don't R think so. RPG Debunk says, uh, I also love how Erica asked that guy if humans are homonyms. Funny thing, he could have answered yes or no, and technically he'd be right, I think. What? I think the only answer would be yes. Yeah. I think. Mm. The, the Raven 200 says, I don't have Twitter, but my Facebook is 50% friends and family, 25% insane right-wing propaganda, 25% the 34th rule, rule <laughs> yeah rule 34 on, on oh twitter no on facebook how yeah, facebook doesn't allow that, that shit <laughs> wow 
wild. Big Mama Becky says, I love the two of you together. Thank you, Forrest. You inspired me. Finishing what I didn't finish 20 plus years ago, Biochem Bachelors. Thankfully, I yeah. counted half my That's credits. Awesome. Let's go. My kids are done with college. It's my turn. Oh, that's awesome. Damn right. That is fantastic. Congratulations. Never that's too late. So much fun. That's fine. fucking fantastic, dude. Well, well done. Not never too late, but it's it's not as late. Oh, man. They, you know, some things that we consider too late aren't considered too late. As, as long as you're breathing, you can be learning. Just yeah, saying. You're alive. That isn't true Live at and all. Learn, Coma patients. Live and literally learn. Comas. You can breathe in coma and not learn. As long as you're yeah, cognizant, but, you could be learning. There we go. We got something. Uh, but then a bachelor's takes some amount of time. So if you have a week left to live, but you need however many credit hours left, you know, there's Take fast track courses. Uh, <laughs> that, <laughs> that fast. Really fast and take all fast 30 credit hours yeah. you have remaining in one week. Uh, <clears throat> the Raven 200 says, David's call is making me hungry for some pie. Adding pie, tomato soup, one of Jimmy's Christmas Ooh. trees to my shopping list. Uh, the rest of those things you eat, I don't know what you're going to do with my Christmas tree. I don't know if Erica knows what my Christmas trees are. I don't, but it's I'll, nice I'll to hear these. Go. I'm a woodworker. I'll, uh, I'll send you a picture of one of the Christmas trees. Oh, I wait. Made. I think I might have seen these on... Did you post them on Twitter? I've seen Instagram. some of your work woodworking on Twitter that I haven't seen. If it's nope. inside, I, I'm going to go out and go out on a limb here. I have don't, never don't, seen don't your Christmas it. trees. The Okay, go Oh, uh, No, I was going to take a guess, but I'm I'm guessing I know what it is. Um, no, they're I won't, great. I'll, I won't spoil it either. I won't spoil okay. it either. I'm guessing I know what it is, and I'm guessing my guess is very right because I know you. Oh, Christmas tree. I sent the one to Forrest, and now here's the one coming to Erica. Oh, Christmas tree. Where should I put you, send you inside of no. me? Oh, Christmas Yep, that's exactly tree. what I thought. Exactly yeah. what I thought. Yeah. Yep. Yes. <laughs> Made that on the lathe. Um, you know, people are like, what's happening? They're wooden butt plugs, people. We can just, you know, is, is it, is it, I mean, I kind of was thinking in the back of my head, wouldn't it be funny if it was exactly what I'm thinking it is? And then it was exactly what I was nope. thinking. I didn't vocalize it because I didn't want to uh, <laughs> stop trying to anticipate. Are you worried about splinters? It, I yes, wrote the on the bottom issue. of every one I make, I write the phrase, do not put in body. It is, uh, I try to use tight sure. grain woods. Yeah. And I try to get it to a really nice finish. Uh, you know, in the future, I might even do like some sort of CA finish or something that would seal it further. Technically, there's say, a good they're, chance they're you'd be porous. fine. Not really. <laughs> uh, you can get real. I mean, in the in the sense that pretty much everything is porous, sure. But you can get really, really dense woods. And then once you sand that down to like an over a 600 grit, I don't know what porousness is left. It's like glass. Of course, he's thought of everything. He's oh, thought yeah, of it yeah. all. I knew some people would I probably try to put it in it. their butt. Yeah. $5 from Him Ready Videos. Thank you. Uh, $10 from Eric Ipedia. Eric Ipedia. Huh? Fun fact. If you multiply pi by 65.88 and convert base base negative 64 at position. Yeah, base 64. Okay. Base 64 at position 1820. It spells the exact phrase, go F yourself, Jimmy. I doubt it. You. <laughs> is that true? Probably. You're going to have to check. Who knows? So, I'm not yeah. counting fucking base 64. I'm not doing that shit. Uh, Mastai31 <laughs> says the string <laughs> 58,008 58, occurs at position 2115. 21115. This string occurs 1990 times in the first 200 million digits of pi. Love Forrest and Erica. Go fuck yourself, Jimmy. That's funny because I was born in 1990 and I love boobs 21,115 times. So oh, wow. That's a pretty big coincidence. This is, this is a pretty big message. I think it's a revelation. Mm -hmm. And it's exactly 21,115 times. As soon as I see in person the 21,116th boob, I will no longer like them. Oh, I thought you meant like you love them 21,000 times more than anybody else. I was like, wow, that's, 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 yeah, that's a, lot. a lot. But No, no, I actually that's, mean that there's a limited in person that's every time I see a boob. Uh, the, the, yeah, the counter counts down to zero. 
What's crazy? I believe that was also an odd number. So it, you're gonna see a pair and be like, that one, yes, that one, that no, one, and no. now fuck off forever. I'm done. Like, okay. I'm done. You know, I'm done. There are <laughs> reasons why people have to get just one removed. Let's be. Come on, man. Uh, or maybe you'll meet like that that uh, the three breasted woman from Total uh, Recall and be like, yeah, perfect. There you exactly. go. There you go. It rounds Thank it you. off. Thank you. She's All I enough. need to see. Now you think it would your penis? Uh, 999 from AD says newer atheist. Any tips on changing my default thoughts being prayer slash supernatural? I keep catching myself and think, wait, that's not right. Thanks. Love y'all. Fuck yourself, Jimmy. Sounds like if you're catching yourself, you're doing the thing. It just takes time. Yeah, exactly. You remember what you think first is what you've been trained to think. What you think second is who you really are. So like, Whatever thing pops into your head, that's what your family, your society, your culture, your background, whatever is put there. What you then say, all right, now I'm going to deliberately think this next thing. That's what matters. And that will eventually change the first thing. So you'll, you'll be fine. I first think I mean, of go, the left. Go easy on yourself, you know? Always, always be gentle and, and careful with yourself. Let yourself uh, grow and change. Mm-hmm. Yes. Throws Machete says the English language didn't even exist when the Bible was first written. So why would the numerology of King James version matter? Because God is magic. What you just said doesn't matter. God is magic. God was waiting for King James. As soon as that fucking bisexual was ready. It's like, it's like that previous uh, chatter didn't even consider that the Quran was written by the devil. It's like they didn't even take that into account. I'm sorry, yep. throws Machete. We're not going to entertain hypotheticals. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, throws Machete. Uh, Jesus Wizard says the string 531, 8008 occurs at position 2374-2231. This occurs 21 times in the first 200 million digits of pi. From this, we can conclude that boobs are divine. We already did this. You're late to the show. Jesus. Mm, Why don't you anticipate my equation? Concur, concur. <laughs> Jay, I'm just going to abuse the audience for the rest of the show. Uh, James Call says, Erica Forrest and go fuck yourself, Jimmy. Yeah. This is for hammering David. How painfully funny is Forrest Roland's sandwich slave? Uh, Roland doesn't condone slavery because Roland's a good dude. He just wants sandwiches if you can bring them. If you can't, it's okay. You don't judge. Hey, guys, you got some Roland sandwiches? is the best deity. What's Roland's voice sound like? I've never talked to him. He's a fucking interventional closet, closet goblin. And you are gonna? <laughs> and you don't think he could talk? How did he communicate? Well, I think he could. How did he communicate? I've never heard it. Sandwiches. <laughs> Written message? Know, How did find out? <laughs> I, you just, just faith, just faith. I felt faith, it. In, I I feel it in my taint that he wants a sandwich. Yeah, he's a taint exactly. Goblin. That it, it's funny. The second you said I feel it, I was like, in I, that's exactly how I would have ended the sentence as well. <laughs> we, we're, we're hanging out too much, but I don't want to stop. Uh, he took you so, back to the Christmas trees. What's that? I said took you right back to the Christmas trees. That's right. Subjective. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't put a butt plug in your taint, Erica. I thought you were a biologist. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, you're right. You're right. My bad, my bad. <laughs> this is a fun night. Uh, Tug Ranch says, Psalms 137.9, King James Version 9. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones. God, that book's so full of good things. That was literally the first Bible verse I ever memorized as a kid. I did Jesus wept because I wanted a candy bar or something. Yeah, that's a good one. Smart Alec Atheist says, at this point, I'd accept David answer with a yes, because at least that would be a straight answer. I'd have accepted his, if he wanted to clarify, if he had at least begun with yes or no. If he had said, okay, I'm Mm going to answer, but I'd like to clarify after because it's going to sound bad. I feel like, well, you two were the ones actually talking to him, but I feel like most people are like, okay, we'll give you some chance to clarify, but do answer. So if it was like yes, right. but or no, and or it whatever, was, it was the long pauses too. Like there would be like a full three second beat in between, you know, one of us saying something and him being like, "Well, in the verse X Y Z in the book, blah blah uh-huh. blah." And we were all like, I just like answer the question, just like. Ooh, just- now I'm wondering if we were debating an AI the whole time. Oh it was my a chat God. GPT model just to annoy who, us. Who could possibly know? Yeah. How could we know? <clears throat> yeah, we told you, AI is getting too powerful. Yeah, it's Alec getting stronger. Alec Atheist also said, I'd be happy if David said yes since it... Oh, wait, that was the one. Oh, Jay, Alec just sent it twice. Thank you, Alec. Well, thank you, Double. Aww. 
Maybe it was that I, maybe I, th maybe it they sent the first $5 one after the $10 threshold and I forgot to filter it out. I don't know. Anyway, $10 from So Suva. I'd love to believe David wasn't serious, but I live in America. Hey, I live in Texas. This was me. Yeah. This is where I was at mentally. I'm concerned. I'm worried. Mm -hmm. I live in Texas. If, okay. I, uh, this is shitty of me to say, but if he had had a Southern accent, I would have been more inclined to believe him. That's that's I that would have swayed me a little. It wouldn't have been the the entire game changer. It would have been like, uh oh, it got close to the fence. Like, <laughs> okay, but listen, right. up, okay, because yeah. if you take pi right and you write out two hundred million numbers like the good Lord knew we were gonna, and you divide <laughs> that uh, like that actually would have kind of. But the fact that every time he was called, the only time he broke it all was go. I'd remind you that we are live right now, like. That was whatever you're you, like, however you put it. Is this a threat? You're what like, the fuck is wrong David, with you? You're like, David, is slavery bad? He's like, well, bless their hearts, but I do, I do declare. And you're like, oh no. It don't make me this feel good great. to say it, but yes, I suppose it was in that scenario. Yeah. Like, yeah, that would have been kind of believable. Yeah. My God. And by the way, I like oh. country accents. I'm actually like weirdly attracted to people with country accents. Uh, it's just that Dude, specific chill, types chill people, of arguments are only made with them. Chill people in the South are some of the most ride or die people out there. It's just when they're ride or die for the wrong reasons, it's dangerous, you know? Yeah. 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 But if somebody tells me unironically that I'm Everyone, giving them the vapors. All three, us, all three of us are either from or are living in the South. All three of us. We, we all know. We, we're <laughs> sympathetic for di from different areas. Yeah. I've been all over. I had a, it's, it's a, I had a friend. He was a, my, my professor of Spanish in, in my undergrad and he was a, an immigrant from Cuba and he was talking about like how people perceive Americans a lot. And he was like, it's in the South here, like the world knows you are kind and generous and, and you are a loyal people and you'll go do anything for your friends and you're loud and you're very happy and all these things. Don't fuck with them because they are all fucking crazy. They're crazy people. <laughs> like, yeah, you gotta summarize it. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Yeah, I just like, that, that's pretty much it. I do love the concept of like, you know, I love how in the South though they have these wholesome family ideals, and then they just vote against your rights, and they and they attend as a but family ideals. Look, they go to executions of prisoners with the whole family. They bring the whole family along. They set up a picnic. It's a it's so sweet those southern values. Ari Ar Aris 385 or Aris I don't fucking know. Uh 385 says I'm sorry but I know a lot of Christians like David and some of them are in my family. It's frustrating talking with them on these subjects because they answer similar. I'm not saying mm -hmm. that there aren't serious people who make stupid numerology things. I'm saying <laughs> that I have done this show hundreds of times now. I've either produced or been on it. For a minimum for hundreds of calls, certainly, and perhaps hundreds of times. Uh, and I just have this sense that goes off. And there's certain types of interactions you have with certain people. Uh, I, I've been wrong before. There was a person who called in talking about Ken Ham, but claiming no. to not know who RN Ra was. And he called back another time later and he's like, I want to apologize because now, like, I've looked it up, I realize why you all thought I was trolling. Uh, and, and I think I kind of hurt his feelings because I basically told him that you are too stupid to take seriously. And I felt a little bad about that one. Uh, but I don't think I'm wrong this time. I think that guy was like, well, what can, what should I do tonight? Should I uh, try to get my wife, my ex-wife to talk to me again or call this show? I think that was the two options. And Steven Crowder called this show instead. And it was one of his <laughs> voices he does. What one of that, his excellent comments is he's so funny. Wouldn't that be an amazing development if tomorrow Steven Crowder's like, so I called into an atheist show last night. Check it out. And he replays it. God, that do clip, it. Like, I dare you. In between of calling his pregnant wife and begging her to come back, you mean? Oh, no, she's not calling him. <laughs> she's calling me. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's right. I'm in your wife's you ever, DMs, Steven Crowder. Call speaking in. of all of this, I know Steven Crowder is a different person from Matt Walsh, but like we were talking about slavery. Are in that they, call. Did you see that clip? 
Yeah, right. Did you see that clip that's going oh. around right now of Matt Wall <laughs> saying that slavery was a net positive because without oh, it, we yeah. wouldn't be as advanced as we are today um, and the yeah. world would be populated by people who are different than us. And yeah. it's like, are you fucking kidding me? Right. Now? Right. That's that's like that's that's one of these basic arguments that are out there where it's like, yes, I agree. I like to be alive and basically to be alive up until the moment of conception, I need nothing to have changed for my entire, for the entire history of everything. And sure, that's all true. But also I do recognize from a somewhat universalist nihilistic perspective that that's not worth. Like if I could hit a button and undo the Holocaust or undo, you probably still should probably do it. Yeah. Oh, what? Walsh is full of bangers. Who could forget when he was talking about how women under 18 are at their most fertile? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Was it oh my God. I thought it was, was younger my favorite than that. thing. I thought it was. I thought oh, yeah, it was no, sorry, did I say like, over? Oh, did I say I, over? It, I mean I, under. Yeah, yeah, I thought he was like, whoa, you know, fucking hot 14-year-olds. He didn't say it, but he Yeah, did I say it. over? I meant under. Yeah, under 18. That's what I said. That's what I meant. Yeah, you don't have forget to that say it to say it. Yeah. That's... My yeah, favorite thing knows. is whenever you people whenever people come at me with the whole like what is a woman thing like what is a child I guarantee you he has yeah. a different definition than you as well there yeah. <laughs> it's like you and I, I wanna... may not agree with what a woman is but he and you don't agree on what a fucking adult is so like what are we going to do here it is 7 Which minutes past important? midnight and I'm not high so let's let's hit some more yeah we these. broke the 6 hour barrier oh, look at us yeah. Let's hustle. Let's hustle. I'm I'm tired too. Let's go. Let's go. You ready? You ready? Uh, I'm not tired yet. That's what? what getting high is for. But I do want to keep my schedule a little bit. Okay. Uh, twenty dollars for my kill, to Earl. My sweet dog Reginald died yesterday, and this is the first time I've been able to laugh again. Thank you, Forrest, Erica, mods, and chat for the much needed giggles. Jimmy, go sit on attack smooches. Uh, I'm very sorry Aww. about your I'm dog. So sorry for your loss. Yeah, I'm sorry about your loss. That that sucks. There's nothing harder than losing a loved one. And yeah, thanks for being here. I've Rest lost, in peace, your dog. I've lost people and I've lost dogs in my life. And the worst <laughs> loss so far is my dog, Sammy. So I really feel for you. Uh, it probably shouldn't be that way, but sometimes it hurts more to lose a dog. Gary yeah. Booker says, McGill's, yes or no? Simple question, yes or no, LOL. I think yes. this is a sandwich question, right? This is a, this is a yeah, yes I mean. for me, Forrest, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm down, yeah. Yeah, uh, I don't think he's asking me, but if it's a sad, yes, I'll also say yes. <laughs> is it sandwiches? Jimmy's it. Is it could a... be. It could be. It could be sandwiches. It I could easily McGill's... be sandwiches. It could be... I think there is a sandwich place called McGill's. Am I wrong? Is that not what he's referring to? There I could be sandwiches involved. Really I think this came you in two hours creative. ago when we were talking about sandwiches. There could be a sandwich. So let's just leave it that. There could be a sandwich. Mm-hmm. Okay, fine. Yeah. Don't tell Sa- me. Sandwiches are a possibility in this situation. Emery King says, you know, a good a call is good when the caller turns Jimmy into Charlie Day. That call was worth it for the comedy. I needed more of Jimmy's roasting skills from the bottom of my heart. Jimothy, go fuck yourself. I just don't understand why these assholes don't call me. Why do I always have to right. parasite my way into someone else's show? Uh, $10 from Dylan Fuller. If you both got to meet alien scientists of your respective fields slash equivalents, what is the top two questions you'd like to ask about their studies? And would you travel to their worlds if available? Well, the travel question is the implications. So the presumption would be. I mean, I would want to see where they came from. I would also ask them in their opinion. I'd want to know what they think about humans. Are are humans unique amongst the sort of trajectory of, of cognitive of cognitive species or are we different how long have they been watching i'd have a lot of questions i couldn't narrow it down to two and then the second one would be yeah like, I, i'd be mostly most human like vagina in space because we know <laughs> See, the, the real question. yeah yeah i'd be most interested in like what their values and like like their social structure is are they individualistic are they individualistic do they have a different situation going on there i want, want to know their philosophy a little bit and then also mm-hmm. the the question about like would i travel to the world absolutely i'd do it yesterday i'd be all about it oh fuck yeah love that shit <clears throat> smart alec atheist says david is my god i don't believe he's real well <laughs> yeah, i'm kind of there with you david would not be happy the number the numbers say something different <laughs> Dan bites. By the way, wrote, to the person who said thank you for answering the question, you're welcome. Sorry, Jimmy, skipped your question like an asshole. But we're question? we're here for you, man. Thank you. <laughs> what question did I skip? 
It said, thank you for asking charity question. Oh, uh, thanks for answering my charity question. We are a non-religious organization. Oh yeah. Yeah. I remember. Uh, I feel like that's a, an account that keeps hoping will help them launch, <laughs> basically launch their charity for them. And maybe, you know, one day it could be, I'm busy though. Uh, Dan bite says button and spells it the What's way up? it should be pronounced. Hmm. Juan Lopez says, love both of you. Alyssa Nguyen says, any thoughts on why it seems like the conservatives have trouble distinguishing between physical properties, e.g. light wave, uh, that symbol equals 500 nanometers. Lambda. What or is gamma. It? Sorry, it's gamma. It's been gamma. a long time since I've needed to know that. And artificial <laughs> constructs, e.g. bluish green, greenish blue, grew. I think, I think it's because, and this is just like my opinion, right? But uh, this is my opinion, man. I think it's because a lot of the classic conservative values are stemmed from things like common sense, right? So like these, <laughs> these kind of derive from that, right? If it goes against the common sense of it all, then it simply can't be the case. I think that's why they tend to have issues. Tight. Yep. Also, by the way, I just double checked and I was right the first time it is Lambda. I corrected myself and I was like, no, 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 it's Gamma because... Gamma is usually used for photon, but that lambda lowercase is used for wavelength. Duh. Um, so yeah, I, I got yeah, that confused. Idiot. Well, normally, you fucking idiot. You're so, you're so you're so stupid, Forrest. Oh, yeah, stupid, well, stupid that. boy. <laughs> I always also get I get gamma and H mixed up because they're all they're both involved in light. You're so oh my smart God. that it makes Forrest. me mad that you sometimes don't think you are. Like you're like Forrest, you could, I was just. You have defiled this house of knowledge for the last time. Yeah, you fucking idiot. <laughs> well, that was like it's that was a, 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 I guess it wasn't an easy mistake, but like at least they were both light. I just I fucked up. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That that lambda is used when you do like you can do that with um um uh fucking because it's wavelength times frequency, so lambda times f Dude, equals c. Good, I think, man. and you're that's good. why you. It's all good. Well, I'm saying you can do that because that's you can prove a speed of light with a, a a a microwave, and that was like we talked about that earlier. And I'm trying to remember that one. It's fine. It's fine. I'm sorry. Sorry, everyone. Let everyone down. <laughs> uh, we're we're all very disappointed in you. Yeah, we must get over it. Smart Alec Atheist says, "What's the difference between me between me and cancer?" My mom did beat cancer. Are you bragging your Aww. mother didn't beat you? No, that's good. Good job, smart <laughs> Alec Atheist. I'm happy for I'm your glad mother. To hear that. Congratulations. I'm happy for your mother. But as somebody who was struck across the face by my mother, I'm also jealous. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Brian Gack says, there's something very powerful about the name Brian Gack. Like if they were like, if if if, if something went down, and people were like trying to scrounge and figure out what to do. And someone's like, everybody, I have it on good authority. Brian Gack is coming. I feel like everyone would be well, relieved whether they know who Brian Gack like is or not. Dr. Gack is even more powerful. Dr. Brian Gack. Oh my God. I'll do anything you say, Brian, if you become a doctor. I'll just trust you implicitly. Especially he's got, he's got fucking Arcanine as his profile, dude. Like that just makes it even better. You know what I mean? That's baller as hell. Legendary. How did mushroom, I'm going to go get a Rice Krispie treat while uh, while Forrest answers this. How did mushrooms kill the dinosaurs? I've got to know. I've got to go get some. Thank you so much for me. asking. Yeah, I'll be right back. So Thanks here's the summary. The, here's the brief summary of the, the uh, fungal infection mammalian selection hypothesis is that at the uh, the KT extinction 66 million years ago, you've got this wiping uh, wiping out of the, main, the, the non-even dinosaurs. The thing is, that one meteor impact isn't going to do all the work, right? You're not going to kill everybody. What you are going to do is, you know, you have the, a bunch of volcanic eruptions that go on. You have a bunch of ejecta from the, the, the impact site. Um, things stacking up to block out the sun and reduce the temperature and the, on, on the planet a whole bunch. Um, and so this is where now fungi take their role because now you have a bunch of dead shit everywhere because there's been this mass dying very suddenly. Dead shit everywhere fungi proliferate. Um, the way that we handle fungal infections as mammals, as endotherms, as things that generate our own turtle body heat, 
is just we we generate the heat we need, our uh, immune system fights it off, we're good to go. But ectotherms, like reptiles, don't have that luxury. In order to get fight off a fungal infection, they have to go and lay out in the sun and bask to raise their body heat to fight off the fungi. Um, and because the sun was blotted out and we had this extreme winter situation going on afterwards, um, they couldn't do that anymore. And so fungal infections significantly impacted large reptile populations and drove their numbers down even further than what they already were, whereas mammals were able to survive that way better. So you have fungal infection causing mammalian selection, and therefore, in the entering in the Cenozoic, we became the main uh, the major uh, 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 life group in the world. So that's the, the long and short of the fungal infection mammalian selection hypothesis. Um, and it's a lot of fun. And I was asking Erica if she had heard of it and if she had any thoughts about it. I have some cool papers I can send your way if you want. Um, but it's an interesting I, I would thought. Be interested. Yeah, I would be interested. I mean, I, I'm wondering how how that looks time frame wise, right? Because like my understanding is that mm. the, um, the 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 impactor event, in addition to the deck and traps, is like it's a nice one two punch. I'm not saying fungus didn't mm. play a role, but I'm eager to see what they're presenting as like the support for like it playing a somewhat major role. I'd be psyched. To see yeah, that. yeah. Yeah, totally. I'll send something your way later on, whenever I remember. Yeah, yeah. Jimmy isn't back. Uh, yes, I am. So, oh, well, fuck, never mind. I was going to just start rambling about some other shit. Never mind. I, I was sitting down as you were saying it. But yeah, I'm back. Kathy Moncleef says, quick while Jimmy goes and Fs himself, which is funny. This is from 40, no, that's from 55 minutes ago. Uh, but anyway, quick That's exactly Jimmy. what happened. Quick while Jimmy what goes and Fs himself, explain why mushrooms are responsible for conquering the world or whatever you just said about mushrooms but we did that we just did it wonderful cool and jimmy went and napped himself in the meantime it was perfect i got yeah, a nice crispy treat. Timing. um chomp. that was a fake chomp noise for the record but I, there was real food in it so maybe it wasn't hell yeah marco hernandez says my two favorite paleo experts you're very kind i'm not an expert but thank you Y'all doing that paleo yeah. diet? Is that no, what that no. Means? This is meant to be. This is this is meant to raise my blood pressure, Marco. I know what you're doing. I know your game. Get that terminology out of here. I demand it. Is this meant to just? Is this referring to the fact that you only eat like seeds and meat and? No, this is meant to grind my gears I, because I paleo it. experts is a term that is used exclusively in the garbage book "Contested Bones" by Sanford and Root, which I hate. Ah. Uh -huh. Because they thought nice. paleoanthropology was too long, so they decided to shorten it to paleo experts. It's not a long word. <laughs> Bryn Poo KC says, in terms of hair, it would be a hard choice between Sagan and forest hair. Back in the day, there was a website devoted to Sagan's hair, Legendary. Back in the day, the internet Crazy. didn't exist when Sagan was alive. When was this day? It's after Sagan yeah. times, man. I don't know. I can grow it out. I can get the whole little bob going on. Did he die kind they of had a really doing... impressive uh, mail chain going. How old was he when he died? I feel like I feel like I've never seen a picture of him actually old. Uh no, he I died of he cancer not... a little while ago. Yeah. He died of what? Cancer. Yeah, cancer. But like he died in 1996. Oh dude, internet was so around then. Wow, was yeah. it really 90? I thought he died before Jimmy. I was born. Jimmy the Liar? Yeah, you're right. How old was he? He would have been 62. That's pretty young. Aww. To die, Dad. I mean. Not young in general, but young to die. Crazy. Five dollars. I just remembered that I'm the one reading as I was chomping. Yeah, I was like, from Whoa, we're just reading it inside. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to watch Forrest go Alf. I am confident that Mrs. Valkai is perfectly happy. I don't know what that means. Go Alf. A L F. I don't know what that means either. What is go Alf? Uh, Animal Liberation Front. I fucking went and blew up a goddamn uh uh uh, uh, uh animal play. I don't know. I don't know what it means either. Uh, okay. I see, I see. Cool. Uh, it was myodysplastic, uh, my, uh, my, uh, myelodysplastic syndrome. Um, it's a group of cancers in which immature blood cells in the bone marrow do not mature, and as a result, they develop, uh, do not develop into healthy blood cells. 
Um, and uh, yeah, he received a couple of bone marrow transplants and then died of pneumonia at 62 in Seattle. Aww. That sucks. That's sad. Uh, Hank says... What a cool fucking dude he was, though. Apparently he wrote some essays advocating yes. for marijuana legalization as well. Neato. Oh, dude, 420. Love of it. Of course he did. That dude... It says he was an active user, an avid user and advocate, it says here on Wikipedia. <laughs> the fount of all truth and knowledge. Do my experiments with... Wow. I mean, it's Delta 8, but it's still cannabis and uh, THC. My experiments... This is the first time in my life I've liked getting high, marijuana high specifically. There's something about Delta 8 that just works for me way better. I I haven't smoked in a long time, but like I came up with a lot of good ideas when when, when high. And that was, it, it says here that he wrote an essay about how marijuana has helped to inspire some of his works and enhances intellectual experiences. And like, yeah, I yeah, can totally sure. get that. I've, I've been there. For whatever reason, Delta 8 doesn't make me paranoid. It doesn't make me anxious. Which that was a big thing. With That's weed. good to know, Jimmy, because I it's actually been a hot minute. It's been several years for me as well, because I've I'm a very neurotic person and that yeah. had a bad yep. experience. I was it was all good going for many years and then all it took one bad experience and I was done. Was done. Yeah. Yo. I, also Delta Precisely. So the nice thing about Delta Eight is even if you do have a bad night, I've had one that I think was unrelated. I think I was overdue for a panic attack and I just happened to have it while it was high while I was high. Um Mm. and uh uh it was the same it was the whatever week episode three or f yeah episode three of succession was the one where mm. a very important character stops existing don't do not no spoilers i'm literally on episode two of season four so no spoilers oh, I, I didn't know that i thought you were caught up okay I, yeah yeah for sure i i was trying to give a spoiler free explanation to you which episode for a time reference but you don't know okay so um, yeah, exactly. Just don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's all good. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, other than that, yeah, it's the nice thing too is um, it's faster. It metabolizes faster. Like I've had, I've mm. there were times where I'd get high and had a bad high from weed, and it would be like three hours later, and I'm like, oh my god, this still isn't over. I just want to be done. When you're ready to be done on Delta Eight, it almost feels like it leaves. It almost feels like it understands. It's like, all right, I'll fuck off. Um, uh, that's that's good. To, that's one yeah. of the reasons why I, I'm a, a fan of um, like wine and, and beer and things like that. It's quite predictable. You know, you don't, you never have a unpredictable experience. It's consistent. When yeah. it, how it wears off, how it shows up. That's what I like about it. You know, I don't talk about it much, but I'm pretty anti-alcohol. Do you know that? I think it's. I think more people should be anti-alcohol because I. I mean, to be perfectly honest, I I quite enjoy it, but it causes significantly more harm than. Yeah. pretty much any other drug and yet it's super legal so i mean i'm I'm fine with saying that i'm not pro like i'm not aiming for prohibition but anytime anybody we yeah we get into the weeds about it i'm like you know there's no good amount it's all poison mm -hmm. even though drinking a little I've, every now and then has lasting effects i've known plenty of alcoholics as well um not good yeah but you know I there's pretty much no beer, good reason so ever to drink but except for that the escapism and then you end up the escapism alcohol gives you comes at the cost of not being able to escape more later and needing it more often. So it's, mm. yeah, I just don't. Anyway, it can definitely, you can definitely build up a tolerance. There's a social aspect to it. The ability to say, want to go get a drink. I do lament that I don't have a version of that in my life. Anyway. No, that's nice. You should, um, there's an yeah. interesting book called drunk that covers the, um, the advent of alcohol throughout human history and perhaps why the, the desire to, eat fermented foods and experience altered states of mind in the context of alcohol and in um, psychedelics and things of that nature, why it's evolved so many times in, yeah. in animal species in general, but also in human societies. Um, it's interesting. interesting. Alcohol also saved, I mean, fermented drinks with alcohol saved humanity from going extinct. So that's- cool. No, sure. Um, well, at least it kept us from getting completely cratered by numerous different plagues. Yeah. Right. Hank says, "Was well, that old thing? And in, in in wine, there is wisdom, and beer, there is truth, and water, there is bacteria. Like, yeah, it's just yeah. Have it something you know, safe to drink. It doesn't have to. Be, it doesn't have to be good for you to have uh, uh, benefits to the species, I guess. But sure. you know, I say right. that as a beer enjoyer. But modern day, also modern Jason Jones. Country. Jason Jones clarified, uh -huh. and I know we're only reading things over ten, but he clarified with the five that just said he was actually just talking about Alf, the TV show, because oh. I was talking about eating cats." 
<laughs> it's like, yeah. Oh, okay, I get it. Emery King, or sorry, Hank says, did you guys go extra long phrasing to reduce the proportion of the show taken up by the numbers for Jesus Guy? Love, Adelaide, Oz, go fuck yourself, Jimmy. We went extra long because we enjoy each other's company, I think. It's, it's also, it is going to be perfect, though. If you, if you divide the exact length of the show by <laughs> that exact length of that call and then multiply that by pi and then send me $20 in the mail, then I will also have $20 as the net result of all of that. That's, <laughs> that's gonna, perfect. Oh, wow. I thought you were going to say something it, else. Like, then I'll... Then I'll have a meal from Outback Steakhouse. I thought you were going to say, like, specifically what you were going to spend the $20 on. Yeah. Right. Emery King says, Erica, you've gotten, you haven't gotten enough love tonight. Good job schooling Forrest at least twice tonight. Oh. Forrest never seen a science before. You clearly went to science school. It's true. true. I eat the All science true. and I sleep in the science and I punch Forrest with my science mm -hmm. fist. Yep. Leave Lee says, I was told I have to do this as punishment for the books. Go fuck yourself, Jimmy. <laughs> Hashtag not sorry. Well, I at least appreciate <laughs> I appreciate you balancing the scales a little because that was a lot. Soldier Ron says, I love watching you both together. Can you give us the most wordy scientific and biology terms way of telling Jimmy to go F himself? I know they can. Um. Mm, disperse and copulate oneself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just so wait how about disperse and parthenogenesis disperse and parthenogenesis i, I was gonna say pr proceed and engage in auto fellatio or something mm -hmm. you know just like like try to tie it in i don't know i yeah. just want to say if humans no, are capable of if any human was capable of parthogen parthenogenesis i'd have figured it out <laughs> it would have happened with me <laughs> Like, I'm trying. I'm trying. It's still oh, no man. miniature me. I tried six times during the show. That's not true. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want that rumor to start. <laughs> I'm eating some... Uh, what's y'all's favorite jerky? Mm. Jerky. It's been a long time since I've had any jerky. Jack. Uh, I think I used to hot. have... There's, there was... um. Okay, this is going to sound really dumb, but Target used to have a generic brand jerky that was absolutely dope. And I, you could get, like, the big Target Market Pantry bags of it, and it was, like, not super expensive. I really liked it. I thought it was awesome. I don't understand why people I like get completely dry jerky, where it's almost, like, gritty. I don't get that. Mm -hmm. like, I like a, I like you can a just way. chew on sawdust. If you want that, just eat sawdust. Like, and you I can do that do in that. my wood shop right. all the time. Yeah, you got to have a little, you know, moisture. That's part of it. What were you going to say, Boris? I was just, there's a, a, a Supermercados Morelos here in town. It's this, this Mexican supermarket. And they have carne seca, which is, is traditional beef jerky, basically. And, like, it's just, oh, it's, that sounds it so crumbles good. into nothing. And, like, it's, 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 it's just, just greasy sawdust. And I don't understand it. And, like, all no, I want to like do it. is fucking, you're cool with that? No, it, so what you're describing is they used Jack Leaks used to do it, and it used to come in a canister that looked exactly like chew, like skull. Oh I mean, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. And it was actually pretty good. It's 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 That's just like it throws me off because I'm though. used to like, having to like bite something, you know? Of, like, right? Yeah. I mean, I'd try it. I mean, I, I would it's try it, but I I don't know if I would like because I the, the sawdust, the greediness, I'm not into. Have when you ever been greasy, like to Silver moist. Dollar City? No. Yeah. Have you I've ever been, been to Silver Dollar City? Silver. I don't know what that I've is. I've been through it. In, in uh, like, just walked through the theme park? I've never No, I've been, like, through the, the Silver Dollar City town. The town that has oh, Silver Dollar yeah, no. City. Branson. Branson, Missouri. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that's yeah, what yeah, I'm saying, yeah, yeah. right? Like. Okay. I've not okay, been to gotcha, Branson, yeah. but I've driven to Branson. Gotcha. Okay, I understand. I, I get you. I, okay, yeah, because Silver Dollar City is I've just like the amusement. Like, park. Park. I thought, Silver Dollar City. Right, I, that's why I was like, fucking just what the fuck, dude? How? I, uh, well, I, I, I thought you were talking about a just, town with lots of tiny pancakes. Right. Uh, in Silver Dollar City, they do have a, like this shack 
where you can just and it's way too expensive because it's an amusement park but whatever you know what i mean it's got like every fucking kind of jerky they've got kangaroo jerky they've got fucking emu yeah, jerky they've got yeah, crocodile jerky uh, it's so fucking surely sick. the kangaroo jerky Some, is not real can you eat kangaroo in america yeah you can get it yeah. i mean there's so many kangaroos like they're not endangered or anything like they yeah, so australia's, so australia's like really restrictive on what you can do with animals that are native to there like i want to open a no, koala rescue and i just can't i want to rescue but they might koalas want to, like, they might and they're like fuck you. what's that they might export the meat though because they put like a you know the, you know what a rhubar is yeah they put it on like their semi trucks because they hit so many cam- kangaroos when they're going through the outback yeah that's sad uh, i just yeah, looked maybe. up uh there's actually several several kangaroo farms here in the u.s <laughs> you can buy kangaroo meat ethically sourced kangaroo that. burgers <laughs> kangaroo medallions f- fossil farms not a sponsor medallion are they a medallion of kangaroo. Um, are they what they're m- m- bipeds yeah, are they considered by because oh. they hop on two legs, but they actually walk on four. Yeah, they walk about yeah, another well, quarterbacks for sure. Yeah, when they walk when they do the two as well, they're it's more of a bound. It's not like a true mm-hmm. bipedal locomotor uh, like that. But there is something weird about eating something which stands up. Dude, There's you eat chickens. Barrier. Right? Yeah, but they don't really stand up. Chickens stand up. No, nah, I get. I only I get really. I only get super abused Tyson chickens. They don't oh, understand that. Yeah, <laughs> Tyson. Tyson. Yeah. They fatten them to the. No, that is, that that there is actually a problem with uh, a lot of places, even that say free range. So it turns out free range doesn't have to mean much of anything. Um, no, it just, doesn't. There has to be a small amount of room that they can walk outside the barn, and they often never do in their entire life. Uh, you gotta I, like. You got to do farmer's market chicken. And I know that's yeah. like a, I'm speaking as a privileged freaking jerk, but yeah. like. Asshole. It, that would be the ideal. But at the same time, like you also have to afford to have protein in your diet. And like who among us has not purchased a couple of Tyson uh, cutlets every now and again. Look, if I'm hungry enough and Chick-fil-A is the only restaurant around, I'm just saying I've had more unethical chicken before. Um, I, mean, I, I keep hearing back and forth with Chick Fil A because it was like, oh no, they're donating to these horrible anti-LGBT places, and it's like, okay, no, they don't anymore. The company's decided not to do that, but the CEO is donating yeah, a portion of their thing. profits, like, like their I, personal I paycheck you. is being donated. And it's like, so, wait, so what is it? Chick Fil A fifty fifty splits their profits with their franchise owners, and so the mm. uh, the the French the owner of all of Chick Fil A, their ethics are shitty. Uh, and their beliefs are shitty, and they still contribute on an individual level, definitely, to a lot of anti-queer and pro-fundamentalist Christian shit. Locally, you may have a different thing. In fact, the Chick-fil-A in Cheyenne, Wyoming, that I grew up with, like, hired the most queer people I knew. Like, it it was like the whole town's queer population worked at Chick-fil-A. So you do have some local (laughs) ethics that are are different. But at the end of the day... I tell I told people this early on the show. I don't care if you eat there because the boycott failed. And so now yeah. all that is left is just the concept of is it ethical to eat there? It's not ethical to eat anywhere. It is there is no ethical consumption. Stop pretending it exists. Right. And so at this point if the boycott was ongoing and we were actually doing it, that would be one thing. But we never did it as an organized right. boycott. It was never organized. And now Chick-fil-A is more successful than ever. And one of the things I was reading about is the number one problem Chick-fil-A has right now that they're considering a company-wide crisis is they're so popular that malls are kicking them out of their parking lots because the lines are obstructing traffic to the rest of the mall. That's how the long the lines are. Oh, poor, so, yeah. poor Chick-fil-A. So the life failed. of a celebrity. I know. we failed. The boycott failed. So at the end of the day, and then it's also like, you name five restaurants you like to eat at quickly and three of them are bad and you don't even know it like in and out burger right. way worse than chick-fil-a the, the history of in and out burger and its family and that's like a california one that leftists are always like 
yeah, you know, I'm a fucking vegan with my special ethical clothes and everything else. Well, maybe not vegan, uh, but other leftist things that <laughs> not if they're eating it in and out. Um, but you know, I, I do all this stuff and da, 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 da. And then meanwhile, I'm eating at a fucking like little house on the prairie left, like almost Amish fundamentalist <laughs> somehow own company. Uh, just didn't, fucking whack. Didn't McDonald's get in trouble a little while ago because they literally in their new hire packet had instructions on how to file for like government assistance and shit. Cause they were not oh, going yeah. to pay you enough. Yeah. Walmart as well. They, it, it was, it, and at Walmart, mm-hmm. they had a dedicated HR group that you could call and they would explain to you how in your area. Chipotle union busted recently too. Chipotle uh, did like a full union buster, no unions allowed in our wholesome (laughs) Tex-Mex establishment. And it's like, bro, your ingredients aren't even good anymore. Like you guys went, you guys uh, came mid. Yeah, I I feel that actually the amount of impact of not eating at Chick-fil-A is less than if you do eat at Chick-fil-A. And then when they say my pleasure, you respond with hail Satan and walk away. You've now done more yes. for any kind of cause than just not eating there has successfully done. However, I would be up for like actual boycotts, not just Twitter boycotts, not just yelling on YouTube boycotts. No, I'm down for Twitter. those nationwide boycotts Twitter, and Twitter's- actually taking a company out at the knees. Fuck yeah. But we don't do it. Twitter is such an exercise in futility. It, it, there's nothing you you can't feel more despondent than just a couple minutes scrolling on Twitter. It's what if I told you just, that all the activism you would ever have to do in your life can be done while you're sitting on the toilet? Would you like that? Bro, yeah, just, you would, you little bitch. Hashtag bitch. Just, just <laughs> cancel. <laughs> just cancel somebody. <laughs> just, I knew Forrest would like that one. Just Sometimes just I just say jokes to make him laugh. It's all good. <laughs> Oh my god! We've been, by the way, the show's over. We oh. we actually haven't been yeah, streaming. Yeah, we're just, for, it's done. We haven't even been streaming for like six minutes. Oh damn! Oh, I didn't even realize. I'm just I kidding. I'm kidding. Chilling. We're on. We're on air. Don't don't don't. Say I'm that. okay. I was about to. Let me take my Ooh, pants off. Like, oh my god! <laughs> Everyone's Time for me kidding. to really. <laughs> you didn't tell me. I can <laughs> finally take my dong out and scream the n word as I've been waiting to for the past forty five oh minutes. Dude, um, that's at this, long last. This is why I'm not giving anyone access to my AI robot voice. This is a smart right. move to me. I think robots is a safe move regardless. Yeah, we're not making that a publicly accessible thing. Um, well, we should go, right? Let's do it. Yeah, I'm I, guess, I guess that's the whole thing, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, doing, Are we wrapping it up? Hey, go, go, subscribe. Bye, goodbye. Bye-bye. Oh, shit. I didn't rewind. Hang on. This was supposed to. Oh, okay, thank you. It was supposed to do that. No, it's fine. Everybody, go to thank Patreon. You. Go to oh. Patreon and become a channel member. Um, a, a subscribe, hey. comment, like it. Hey. Never stop learning. Oh, and, uh, and, uh, oh fuck. Get some water and get some sleep tonight. I feel like freestyling, but I'm not gonna. Okay, and now fade out. Turn off the stream.